Did you ask dulcet rhymes from me? Did you seek the civilian's peaceful and languishing rhymes? Did you find what I sang erewhile so hard to follow? Why, I was not singing erewhile for you to follow, to understand, nor am I now. I have been born of the same as the war was born. The drum corps' rattle is ever to me sweet music. I love well the martial dirge, with slow wail and convulsive throb, leading the officer's funeral. What to such as you, anyhow, such a poet as I? Therefore leave my works, and go lull yourself with what you can understand, and with piano tunes, for I lull nobody, and you will never understand me. Lo, Victress on the Peak Lo, Victress on the Peaks, where thou with mighty brow regarding the world, the world, O Libertad, that vainly conspired against thee, out of its countless beleaguering toils after thwarting them all, dominant with the dazzling sun around thee, flauntest now unharmed in immortal soundness and bloom, lo, in these hours supreme, no poem proud I chanting bring to thee, nor mastery's rapturous verse, but a cluster containing night's darkness and blood-dripping wounds and psalms of the dead. Spirit Whose Work Is Done, Washington City, 1865 Spirit whose work is done, spirit of dreadful hours, ere departing fade from my eyes your forests of bayonets, spirit of gloomiest fears and doubts, yet onward ever unfaltering pressing. Spirit of many a solemn day and many a savage scene, electric spirit, that with muttering voice through the war now closed, like a tireless phantom flitting, rousing the land with breath of flame while you beat and beat the drum, now as the sound of the drum, hollow and harsh to the last, reverberates round me. As your ranks, your immortal ranks, return, return from the battle. As the muskets of the young men yet lean over their shoulders. As I look on the bayonets bristling over their shoulders. As those slanted bayonets, whole forests of them appearing in the distance, approach and pass on, returning homeward. Moving with steady motion, swaying to and fro, to the right and left, evenly, lightly, rising and falling, while the steps keep time. Spirit of hours I knew, all hectic red one day, but pale as death next day. Touch my mouth ere you depart, press my lips close. Leave me your pulses of rage, bequeath them to me, fill me with currents convulsive. Let them scorch and blister out of my chance when you are gone. Let them identify you to the future in these songs. Adieu to a soldier. Adieu, O oh soldier, you of the rude campaigning, which we shared, the rapid march, the life of the camp, the hot contention of opposing fronts, the long maneuver, red battles with their slaughter, the stimulus, the strong, terrific game, spell of all brave and manly hearts, the trains of time through you and like of you, all filled with war and war's expression. Adieu, dear comrade, your mission is fulfilled, but I, more warlike, myself and this contentious soul of mine, still on our own campaigning bound, through untried roads with ambushes opponents lined, through many a sharp defeat and many a crisis, often baffled, here marching, ever marching on, a war fight out, I here, to fiercer, weightier battles give expression." Turn, O Libertad. Turn, O Libertad, for the war is over. From it, and all henceforth expanding, doubting no more, resolute, sweeping the world. Turn from lands retrospective, recording proofs of the past, from the singers that sing the trailing glories of the past, from the chants of the feudal world, the triumphs of kings, slavery, caste, Turn to the world, the triumphs reserved, and to come, give up that backward world. Leave to the singers of hitherto, give them the trailing past, 
But what remains for singers for you, wars to come are for you. Lo, how the wars of the past have duly inured to you, and the wars of the present also inure. Then turn, and be not alarmed, O Libertad, turn your undying face to where the future, greater than all the past, is swiftly, surely, preparing for you. To the leavened soil they trod. To the leavened soil they trod, calling, I sing for the last. Forth from my tent, emerging for good, loosing, untying the tent ropes. In the freshness, the forenoon air, in the far-stretching circuits and vistas again to peace restored. To the fiery fields emanative, and the endless vistas beyond, to the south and the north. To the leavened soil of the general western world to attest my songs. To the Alleghenian hills and the tireless Mississippi. To the rocks I calling sing, and all the trees in the woods. To the plains of the poems of heroes, to the prairies spreading wide. To the far-off sea, and the unseen winds, and the sane impalpable air, and responding they answer all, but not in words. The average earth, the witness of war and peace, acknowledges mutely. The prairie draws me close, as the father to bosom broad the sun. The northern ice and rain that began me nourish me to the end. But the hot sun of the south is to fully ripen my songs. End of Book 21, Part 2 Read by Kara Schallenberg on December 12th, 2005 In Oceanside, California Read by Wed's Child Book 22 Memories of President Lincoln When Lilacs Last in the Dooryard Bloomed 1. When lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed, and the great star early drooped in the western sky in the night, I mourned, and yet shall mourn with ever-returning spring. Ever-returning spring, trinity sure to me you bring, lilac blooming perennial and drooping star in the west, and thought of him I love. 2. O oh, powerful western fallen star, O oh, shades of night, O oh, moody, tearful night, O oh, great star disappeared, O oh, the black murk that hides the star, O oh, cruel hands that hold me powerless, O oh, helpless soul of me, O oh, harsh surrounding cloud that will not free my soul. 3. In the dooryard fronting the old farmhouse, near the whitewashed palings, stands a lilac bush, tall growing with heart-shaped leaves of rich green. With many pointed blossom rising delicate, with the perfume strong I love, with every leaf a miracle, and from this bush in the dooryard, with delicate colored blossoms and heart shaped leaves of rich green, a sprig with its flower I break. 4. In the swamp and secluded recesses, a shy and hidden bird is warbling a song. Solitary the thrush, the hermit withdrawn to himself, avoiding the settlements, sings by himself a song. Song of the bleeding throat, death's outlet song of life. For well, dear brother, I know, if thou wast not granted to sing, thou wouldst surely die. 5. Over the breast of the spring, the land, amid cities, amid lanes and through old woods, where lately the violets peeped from the ground, spotting the gray debris. Amid the grass in the fields, each side of the lanes, passing the endless grass. Passing the yellow-speared wheat, every grain from its shroud in the dark brown fields uprisen. Passing the apple tree blows of the white and pink in the orchards, carrying a corpse to where it shall rest in the grave. Night and day journeys a coffin. 6. Coffin that passes through lanes and streets, through day and night, with the great cloud darkening the land, with pomp of the inlooped flags, the, with the cities draped in black, with the show of the states themselves as of creped veiled women standing, with processions long and winding and flambeaux of the night, with the countless torches lit and the silent sea of faces and the unbared heads, with the waiting depot, the arriving coffin and the somber faces, with the dirges that through the night, with the thousand voices rising strong and solemn, with all the mournful voices of the dirges poured round the coffin, the dim-lit churches and the shuddering organs, where amid these you journey, with the trolling tolling of the bell's perpetual clang, 
Here, a coffin that slowly passes, I give you my sprig of lilac. Seven. Nor for you, for one alone, blossoms and branches green to coffins all I bring. For fresh is the morning, thus would I chant a song for you, O sane and sacred death. All over bouquets of roses, O death, I cover you over with roses and early lilies. But mostly, and now the lilac that blooms in the first, copious I break. I break the sprigs from the bushes. With loaded arms I come, pouring for you, for you and for the coffins of all you, death. Eight. A western orb sailing the heaven. Now I know what you must have meant as a month since I walked. As I walked in silence, the transparent shadowy night. As I saw you had something to tell as you bent to me night after night. As you drooped from the sky so low down as if to my side. While the other stars all looked on. As we wandered together the solemn night. For something I know not what kept me from sleep. As the night advanced, I saw on the rim of the west how full you were of woe. As I stood on the rising ground in the breeze in the cold, transparent night, as I watched where you passed and was lost in the netherward black of the night, as my soul in its trouble dissatisfied sank, where you sad orb concluded dropped in the night and was gone. Nine. Sing on there in the swamp, O oh singer bashful and tender. I hear your notes, I hear your call. I hear, I come presently, I understand you. But a moment I linger, for the lustrous star has detained me. The star, my departing comrade, holds and detains me. Ten. Oh, how shall I warble myself for the dead one there I loved? And how shall I deck my song for the large, sweet soul that has gone? And what shall my perfume be for the grave of him I love? Sea winds blown from east to west, blown from the eastern sea and blown from the western sea, till there on the prairies meeting, these and with these and the breath of my chant, I'll perfume the grave of him I love. Eleven. O oh, what shall I hang on the chamber walls, and what shall the pictures be that I hang on the walls to adorn the burial house of him I love? Pictures of growing spring and farms and homes, with the fourth month eve at sundown and the gray smoke lucid and bright, with the floods of yellow gold of the gorgeous indolent sinking sun burning, expanding the air, with the fresh sweet herbage underfoot and the pale green leaves of the trees prolific, in the distance the flowing glaze, the breast of the river with a wind dapple here and there, with ranging hills on the banks, with many a line against the sky in shadows, and the city at hand with dwellings so dense and stacks of chimneys, and all the scenes of life and the workshops and the workmen homeward returning. Twelve. Lo, body and soul, this land, my own Manhattan with spires and the sparkling and hurrying tides and the ships, the varied and ample land, the south and the north in the light, Ohio's shores and flashing Missouri, and ever the far spreading prairies covered with grass and corn. Lo, the most excellent sun, so calm and haughty, the violet and purple morn with just felt breezes. The gentle soft-born measureless light, the miracle spreading bathing all, the fulfilled noon, the coming eve delicious, and the welcome night and the stars over my city shining all, enveloping man and land. Thirteen. Sing on, sing on, you gray-brown bird. Sing from the swamps, the recesses, pour your chant from the bushes, limitless out of the dusk, out of the cedars and pines. Sing on, dearest brother, warble your reedy song, loud and human song, with voice of uttermost woe. O liquid and free and tender, O wild and loose to my soul, O wondrous singer, you only I hear, yet the star holds me, but will soon depart. Yet the lilac with mastering odor holds me. 14. Now while I sat in the day and looked forth, in the close of the day with its light in the fields of spring, and the farmers preparing their crops, in the large unconscious scenery of my land with its lakes and forests, in the heavenly aerial beauty, after the perturbed winds and the storms, under the arching heavens of the afternoon swift passing, and the voices of children and women, the many moving sea tides, and I saw the ships, how they sailed, and the summer approaching with richness, and the fields all busy with labor, and the infinite separate houses, how they all went on, each with its meals and minutia of daily usages, and the streets, how their throbbings throbbed, and the cities pent, lo, then and there, falling upon them and among them, enveloping me with the rest, appeared the cloud, appeared the long black trail, and I knew death, its thought, 
and the sacred knowledge of death. Then with the knowledge of death is walking one side of me, and the thought of death close waking on the other side of me, and I in the middle as with companions, and as holding the hands of companions, I fled forth to the hiding receiving night that talks not, down to the shores of the water, the paths by the swamp in the dimness, to the solemnly shadowy cedars in the ghostly pines so still. And the singer so shy to the rest received me, the gray-brown bird I know received us comrades three, and he sang the carol of death, and a verse for him I love. From deep secluded recesses, from the fragrant cedars and the ghostly pines so still, came the carol of the bird, and the charm of that carol wrapped me, as I held as if by their hands my comrades in the night, and the voice of my spirit tallied the song of the bird. Come, lovely and soothing death, undulate round the world, serenely arriving, arriving, in the day, in the night, to all, to each, sooner or later, delicate death. Praised be the fathomless universe, for life and joy and for objects and knowledge curious, and for love, sweet love, but praise, 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 for the sure and winding arms of cool and folding death. Dark mother always gliding near with soft feet, have none chanted for thee a chant of fullest welcome? Then I chant it for thee, I glorify thee above all. I bring thee a song that when thou must indeed come, come unfalteringly. Approach strong deliverous. When it is so, when thou hast taken them, I joyously sing the dead, lost in the loving floating ocean of thee, laved in the flood of thy bliss, O death. From me to thee, glad serenades, dances for thee I propose, saluting thee, adornments and fastings for thee, and the sights of the open landscape and the high spread shy are fitting, and life in the fields and the huge and thoughtful night. The night in silence under many a star, the ocean shore and the husky whispering wave whose voice I know, and the soul turning to thee, O vast and well-veiled death, and the body gratefully nestling close to thee. Over the treetops I float thee a song, over the rising and sinking waves, over the myriad fields and the prairies wide, over the dense-packed cities all and the teeming wharves and ways. I float this carol with joy, with joy to thee, O death. 15. To the tally of my soul, loud and strong, kept up the gray-brown bird, with pure deliberate notes spreading, filling the night. Loud in the pines and cedars dim, clear in the freshness moist and the swamp perfume, and I with my comrades there in the night. While my sight that was bound and my eyes unclosed, as to long panoramas of visions. And I saw askant the armies, I saw as in noiseless dreams hundreds of battle flags, born through the smoke of the battles and pierced with missiles I saw them, and carried hither and yon through the smoke, and torn and bloody, and at last but a few shreds left on the staffs, and all in silence, and the staffs all splintered and broken. I saw battle corpses, myriads of them, and the white skeletons of young men. I saw them. I saw the debris and debris of all the slain soldiers of war. But I saw they were not as was thought. They themselves were fully at rest. They suffered not. The living remained and suffered. The mother suffered, and the wife and the child and the musing comrades suffered. And the armies that remained suffered. 16. Passing the visions, passing the night, passing, unloosing the hold of my comrades' hands, passing the song of the hermit bird and the tallying song of my soul, victorious song, death's outlet song, yet varying, ever-altering song, as low and wailing, yet clear the notes, rising and falling, flooding the night, sadly sinking and fainting, as warning and warning, and yet bursting with joy, covered the earth and filling the spread of the heavens, as that powerful psalm in the night I heard from the recesses, Passing, I leave thee lilac with the heart-shaped leaves. I leave thee there in the dooryard, blooming, returning with spring. I cease from my song for thee, from my gaze on thee in the west, fronting the west, communing with thee, O comrade lustrous with silver face in the night. Yet each to keep in all retrievements out of the night, the song, the wondrous chant of the gray-brown bird, and the tallying chant, the echo aroused in my soul with the lustrous and drooping star, with the countenance full of woe, with the holders holding my hands, nearing the call of the bird, comrades mine and I in the midst, and their memory ever to keep, for the dead I loved so well, for the sweetest, wisest soul of all my days and lands, and this for his dear sake, 
lilac and star and bird twined with the chant of my soul, there in the fragrance of pines and cedars dusk and dim. Oh, captain, my captain. Oh, captain, my captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack, the prize we sought is won. The port is near, the bells I hear, the people all exulting. While following eyes, the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But, oh, heart, 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 oh, bleeding drops of red, where on the deck my captain lies, fallen cold and dead. Oh, captain, my captain, rise up and hear the bells. Rise up for you, the flag is flung, for you, the bugle trills. For you, bouquets and ribboned wreaths, for you, shores are crowding. For you, they call the swaying mass, their eager faces turning. Here, captain, dear father, this arm beneath your head. It is some dream that on the deck you've fallen cold and dead. My captain does not answer, his lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my arm, he has no pulse nor will. The ship is anchored safe and sound, its voyage closed and done. From fearful trip, the victor ship comes with object one. Exalt those shores and ring the bells, but I, with mournful tread, walk the deck my captain lies, fallen cold and dead. Hushed be the camps today, May 4, 1865. Hushed be the camps today, and soldiers let us drape our war-worn weapons, and each with musing soul retire to celebrate our dear commander's death. No more for him life's stormy conflicts, nor victory, nor defeat. No more time's dark events, charging like ceaseless clouds across the sky. But sing, poet, in our name. Sing of the love we bore him, because you, dweller in camps, know it truly. As they invault the coffin here, sing as they close the doors of earth upon him, one verse, for the heavy hearts of soldiers. This dust was once the man. This dust was once the man, gentle, plain, just, and resolute, under whose cautious hand, against the foulest crime in history, known in any land or age, was saved the union of these states. End Book 22 Recorded by Annie Coleman in St. Louis, Missouri, in February 2006 Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman Book 23 by Blue Ontario's Shore By Blue Ontario's Shore As I mused of these warlike days And of peace returned And the dead that return no more A phantom gigantic superb With stern visage accosted me Chant me the poem, it said That comes from the soul of America Chant me the carol of victory and strike up the marches of Libertad, marches more powerful yet, and sing me before you go the song of the throes of democracy. Democracy, the destined conqueror, yet treacherous lip smiles everywhere, and death and infidelity at every step. 2. A Nation Announcing Itself I myself make the only growth by which I can be appreciated. I reject none, except all, then reproduce all in my own forms. A breed whose proof is in time and deeds. What we are, we are. Nativity is answer enough to objections. We wield ourselves as a weapon is wielded. We are powerful and tremendous in ourselves. We are executive in ourselves. We are sufficient in the variety of ourselves. We are the most beautiful to ourselves and in ourselves. We stand self-poised in the middle, branching thence over the world, from Missouri, Nebraska, or Kansas, laughing attacks to scorn. Nothing is sinful to us outside of ourselves. Whatever appears, Whatever does not appear, we are beautiful or sinful in ourselves only. O oh mother, O oh sisters dear, if we are lost, no victor else has destroyed us. It is by ourselves we go down to eternal night. 3. Have you thought there could be but a single supreme? There can be any number of supremes. One does not countervail another any more than one eyesight countervails another, 
for one life countervails another. All is eligible to all. All is for individuals. All is for you. No condition is prohibited, not God's or any. All comes by the body. Only health puts you rapport with the universe. Produce great persons. The rest follows. 4. Piety and conformity to them that like peace, obesity, allegiance to them that like. I am he who tauntingly compels men, women, nations, crying, leap from your seats and contend for your lives. I am he who walks the states with a barbed tongue, questioning everyone I meet. Who are you that wanted only to be told what you knew before? Who are you that wanted only a book to join you in your nonsense? With pangs and cries as thine own, O bearer of many children, these clamors wild to a race of pride I give. O lands, would you be freer than all that has ever been before? If you would be freer than all that has been before, come listen to me. Fear grace, elegance, civilization, delicatesse. Fear the mellow sweet, the sucking of honey juice. Beware the advancing mortal ripening of nature. Beware what precedes the decay of the ruggedness of states and men. 5. Ages, precedents have long been accumulating undirected materials. America brings builders and brings its own styles. The immortal poets of Asia and Europe have done their work and passed to other spheres. A work remains, the work of surpassing all they have done. America, curious toward foreign characters, stands by its own at all hazards. Stands removed, spacious, composite, sound, initiates the true use of precedence, does not repel them or the past or what they have produced under their forms, takes the lessons with calmness, perceives the corpse slowly born from the house, perceives that it waits a little while in the door, that it was fittest for its days, that its life has descended to the stalwart and well-shaped heir who approaches, and that he shall be fittest for his days, any period one nation must lead, one land must be the promise and reliance of the future. These states are the amplest poem. Here is not merely a nation, but a teeming nation of nations. Here the doings of men correspond with the broadcast doings of the day and night. Here is what moves in magnificent masses, careless of particulars. Here are the roughs, beards, friendliness, combativeness, the soul loves. Here the flowing trains, here the crowds, equality, diversity, the soul loves. 6. Land of lands and bards to corroborate. Of them standing among them, one lifts to the light a west-bred face. To him... The hereditary countenance bequeathed both mothers and fathers, his first part substances, earth, water, animals, trees, built of the common stock, having room for far and near, used to dispense with other lands, incarnating this land, attracting it body and soul to himself, hanging on its neck with incomparable love plunging his seminal muscle into its merits and demerits, making its cities, beginnings, events, diversities, wars, vocal in him, making its rivers, lakes, bays, embouchure in him, Mississippi with yearly freshets and changing shoots, Columbia, Niagara, Hudson, spending themselves lovingly in him, if the Atlantic coast stretch or the Pacific coast stretch, 
he stretching with them north or south, spanning between them east and west and touching whatever is between them. Growths growing from him to offset the growths of pine, cedar, hemlock, live oak, locust, chestnut, hickory, cottonwood, orange, magnolia, tangles as tangled in him as any cane break or swamp. He likening sides and peaks of mountains, forests coated with northern transparent ice. Off him pasturage sweet and natural as savanna, upland prairie. Through him flights, whirls, screams, answering those of the fish hawk, mockingbird, night heron, and eagle. His spirit surrounding his country's spirit. Unclosed to good and evil, surrounding the essences of real things, old times and present times, surrounding just found shores, islands, tribes of red aborigines, weather beaten vessels, landings, settlements, embryo stature and muscle, the haughty defiance of the year one, war, peace. The formation of the Constitution, the separate states, the simple elastic scheme, the immigrants, the Union always swarming with blatherers and always sure and impregnable, the unsurveyed interior, log houses, clearings, wild animals, hunters, trappers, surrounding the multiform agriculture, mines, temperature, the gestation of new states. Congress convening every twelfth month, the members duly coming up from the uppermost parts. Surrounding the noble character of mechanics and farmers, especially the young men. Responding their manners, speech, dress, friendships, the gait they have of persons who never knew how it felt to stand in the presence of superiors. The freshness and candor of their physiognomy, the copiousness and decision of their phrenology, the picturesque looseness of their carriage, their fierceness when wronged, the fluency of their speech, their delight in music, their curiosity, good temper and open-handedness, the whole composite make, the prevailing ardor and enterprise, the large amativeness, the perfect equality of the female with the male, the fluid movement of the population, the superior marine, free commerce, fisheries, whaling, gold digging, wharf-hemmed cities, railroad and steamboat lines intersecting all points, factories, mercantile life, labor-saving machinery, the northeast, northwest, southwest, Manhattan firemen, the Yankee swamp, Southern plantation life, slavery, the murderous, treacherous conspiracy to raise it upon the ruins of all the rest, on and on to the grapple with it, assassin, then your life or ours be the stake, and respite no more. 7. Lo, high toward heaven this day, Libertad from the Congress's field returned. I mark the new aureola around your head. No more of soft astral, but dazzling and fierce. With war's flames and the lambent lightnings playing, and your port immovable where you stand. With still the inextinguishable glance, and the clinched and lifted fist, and your foot on the neck of the menacing one the scorner utterly crushed beneath you, the menacing arrogant one that strode and advanced with his senseless scorn, bearing the murderous knife, the wide-swelling one, the braggart that would yesterday do so much, today a carrion dead and damned, the despised of all the earth, an awful rank to the dung hill maggots spurned. 8. Others take finish, but the Republic is ever constructive and ever keeps vista. Others adorn the past, 
But you, O oh days of the present, I adorn you. O oh days of the future, I believe in you. I isolate myself for your sake. O oh America, because you build for mankind, I build for you. O oh well-beloved stonecutters, I lead them who plan with decision and science. Lead the present with friendly hand toward the future. Bravas to all impulses sending sane children to the next age. But damn that which spends itself with no thought of the stain, pains, dismay, feebleness, it is bequeathing. 9. I listened to the phantom by Ontario's shore. I heard the voice arising, demanding bards. By them all native and grand, by them alone can these states be fused into the compact organism of a nation. To hold men together by paper and seal, or by compulsion, is no account. That only holds men together which aggregates all in a living principle, as the hold of the limbs of the body or the fibers of plants. Of all races and eras, these states, with veins full of poetical stuff, most need poets, and are to have the greatest, and use them the greatest. Their presidents shall not be their common referee so much as their poets shall. Soul of love and tongue of fire, I to pierce the deepest deeps and sweep the world. Ah, mother, prolific and full in all besides, yet how long barren, barren. 10. Of these states the poet is the equable man, not in him, but off from him, things are grotesque, eccentric, fail of their full returns. Nothing out of its place is good, nothing in its place is bad. He bestows on every object or quality its fit proportion, neither more nor less. He is the arbiter of the diverse, he is the key, he is the equalizer of his age and land. He supplies what wants supplying. He checks what wants checking. In peace, out of him speaks the spirit of peace, large, rich, thrifty, building populous towns, encouraging agriculture, arts, commerce, lighting the study of man, the soul, health, immortality, government. In war, he is the best backer of the war. He fetches artillery as good as the engineers. He can make every word he speaks draw blood. The years string toward infidelity, he withholds by his steady faith. He is no arguer, he is judgment. Nature accepts him absolutely. He judges not as the judge judges, but as the sun failing round helpless thing. As he sees the farthest, he has the most faith. His thoughts are the hymns of the praise of things. In the dispute on God and eternity, he is silent. He sees eternity less like a play with a prologue in denouement. He sees eternity and men and women. He does not see men and women as dreams or dots. For the great idea, the idea of perfect and free individuals, for that, the bard walks in advance, leader of leaders. The attitude of him cheers up slaves and horrifies foreign despots. Without extinction is liberty. Without retrograde is equality. They live in the feelings of young men and the best women. Not for nothing have the indomitable heads of the earth been always ready to fall for liberty. 11. For the great idea. That, O oh my brethren, that is the mission of poets. Songs of stern defiance ever ready. Songs of the rapid arming and the march. The flag of peace quick folded. And instead the flag we know. Warlike flag of the great idea. Angry cloth I saw there leaping. I stand again in leaden rain your flapping folds saluting. 
I sing you over all, flying beckoning through the fight. Oh, the hard contested fight. The cannons ope their rosy flashing muzzles. The hurtled balls scream. The battlefront forms amid the smoke. The volleys pour incessant from the line. Hark, the ringing word charge. Now the tussle and the furious, maddening yells. Now the corpses tumble, curled upon the ground. Cold, cold in death. For precious life of you, angry cloth I saw there leaping. Twelve. Are you he who would assume a place to teach or be a poet here in the States? The place is august. The terms obdurate. Who would assume to teach here may well prepare himself body and mind. He may well survey, ponder, arm, fortify, harden, make lithe himself. He shall surely be questioned beforehand by me with many and stern questions. Who are you indeed who should talk or sing to America? Have you studied out the land, its idioms and men? Have you learned the physiology, phrenology, politics, geography, pride, freedom, friendship of the land, its substratums and objects? Have you considered the organic compact of the first day of the first year of independence, signed by the commissioners, ratified by the states, and read by Washington at the head of the army? Have you possessed yourself of the federal constitution? Do you see who have left all feudal processes and poems behind them and assume the poems and processes of democracy? Are you faithful to things? Do you teach what the land and sea, the bodies of men, womanhood, amativeness, heroic angers teach? Have you sped through fleeting customs, popularities? Can you hold your hand against all seductions, follies, whirls, fierce contentions? Are you very strong? Are you really of the whole people? Are you not of some coterie, some school or mere religion? Are you done with reviews and criticisms of life, animating now to life itself? Have you vivified yourself from the maternity of these states? Have you, too, the old, ever-fresh forbearance and impartiality? Do you hold the like love for those hardening to maturity, for the last-born, little and big, and for the errant? What is this you bring, my America? Is it uniform with my country? Is it not something that has been better told or done before? Have you not imported this or the spirit of it in some ship? Is it not a mere tale, a rhyme, a prettiness? Is the good old cause in it? Has it not dangled long at the heels of poets, politicians, literats, of enemies' lands? Does it not assume that what is notoriously gone is still here? Does it answer universal needs? Will it improve manners? Does it sound with trumpet voice the proud victory of the Union in that secession war? Can your performance face the open fields and the seaside? Will it absorb into me as I absorb food, air, to appear again in my strength, gait, face? Have real employments contributed to it? Original makers, not mere amanuenses? Does it meet modern discoveries, calibers, facts, face to face? What does it mean to American persons, progresses, cities, Chicago, Canada, Arkansas? Does it see behind the apparent custodians, the real custodians standing, menacing silent, the mechanics, Manhattanese, Western men, Southerners, significant alike in their apathy and in the promptness of their love? Does it see what finally befalls and has always finally befallen, each temporizer, patcher, outsider, partialist, alarmist, infidel, who has ever asked anything of America? What mocking and scornful negligence? 
the track strewed with the dust of skeletons, by the roadside others disdainfully tossed. 13. Rhymes and rhymers pass away, poems distilled from poems pass away. The swarms of reflectors and the polite pass and leave ashes. Admirers, importers, obedient persons make but the soil of literature. America justifies itself. Give it time. No disguise can deceive it or conceal from it. It is impassive enough. Only toward the likes of itself will it advance to meet them. If its poets appear, it will in due time advance to meet them. There is no fear of mistake. The proof of a poet shall be sternly deferred till his country absorbs him as affectionately as he has absorbed it. He masters whose spirit masters. He tastes sweetest who results sweetest in the long run. The blood of the brawn beloved of time is unconstraint. In the need of songs, philosophy, an appropriate native grand opera, shipcraft, any craft, he or she is greatest who contributes the greatest original practical example. Already a nonchalant breed, silently emerging, appears on the streets. People's lips salute only doers, lovers, satisfiers, positive knowers. There will shortly be no more priests. I say their work is done. Death is without emergencies here, but life is perpetual emergencies here. Are your body, days, manners superb? After death, you shall be superb. Justice, health, self-esteem clear the way with irresistible power. How dare you place anything before a man? 14. Fall behind me, states. A man before all. Myself. Typical. Before all. Give me the pay I have served for. Give me to sing the songs of the great idea. Take all the rest. I have loved the earth, sun, animals. I have despised riches. I have given aims to everyone that asked, stood up for the stupid and crazy, devoted my income and labor to others. Hated tyrants, argued not concerning God, had patience and indulgence toward the people, Taken off my hat to nothing known or unknown. Gone freely with powerful, uneducated persons, and with the young, and with the mothers of families. Read these leaves to myself in the open air. Tried them by trees, stars, rivers. Dismissed whatever insulted my own soul, or defiled my body. Claimed nothing to myself which I have not carefully claimed for others on the same terms. Sped to the camps, and comrades found and accepted from every state. Upon this breast has many a dying soldier leaned to breathe his last. This arm, this hand, this voice have nourished, raised, restored to life, recalling many a prostrate form. I am willing to wait to be understood by the growth of the taste of myself, rejecting none, permitting all. Say, O oh mother, have I not to your thought been faithful? Have I not through life kept you and yours before me? 15. I swear I begin to see the meaning of these things. It is not the earth, it is not America who is great. It is I who am great, or to be great. It is you, up there, or anyone. It is to walk rapidly through civilizations, governments, theories, through poems, pageants, shows, to form individuals. Underneath all, individuals. I swear nothing is good to me now that ignores individuals. The American compact is all together with individuals. The only government is that which makes minute of individuals. The whole theory of the universe is directed unerringly to one single individual, namely to you. Mother, with subtle sense severe, 
with the naked sword in your hand. I saw you at last refuse to treat, but directly with individuals. 16. Underneath all, nativity. I swear I will stand by my own nativity, pious or impious, so be it. I swear I am charmed with nothing except nativity. Men, women, cities, nations are only beautiful from nativity. Underneath all is the expression of love for men and women. I swear I have seen enough of mean and impotent modes of expressing love for men and women. After this day I take my own modes of expressing love for men and women, in myself. I swear I will have each quality of my race in myself. Talk as you like. He only suits these states whose manners favor the audacity and sublime turbulence of the states. Underneath, the lessons of things, spirits, nature, governments, ownerships. I swear I perceive other lessons. Underneath all, to me, is myself, to you, yourself. The same monotonous old song. 17. Oh, I see flashing that this America is only you and me. Its power, weapons, testimony are you and me. Its crimes, lies, thefts, defections are you and me. Its Congress is you and me. The officers, capitals, armies, ships are you and me. Its endless gestations of new states are you and me. The war, that war so bloody and grim, the war I will henceforth forget, was you and me. Natural and artificial are you and me. Freedom, language, poems, employments are you and me. Past, present, future are you and me. I dare not shirk any part of myself not any part of America, good or bad, not to build for that which builds for mankind, not to balance ranks, complexions, creeds, and the sexes, not to justify science nor the march of equality, nor to feed the arrogant blood of the brawn beloved of time. I am for those that have never been mastered, for men and women whose tempers have never been mastered, for those whom laws, theories, Conventions can never master. I am for those who walk abreast with the whole earth, who inaugurate one to inaugurate all. I will not be outfaced by irrational things. I will penetrate what is in them that is sarcastic upon me. I will make cities and civilizations defer to me. This is what I have learnt from America. It is the amount, and it I teach again. Democracy, while weapons were everywhere aimed at your breast, I saw you serenely give forth to immortal children, saw in dreams your dilating form, saw you with spreading mantle covering the world. 18. I will confront these shows of the day and night. I will know if I am to be less than they. I will see if I am not as majestic as they. I will see if I am not as subtle and real as they. I will see if I am to be less generous than they. I will see if I have no meaning, while the houses and ships have meaning. I will see if the fishes and birds are to be enough for themselves, and I am not to be enough for myself. I match my spirit against yours, you orbs, growths, mountains, brutes. Copious as you are, I absorb you all in myself and become the master myself. America isolated, yet embodying all. What is it finally except myself? These states, what are they except myself? I know now why the earth is gross, tantalizing, wicked. It is for my sake. I take you specially to be mine. You terrible, rude forms. Mother, bend down, bend close to me your face. I know not what these plots and wars and deferments are for. 
I know not fruition's success, but I know that through war and crime your work goes on, and must yet go on. 19. Thus, by blue Ontario's shore, while the winds fanned me and the waves came trooping through me, I thrilled with the power's pulsations, and the charm of my theme was upon me, till the tissues that held me parted their ties upon me, and I saw the free souls of poets, the loftiest bards of past ages strode before me, strange, large men, long unwaked, undisclosed, were disclosed to me. 20. Of my rapt verse, my call, mock me not, not for the bards of the past, not to invoke them have I launched you forth, not to call even those lofty bards here by Ontario's shores have I sung so capricious and loud my savage song. Bards for my own land only I invoke, for the war, the war is over, the field is cleared. Till they strike up marches henceforth triumphant and onward to cheer, O mother, your boundless expectant soul. Bards of the great idea, bards of the peaceful inventions, for the war, the war is over. Get bards of latent armies, a million soldiers waiting ever ready, bards with songs as from burning coals or the lightning's forked stripes. Ample Ohio's, Canada's bards, bards of California, inland bards, bards of the war. You, by my charm, I invoke. Reversals Let that which stood in front go behind. Let that which was behind advance to the front. Let bigots, fools, unclean persons offer new propositions. Let the old propositions be postponed. Let a man seek pleasure everywhere except in himself. Let a woman seek happiness everywhere except in herself. End of Book 23 Recorded by Annie Coleman in St. Louis, Missouri in January 2006 Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman Book 24 Autumn Rivulets Part 1 As Consequent, Etc. As Consequent from store of summer rains, or wayward rivulets in autumn flowing, or many a herb-lined brook's reticulations, or subterranean sea brills making for the sea, songs of continued years I sing. Life's ever modern rapids first, soon, soon to blend with the old streams of death. Some threading Ohio's farm fields or the woods. Some down Colorado's canyons from sources of perpetual snow. Some half hid in Oregon or away southward in Texas. Some in the north finding their way to Erie, Niagara, Ottawa. Some to Atlantica's bays and so to the great salt brine. In you, whoever you are, my book perusing, in I myself, in all the world, these currents flowing, all, all toward the mystic ocean tending, currents for starting a continent new, overture sent to the solid, out of the liquid, fusion of ocean and land, Tender and pensive waves, not safe and peaceful only, waves roused and ominous too. Out of the depths of the storm's abysmic waves, who knows whence, raging over the vast with many a broken spar and tattered sail. Or from the sea of time, collecting, vasting all, I bring a windrow drift of weeds and shells. 
O oh, little shells, so curious convolute, so limpid cold and voiceless, will you not, little shells, to the tympans of temples held, murmurs and echoes still call up, eternity's music faint and far, wafted inland, sent from Atlantico's rim, strains for the soul of the prairies, whisper reverberations, Chords for the ear of the West, joyously sounding. Your tidings old, yet ever new and untranslatable. Infinitesimals out of my life and many a life. For not my life and years alone I give. All, all I give. These waifs from the deep, cast high and dry. Washed on America's shores. The Return of the Heroes. One. For the lands and for these passionate days, and for myself, now I awhile retire to thee, O soil of autumn fields, reclining on thy breast, giving myself to thee. Answering the pulses of thy sane and equable heart, turning a verse for thee. O earth that hast no voice, confide to me a voice. O harvest of my lands, O boundless summer growths, O lavish brown parturient earth, O infinite teeming womb, a song to narrate thee. Two. Ever upon this stage is acted God's calm annual drama. Gorgeous processions, songs of birds, sunrise that fullest feeds and freshens most the soul. The heaving sea, the waves upon the shore, the musical strong waves, the woods, the stalwart trees. The slender tapering trees, the lilliput countless armies of the grass, the heat, the showers, the measureless pasturages, the scenery of the snows, the wind's free orchestra, the stretching light hung roof of clouds, the clear cerulean and the silvery fringes, the high dilating stars. The placid beckoning stars, the moving flocks and herds, the plains and emerald meadows, the shows of all the varied lands and all the growths and products. Three, fecund America, today thou art all overset in births and joys. Thou groanest with riches. Thy wealth clothes thee as a swathing garment. Thou laughest loud with ache of great possessions. A myriad twining life, like interlacing vines, binds all thy vast domain. As some huge ship freighted to water's edge, thou ridest into port. As rain falls from the heaven and vapors rise from earth. So have the precious values fallen upon thee, and risen out of thee, thou envy of the globe, thou miracle, thou bathed, choked, swimming in plenty, thou lucky mistress of the tranquil barns, thou prairie dame that sittest in the middle and lookest out upon thy world, and lookest east and lookest west, dispensatress. That by a word givest a thousand miles, a million farms, and missest nothing. Thou all acceptress, thou hospitable, thou only art hospitable as God is hospitable. Four. When late I sang, sad was my voice. Sad were the shows around me, with deafening noises of hatred and smoke of war. In the midst of the conflict, the heroes, I stood, or passed with slow step through the wounded and dying. 
But now I sing not of war, nor the measured march of soldiers, nor the tents of camps, nor the regiments hastily coming up, deploying in line of battle. No more the sad, unnatural shows of war. Asked room, those flushed immortal ranks, the first forth-stepping armies, Ask room, alas, the ghastly ranks, the armies dread that followed. Pass, pass, ye proud brigades, with your tramping, sinewy legs, with your shoulders young and strong, with your knapsacks and your muskets. How elate I stood and watched you, where starting off you marched. Pass, then rattle drums again. For an army heaves in sight, oh, another gathering army, swarming, trailing on the rear, oh, you dread accruing army, oh, you regiments so piteous, with your mortal diarrhea, with your fever, oh, my land's maimed darlings, with the plenteous bloody bandage and the crutch, lo, your pallid army follows. Five. But on these days of brightness, on the far-stretching, beauteous landscape, the roads and lanes, the high-piled farm wagons, and the fruits and barns, should the dead intrude? Ah, the dead to me mar not. They fit well in nature. They fit very well in the landscape under the trees and grass, and along the edge of the sky, in the horizon's far margin. Nor do I forget you, departed, nor in winter or summer my lost ones, but most in the open air as now when my soul is rapt and at peace, like pleasing phantoms, your memories rising glide silently by me, Six. I saw at the day the return of the heroes, yet the heroes never surpassed shall never return. Them that day I saw not. I saw the interminable corps. I saw the processions of armies. I saw them approaching, defiling by with divisions, streaming northward, their work done, camping a while in clusters of mighty camps. No holiday soldiers, youthful yet veterans, worn, swart, handsome, strong, of the stock of homestead and workshop, hardened of many a long campaign and sweaty march, inured on many a hard-fought bloody field. A pause, the armies wait, a million flushed, embattled conquerors wait. The world, too, waits. Then, soft as breaking night, and sure as dawn, they melt, they disappear. Exult, O oh lands, victorious lands! Not there your victory on those red shuddering fields, but here, and hence your victory. Melt, melt away, ye armies, disperse, ye blue-clad soldiers, resolve ye back again, give up for good your deadly arms, other the arms the fields henceforth for you, or south or north, with saner wars, sweet wars, life-giving wars. 7. Loud, O oh my throat, and clear, O oh soul, the season of thanks and the voice of full yielding, the chant of joy and power for boundless fertility. All tilled and untilled fields expand before me. I see the true arenas of my race, or first or last, man's innocent and strong arenas. I see the heroes at other toils. I see well wielded in their hands the better weapons. I see where the mother of all, with full spanning eye, gazes forth, dwells long, 
and counts the varied gathering of the products. Busy the far, the sunlit panorama, prairie, orchard, and yellow grain of the north, cotton and rice of the south, and Louisiana and cane, open unseated fallows, rich fields of clover and timothy, kine and horses feeding, and droves of sheep and swine, and many a stately river flowing, and many a jocund brook, and healthy uplands with herby perfumed breezes, and the good green grass, that delicate miracle, the ever recurring grass. Eight. Toil on, heroes, harvest the products, not alone on those warlike fields, the mother of all, with dilated form and lambent eyes, watched you. Toil on, heroes, toil well, handle the weapons well, the mother of all, yet here as ever she watches you. Well pleased America, thou beholdest, over the fields of the west those crawling monsters, the human divine inventions, the labor-saving implements, beholdest, moving in every direction, imbued, as with life, the revolving hay-rakes, the steam-power reaping machines, and the horsepower machines, the engines, thrashers of grain and cleaners of grain, well separating the straw, the nimble work of the patent pitchfork. Beholdest the newer sawmill, the southern cotton gin, and the rice cleanser. Beneath thy look, O maternal, with these and else, and with their own strong hands, the heroes harvest. All gather and all harvest. Yet, but for thee, O powerful, not a scythe might swing as now in security. Not a maize stalk dangle as now its silken tassels in peace. Under thee only they harvest, even but a wisp of hay under thy great face only. Harvest the wheat of Ohio, Illinois, Wisconsin, every barbed spear under thee. Harvest the maize of Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, each ear in its light green sheath. Gather the hay to its myriad mows in the odorous, tranquil barns. Oats to their bins, the white potato, the buckwheat of Michigan to theirs. Gather the cotton in Mississippi or Alabama. Dig and hoard the golden, the sweet potato of Georgia and the Carolinas. Clip the wool of California or Pennsylvania. Cut the flax in the middle states, or hemp or tobacco in the borders. Pick the pea and the bean, or pull apples from the trees, or bunches of grapes from the vines, or aught that ripens in all these states, or north or south, under the beaming sun and under thee. There was a child went forth. There was a child went forth every day, and the first object he looked upon, that object he became, and that object became part of him for the day, or a certain part of the day, or for many years, or stretching cycles of years. The early lilacs became part of this child, and grass and white and red morning glories and white and red clover and the song of the phoebe bird and the third month lambs and the sow's pink faint litter and the mare's foal and the cow's calf and the noisy brood of the barnyard or by the mire of the pond side and the fish suspending themselves so curiously below there and the beautiful, curious liquid, and the water plants with their graceful flat heads, all become part of him. 
the field sprouts of fourth month and fifth month become part of him. Winter grain sprouts and those of the light yellow corn and the esculent roots of the garden and the apple trees covered with blossoms and the fruit afterward and wood berries and the commonest weeds by the road and the old drunkard staggering home from the outhouse of the tavern whence he had lately risen and the schoolmistress that passed on her way to the school and the friendly boys that passed and the quarrelsome boys and the tidy and fresh-cheeked girls and the barefoot negro boy and girl and all the changes of city and country wherever he went his own parents he that had fathered him and she that had conceived him in her womb and birthed him they gave this child more of themselves than that they gave him afterward every day they became part of him the mother at home quietly placing the dishes on the supper table the mother with mild words clean her cap and gown a wholesome odor falling off her person and clothes as she walks by the father strong self-sufficient manly mean angered unjust the blow the quick loud word the tight bargain the crafty lure the family usages the language the company the furniture the yearning and swelling heart affection that will not be gainsaid the sense of what is real the thought if after all it should prove unreal the doubts of daytime and the doubts of nighttime the curious whether and how whether that which appears so is so or is it all flashes and specks men and women crowding fast in the streets if they are not flashes and specks what are they the streets themselves and the facades of houses and goods in the windows vehicles teams the heavy planked wharves the huge crossing at the ferries the village on the highland seen from afar at sunset the river between shadows aureola and mist the light falling on roofs and gables of white or brown two miles off the schooner nearby sleepily dropping down the tide the little boat slack towed astern the hurrying tumbling waves quick broken crests slapping the strata of colored clouds the long bar of maroon tint away solitary by itself the spread of purity it lies motionless in the horizon's edge the flying sea crow the fragrance of salt marsh and shore mud these became part of that child who went forth every day and who now goes and will always go forth every day old ireland far hence amid an isle of wondrous beauty crouching over a grave an ancient sorrowful mother once a queen now lean and tattered seated on the ground her old white hair drooping and disheveled round her shoulders at her feet fallen an unused royal harp long silent she too long silent mourning her shrouded hope and air of all the earth her heart most full of sorrow because most full of love Yet a word, ancient mother. You need crouch there no longer on the cold ground, with forehead between your knees. Oh, you need not sit there veiled in your old white hair so disheveled. For know you the one you mourn is not in that grave. It was an illusion. The son you love was not really dead. The Lord is not dead. 
He is risen again, young and strong, in another country. Even while you wept there, by your fallen harp, by the grave, what you wept for was translated, passed from the grave. The winds favored, and the sea sailed it, and now, with rosy and new blood, moves today in a new country. The City Dead House By the city dead house, by the gate, as idly sauntering, wending my way from the clangor, I curious pause, for lo, an outcast form, a poor dead prostitute brought, her corpse they deposit unclaimed, it lies on the damp brick pavement. The divine woman, her body, I see the body, I look on it alone. That house, once full of passion and beauty, all else I notice not, nor stillness so cold, nor running water from faucet, nor odors more biffic impress me. But the house alone, that wondrous house, that delicate fair house, that ruin, that immortal house more than all the rows of dwellings ever built, or white domed capital with majestic figure surmounted, or all the old high spired cathedrals, that little house alone more than them all, poor desperate house, fair fearful wreck, tenement of a soul, itself a soul, unclaimed avoided house, Take one breath from my tremulous lips. Take one tear dropped aside as I go for thought of you. Dead house of love, house of madness and sin. Crumbled, crushed, house of life, erewhile talking and laughing. But, ah, uh, poor house, dead even then. Months, years. An echoing, garnished house, but dead, dead, dead. This Compost 1. Something startles me where I thought I was safest. I withdraw from the still woods I loved. I will not go now on the pastures to walk. I will not strip the clothes from my body to meet my lover the sea. I will not touch my flesh to the earth as to other flesh to renew me. Oh, how can it be that the ground itself does not sicken? How can you be alive, you growths of spring? How can you furnish health, you blood of herbs, roots, orchards, grain? Are they not continually putting distempered corpses within you? Is not every continent worked over and over with sour dead? Where have you disposed of their carcasses? Those drunkards and gluttons of so many generations? Where have you drawn off all the foul liquid and meat? I do not see any of it upon you today. Or perhaps I am deceived. I will run a furrow with my plow. I will press my spade through the sod and turn it up underneath. I am sure I shall expose some of the foul meat. 2. Behold this compost, behold it well. Perhaps every mite has once formed part of a sick person. Yet behold, the grass of spring covers the prairies. The bean bursts noiselessly through the mold in the garden. The delicate spear of the onion pierces upward. The apple buds cluster together on the apple branches. The resurrection of the wheat appears with pale visage out of its graves. The tinge awakes over the willow tree and the mulberry tree. The he birds carol mornings and evenings while the she birds sit on their nests. The young of poultry break through the hatched eggs. The newborn of animals appear. The calf is dropped from the cow, the colt from the mare, 
Out of its little hill faithfully rise the potato's dark green leaves. Out of its hill rises the yellow maize stalk, the lilacs bloom in the dooryards. The summer growth is innocent and disdainful above all these strata of sour dead. What chemistry! That the winds are really not infectious, that this is no cheat, this transparent green wash of the sea, which is so amorous after me, that it is safe to allow it to lick my naked body all over with its tongues, that it will not endanger me with the fevers that have deposited themselves in it, that all is clean forever and forever, that the cool drink from the well tastes so good, the blackberries are so flavorous and juicy, that the fruits of the apple orchard and the orange orchard, that melons, grapes, peaches, plums, will none of them poison me, that when I recline on the grass, I do not catch any disease, though probably every spear of grass rises out of what was once catching disease. Now I am terrified at the earth. It is that calm and patient. It grows such sweet things out of such corruptions. It turns harmless and stainless on its axis with such endless successions of diseased corpses. It distills such exquisite winds out of such infused fetter. It renews with such unwitting looks its prodigal, annual, sumptuous crops. It gives such divine materials to men and accepts such leavings from them at last. To a Foiled European Revolutionaire Courage yet, my brother or my sister. Keep on. Liberty is to be subserved, whatever occurs. There is nothing that is quelled by one or two failures, or any number of failures, or by the indifference or ingratitude of the people, or by any unfaithfulness, or the show of the touches of power, soldiers, cannon, penal statutes. What we believe in waits latent forever through all the continents, invites no one, promises nothing, sits in calmness and light, is positive and composed, knows no discouragement, waiting patiently, waiting its time. Not songs of loyalty alone are these, but songs of insurrection also. For I am the sworn poet of every dauntless rebel the world over, and he going with me leaves peace and routine behind him, and stakes his life to be lost at any moment. The battle rages with many a loud alarm and frequent advance and retreat. The infidel triumphs, or supposes he triumphs. The prison, scaffold, garret, handcuffs, iron necklace and lead balls do their work. The named and unnamed heroes pass to other spheres. The great speakers and writers are exiled. They lie sick in distant lands. The cause is asleep. The strongest throats are choked with their own blood. The young men droop their eyelashes toward the ground when they meet. But for all this, liberty has not gone out of the place, nor the infidel entered into full possession. When liberty goes out of a place, it is not the first to go, nor the second or third to go. It waits for all the rest to go. It is the last. When there are no more memories of heroes and martyrs, and when all life and all the souls of men and women are discharged from any part of the earth, then only shall liberty, or the idea of liberty, be discharged from that part of the earth, and the infidel come into full possession. Then courage, European revolter, revoltress, for till all ceases, neither must you cease. I do not know what you are for, 
I do not know what I am for myself, nor what anything is for. But I will search carefully for it, even in being foiled, in defeat, poverty, misconception, imprisonment, for they too are great. Did we think victory great? So it is, but now it seems to me, when it cannot be helped, that defeat is great, and that death and dismay are great. Unnamed Land Nations ten thousand years before these states, and many times ten thousand years before these states, garnered clusters of ages that men and women like us grew up and traveled their course and passed on. What vast-built cities, what orderly republics, what pastoral tribes and nomads, what histories, rulers, heroes, perhaps transcending all others, what laws, customs, wealth, arts, traditions, what sort of marriage, what costumes, what physiology and phrenology, what of liberty and slavery among them, what they thought of death and the soul, who were witty and wise, who beautiful and poetic, who brutish and undeveloped, not a mark, not a record remains, and yet all remains. Oh, I know that those men and women were not for nothing, any more than we are for nothing. I know that they belong to the scheme of the world, every bit as much as we now belong to it. Afar they stand, yet near to me they stand, some with oval countenances, learned and calm, some naked and savage, some like huge collections of insects, some in tents, herdsmen, patriarchs, tribes, horsemen, some prowling through woods, some living peaceably on farms, laboring, reaping, filling barns, some traversing paved avenues amid temples, palaces, factories, libraries, shows, courts, theaters, wonderful monuments. Are those billions of men really gone? Are those women of the old experience of the earth gone? Do their lives, cities, arts rest only with us? Did they achieve nothing for good for themselves? I believe of all those men and women that filled the unnamed lands, every one exists this hour here or elsewhere, invisible to us, in exact proportion to what he or she grew from in life and out of what he or she did, felt, became, loved, sinned in life. I believe that was not the end of those nations or any person of them, any more than this shall be the end of my nation or of me, of their languages, governments, marriage, literature, products, games, wars, manners, crimes, prisons, slaves, heroes, poets. I suspect their results curiously await in the yet unseen world, counterparts of what accrued to them in the seen world. I suspect I shall meet them there. I suspect I shall there find each old particular of those unnamed lands. Song of Prudence Manhattan streets I sauntered, pondering On time, space, reality On such as these, and abreast with them, prudence The last explanation always remains to be made about prudence Little and large alike drop quietly aside from the prudence that suits immorality.
The soul is of itself, all verges to it, all has reference to what ensues. All that a person does, says, thinks, is of consequence. Not a move can a man or woman make that affects him or her in a day, month, any part of the direct lifetime, or the hour of death, but the same affects him or her onward, afterward, through the indirect lifetime. The indirect is just as much as the direct. The spirit receives from the body just as much as it gives to the body, if not more. Not one word or deed, not venereal sore, discoloration, privacy of the onanist, putridity of gluttons or rum drinkers, peculation, cunning, betrayal, murder, seduction, prostitution, but has results beyond death, as really as before death. Charity and personal force are the only investments worth anything. No specification is necessary. All that a male or female does, that is vigorous, benevolent, clean, is so much profit to him or her in the unshakable order of the universe and through the whole scope of it forever. Who has been wise receives interest. Savage, felon, president, judge, farmer, sailor, mechanic, literat, young, old, it is the same. The interest will come round. All will come round. Singly, wholly, to affect now, affected their time, will forever affect. All of the past and all of the present and all of the future. All the brave actions of war and peace. All help given to relatives, strangers, the poor, old, sorrowful young children widows, the sick, and to shunned persons, all self-denial that stood steady and aloof on wrecks and saw others fill the seats of the boats, all offering of substance or life for the good old cause or for a friend's sake or opinion's sake, all pains of enthusiasts scoffed at by their neighbors, all the limitless sweet love and precious suffering of mothers, all honest men baffled in strifes recorded or unrecorded, all the grandeur and good of ancient nations whose fragments we inherit, all the good of the dozens of ancient nations unknown to us by name, date, location, all that was ever manfully begun whether it succeeded or no, all suggestions of the divine mind of man, or the divinity of his mouth, or the shaping of his great hands, all that is well thought or said, this day, on any part of the globe, or on any of the wandering stars, or on any of the fixed stars, by those there as we are here. All that is henceforth to be thought, or done by you, whoever you are, or by anyone. These inure, have inured, shall inure, to the identities from which they sprang, or shall spring. Did you guess anything lived only its moment? The world does not so exist. No parts palpable or impalpable so exist. No consummation exists without being from some long previous consummation, and that from some other, without the farthest conceivable one coming a bit nearer the beginning than any. Whatever satisfies souls is true. Prudence entirely satisfies the craving and glut of souls, itself only finally satisfies the soul. The soul has that measureless pride which revolts from every lesson but its own. Now I breathe the word of the prudence that walks abreast with time, space, reality, 
that answers the pride which refuses every lesson but its own. What is prudence is indivisible, declines to separate one part of life from every part, divides not the righteous from the unrighteous, or the living from the dead, matches every thought or act by its correlative, knows no possible forgiveness or deputed atonement, knows that the young man who composedly periled his life and lost it has done exceedingly well for himself without doubt, that he who never periled his life but retains it to old age in riches and ease has probably achieved nothing for himself worth mentioning, knows that only that person has really learned who has learned to prefer results, who favors body and soul the same, who perceives the indirect assuredly following the direct, who in his spirit, in any emergency, whatever neither hurries nor avoids death. The Singer in the Prison O oh, sight of pity, shame, and dole, a fearful thought, a convict soul. One. Rang the refrain along the hall, the prison, rose to the roof, the vaults of heaven above, pouring in floods of melody, in tones so pensive, sweet, and strong, the like whereof was never heard, reaching the far-off sentry, and the armed guards who ceased their pacing, making the hearer's pulses stop for ecstasy and awe. Two, the sun was low in the west one winter day, when down a narrow aisle amid the thieves and outlaws of the land, there by the hundred seated, seer-faced murderers, wily counterfeiters, gathered to Sunday church in prison walls, the keepers round, plenteous, well-armed, watching with vigilant eyes. Calmly a lady walked, holding a little innocent child by either hand, whom, seating on their stools beside her on the platform, she, first preluding with the instrument, a low and musical prelude, in voice surpassing all, sang forth a quaint old hymn, a soul confined by bars and bands Cries help, O oh help, and wrings her hands Blinded her eyes, bleeding her breast Nor pardon finds, nor balm of rest Ceaseless she paces to and fro O oh, heartsick days, O oh, nights of woe Nor hand of friend, nor loving face Nor favor comes, nor word of grace it was not that I sinned the sin, the ruthless body dragged me in. Though long I strove courageously, the body was too much for me. Dear prisoned soul, bear up a space, for soon or late the certain grace, to set thee free and bear thee home, the heavenly pardoner, death, shall come. Convict no more, nor shame, nor dull, depart, a God-enfranchised soul. 3. The singer ceased. One glance swept from her clear, calm eyes o'er all those upturned faces, strange sea of prison faces, a thousand varied, crafty, brutal, seamed, and beauteous faces, then rising, passing back along the narrow aisle between them, while her gown touched them, rustling in the silence, she vanished with her children in the dusk. While upon all convicts and armed keepers ere they stirred, convict forgetting prison, keeper his loaded pistol, a hush and pause fell down a wondrous minute, with deep half-stifled sobs and sound of bad men bowed and moved to weeping and youth's convulsive breathings memories of home 
The mother's voice in lullaby, the sister's care, the happy childhood. The long pent spirit roused to reminiscence. A wondrous minute then, but after, in the solitary night, to many, many there, years after, even in the hour of death, the sad refrain, the tune, the voice, the words, resumed, the large calm lady walks the narrow aisle, the wailing melody again, the singer in the prison sings, O oh, sight of pity, shame, and dole, a fearful thought, a convict soul. End of part one of book 24, Autumn Rivulets. Recorded by Annie Coleman in St. Louis, Missouri in January 2006. Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Book 24, Autumn Rivulets, Part 2 Warble for Lilac Time Warble me now for joy of lilac time, returning in reminiscence. Sort me, O tongue and lips, for nature's sake, souvenirs of earliest summer. Gather the welcome signs, as children with pebbles or stringing shells, Put in April and May the hylas croaking in the ponds, the elastic air. Bees, butterflies, the sparrow with its simple notes, bluebird and darting swallow, nor forget the high hole flashing his golden wings. The tranquil sunny haze, the clinging smoke, the vapor, shimmer of waters with fish in them, the cerulean above, all that is jocund and sparkling, the brooks running, the maple woods, the crisp February days and the sugar making, the robin where he hops bright-eyed, brown-breasted, with musical clear call at sunrise and again at sunset, or flitting among the trees of the apple orchard, building the nest of his mate, the melted snow of March, the willow sending forth its yellow-green sprouts. For springtime is here, the summer is here, and what is this in it and from it? Thou, soul, unloosened, the restlessness after I know not what. Come, let us lag here no longer. Let us be up and away. Oh, if one could but fly like a bird. Oh, to escape, to sail forth as in a ship. To glide with thee, O soul, o'er all, in all, as a ship o'er the waters. Gathering these hints, the preludes, the blue sky, the grass, the morning drops of dew, the lilac scent, the bushes with dark green heart-shaped leaves, wood violets, the little delicate pale blossoms, called innocence, samples and sorts not for themselves alone, but for their atmosphere. To grace the bush I love, to sing with the birds, a warble for joy of returning in reminiscence. Outlines for a Tomb G.P. Buried, 1870 1. What may we chant, O thou, within this tomb? What tablets, outlines, hang for thee, O millionaire? The life thou livedst we know not, but that thou walkest thy years in barter, mid the haunts of brokers, nor heroism thine, nor war, nor glory. 2. Silent, my soul, with drooping lids, as waiting, pondered, turning from all the samples, monuments of heroes, while through the interior vistas, noiseless uprose, phantasmic as by night auroras of the north, lambent tableaus, prophetic bodiless scenes, spiritual projections. In one, among the city streets, 
a laborer's home appeared. After his day's work done, cleanly sweet aired the glass light burning, the carpet swept and a fire in the cheerful stove. In one, the sacred parturition scene, a happy painless mother birthed a perfect child. In one, at a bounteous morning meal, sat peaceful parents with contented sons. In one, by twos and threes, young people, hundreds concentrating, walked the paths and streets and roads toward a tall domed school. In one, a trio beautiful, grandmother, loving daughter, loving daughter's daughter, sat, chatting and sewing. In one, along a suite of noble rooms, mid plenteous books and journals, paintings on the walls, fine statuettes, were groups of friendly journeymen, mechanics young and old, reading, conversing. All, all the shows of laboring life, city and country, women's, men's, and children's, their wants provided for, hued in the sun and tinged for once with joy. Marriage, the street, the factory, farm, the house room, lodging room, labor and toll, the bath, gymnasium, playground, library, college. The student, boy or girl, led forward to be taught. The sick cared for, the shoeless shod, the orphan fathered and mothered, the hungry fed, the houseless housed, the intentions perfect and divine, the workings, details, haply human. 3. O thou within this tomb, from thee such scenes, thou stintless, lavish giver, tallying the gifts of earth, large as the earth, thy name in earth, with mountains, fields, and tides. Nor by your streams alone, you rivers, by you, your banks, Connecticut, by you and all your teeming life, Old Thames, by you, Potomac, laving the ground, Washington trod, by you, Patapsco, you, Hudson, you, endless Mississippi, nor you alone, but to the high seas launch, my thought, his memory. Out from behind this mask to confront a portrait. One. Out from behind this bending, rough-cut mask, these lights and shades, this drama of the whole, this common curtain of the face contained in me, for me, in you, for you, in each, for each. Tragedies, sorrows, laughter, tears, oh heaven, the passionate teeming plays this curtain hid, this glaze of God's serenest, purest sky, this film of Satan's seething pit, this heart's geography's map, this limitless small continent, this soundless sea. Out from the convolutions of this globe, this subtler astronomic orb than sun or moon, than Jupiter, Venus, Mars, this condensation of the universe, nay, here the only universe, here the idea, all in this mystic handful wrapped. These burned eyes flashing to you to pass to future time, to launch and spin through space revolving sidling from these to emanate to you whoever you are a look two a traveler of thoughts and years of peace and war of youth long sped and middle age declining as the first volume of a tale perused and laid away and this the second Songs, ventures, speculations, presently to close. Lingering a moment here and now, to you I opposite turn, as on the road, or at some crevice door by chance, or opened window. Pausing, inclining, bearing my head, you specially I greet, 
to draw and clinch your soul for once inseparably with mine. Then travel, travel on. Vocalism 1. Vocalism, measure, concentration, determination, and the divine power to speak words. Are you full-lunged and limber-lipped from long trial, from vigorous practice, from physique? Do you move in these broad lands as broad as they? Come duly to the divine power to speak words. For only at last, after many years, after chastity, friendship, procreation, prudence, and nakedness, after treading ground and breasting river and lake, after a loosened throat, after absorbing eras, temperaments, races, after knowledge, freedom, crimes, after complete faith, after clarifyings, elevations, and removing obstructions, after these and more, it is just possible there comes to a man, woman, the divine power to speak words. Then toward that man or that woman swiftly hasten all, None refuse, all attend. Armies, ships, antiquities, libraries, paintings, machines, cities, hate, despair, amity, pain, theft, murder, aspiration, form in close ranks. They debouch as they are wanted to march obediently through the mouth of that man or that woman. 2. Oh, what is it in me that makes me tremble so at voices? Surely whoever speaks to me in the right voice, him or her I shall follow, as the water follows the moon, silently, with fluid steps, anywhere around the globe. All waits for the right voices. Where is the practiced and perfect organ? Where is the developed soul? For I see every word uttered thence has deeper, sweeter, new sounds, impossible on less terms. I see brains and lips closed, tympans and temples unstruck, until that comes which has the quality to strike and to unclose, until that comes which has the quality to bring forth what lies slumbering, forever ready in all words. To him that was crucified. My spirit to yours, dear brother. Do not mind, because many sounding your name do not understand you. I do not sound your name, but I understand you. I specify you with joy, O oh my comrade, to salute you, and to salute those who are with you, before and since, and those to come also that we all labor together, transmitting the same charge and succession. We few equals indifferent of lands, indifferent of times. We enclosers of all continents, all castes, allowers of all theologies, compassionators, perceivers, rapport of men. We walk silent among disputes and assertions, but reject not the disputers, nor anything that is asserted. We hear the bawling and din. We are reached at by divisions, jealousies, recriminations on every side. They close peremptorily upon us to surround us, my comrade. Yet we walk unheld, free, the whole earth over, journeying up and down till we make our ineffaceable mark upon time, and the diverse eras, till we saturate time and eras, that the men and women of races, ages to come, may prove brethren and lovers as we are. You felons on trial in courts. You felons on trial in courts, you convicts in prison cells, you sentenced assassins, chained and handcuffed with iron, who am I too that I am not on trial or in prison? Me, ruthless and devilish as any, that my wrists are not chained with iron, or my ankles with iron. 
you prostitutes flaunting over the trottoir or obscene in your rooms, who am I that I should call you more obscene than myself? Oh, culpable, I acknowledge, I expose. Oh, admirers, praise me not, compliment not me, you make me wince. I see what you do not, I know what you do not. Inside these breastbones I lie, smutched and choked. Beneath this face that appears so impassive, hell's tides continually run. Lusts and wickedness are acceptable to me. I walk with delinquents, with passionate love. I feel I am of them. I belong to those convicts and prostitutes myself. And henceforth I will not deny them. For how can I deny myself? Laws for Creations Laws for creations, for strong artists and leaders, for fresh broods of teachers and perfect literates for America, for noble savants and coming musicians, all must have reference to the ensemble of the world and the compact truth of the world. There shall be no subject too pronounced. All works shall illustrate the divine law of indirections. What do you suppose creation is? What do you suppose will satisfy the soul, except to walk free and own no superior? What do you suppose I would intimate to you in a hundred ways, but that man or woman is as good as God, and that there is no God any more divine than yourself, and that that is what the oldest and newest myths finally mean, and that you, or anyone, must approach creations through such laws. To a common prostitute. Be composed. Be at ease with me. I am Walt Whitman, liberal and lusty as nature. Not till the sun excludes you do I exclude you. Not till the waters refuse to glisten for you and the leaves to rustle for you do my words refuse to glisten and rustle for you. My girl, I appoint you with an appointment, and I charge you that you make preparation to be worthy to meet me, and I charge you that you be patient and perfect till I come. Till then, I salute you with a significant look that you do not forget me. I was looking a long while. I was looking a long while for intentions for a clue to the history of the past for myself and for these chants, and now I have found it. It is not in those paged fables in the libraries. Them I neither accept nor reject. It is no more in the legends than in all else. It is in the present. It is this earth today. It is in democracy, the purport and aim of all the past. It is the life of one man or one woman today, the average man today. It is in languages, social customs, literatures, arts. It is in the broad show of artificial things, ships, machinery, politics, creeds, modern improvements, and the interchange of nations, all for the modern, all for the average man of today. thought of persons arrived at high positions ceremonies wealth scholarships and the like to me all that those persons have arrived at sinks away from them except as it results to their bodies and souls so that often to me they appear gaunt and naked and often to me each one mocks the others and mocks himself or herself and of each one the core of life, namely happiness, is full of the rotten excrement of maggots. And often to me those men and women pass unwittingly the true realities of life and go toward false realities. And often to me they are alive after what custom has served them, but nothing more. And often to me they are sad, hasty, 
Unwaked sonambules walking the dusk. Miracles. Why, who makes much of a miracle? As to me, I know of nothing else but miracles. Whether I walk the streets of Manhattan or dart my sight over the roofs of houses toward the sky or wade with naked feet along the beach just in the edge of the water or stand under trees in the woods or talk by day with anyone I love or sleep in the bed at night with anyone I love or sit at table at dinner with the rest or look at strangers opposite me riding in the car or watch honeybees busy around the hive of a summer forenoon or animals feeding in the fields or birds or the wonderfulness of insects in the air or the wonderfulness of the sundown or of stars shining so quiet and bright or the exquisite, delicate, thin curve of the new moon in spring. These, with the rest, one and all, are to me miracles, the whole referring, yet each distinct, and in its place. To me, every hour of the light and dark is a miracle. Every cubic inch of space is a miracle. Every square yard of the surface of the earth is spread with the same, Every foot of the interior swarms with the same. To me, the sea is a continual miracle. The fishes that swim, the rocks, the motion of the waves, the ships with men in them. What stranger miracles are there? Sparkles from the wheel. Where the city's ceaseless crowd moves on the live long day, Withdrawn, I join a group of children watching. I pause aside with them. By the curb toward the edge of the flagging, a knife grinder works at his wheel, sharpening a great knife. Bending over, he carefully holds it to the stone. By foot and knee, with measured tread, he turns rapidly as he presses with light but firm hand. Forth issue then in copious golden jets, sparkles from the wheel. The scene and all its belongings, how they seize and affect me. The sad, sharp-chinned old man with worn clothes and broad shoulder band of leather. Myself, effusing and fluid, a phantom curiously floating, now here absorbed and arrested. The group, an unminded point set in a vast surrounding, the attentive, quiet children, the loud, proud, restive bass of the streets, the low, hoarse purr of the whirling stone, the light-pressed blade, diffusing, dropping, sideways darting, in tiny showers of gold, sparkles from the wheel. To a pupil, is reform needed? Is it through you? The greater the reform needed, the greater the personality you need to accomplish it. You, do you not see how it would serve to have eyes, blood, complexion, clean and sweet? Do you not see how it would serve to have such a body and soul that when you enter the crowd, an atmosphere of desire and command enters with you? and everyone is impressed with your personality. Oh, the magnet, the flesh, over and over. Go, dear friend, if need be, give up all else and commence today to inure yourself to pluck, reality, self-esteem, definiteness, elevatedness. Rest not till you rivet and publish yourself of your own personality. Unfolded out of the folds. Unfolded out of the folds of the woman, man comes unfolded and is always to come unfolded. Unfolded only out of the superbest woman of the earth is to come the superbest man of the earth. Unfolded out of the friendliest woman is to come the friendliest man. Unfolded only out of the perfect body of a woman 
can a man be formed of perfect body, unfolded only out of the inimitable poems of women, can come the poems of man, only thence have my poems come, unfolded out of the strong and arrogant woman I love, only thence can appear the strong and arrogant man I love. Unfolded by brawny embraces from the well-muscled woman love, only thence comes the brawny embraces of the man. Unfolded out of the folds of the woman's brain come all the folds of the man's brain, duly obedient. Unfolded out of the justice of the woman, all justice is unfolded. Unfolded out of the sympathy of the woman is all sympathy. A man is a great thing upon the earth and through eternity, but every of the greatness of man is unfolded out of a woman. First the man is shaped in the woman. He can then be shaped in himself. What am I after all? What am I after all but a child, pleased with the sound of my own name? repeating it over and over. I stand apart to hear. It never tires me. To you, your name also. Did you think there was nothing but two or three pronunciations in the sound of your name? Cosmos. Who includes diversity and is nature? Who is the amplitude of the earth and the coarseness and sexuality of the earth? and the great charity of the earth, and the equilibrium also. Who has not looked forth from the windows, the eyes for nothing, or whose brain held audience with messengers for nothing? Who contains believers and disbelievers? Who is the most majestic lover? Who holds dually his or her triune proportion of realism, spiritualism, and of the aesthetic or intellectual, who, having considered the body, finds all its organs and parts good? Who, out of the theory of the earth and of his or her body, understands by subtle analogies all other theories? The theory of a city, a poem, and of the large politics of these states, who believes not only in our globe with its sun and moon, but in other globes with their suns and moons? who, constructing the house of himself or herself, not for a day, but for all time, sees races, eras, dates, generations, the past, the future, dwelling there, like space, inseparable, together. Others may praise what they like. Others may praise what they like, but I, from the banks of the running Missouri, praise nothing in art or aught else, till it has well inhaled the atmosphere of this river, also the western prairie scent, and exudes it all again. Who learns my lesson complete? Who learns my lesson complete? Boss, journeyman, apprentice, churchman, and atheist, the stupid and the wise thinker, parents and offspring, merchant, clerk, porter and customer, editor, author, artist, and schoolboy, draw nigh and commence. It is no lesson. It lets down the bars to a good lesson, and that to another, and every one to another still. The great laws take and diffuse without argument. I am of the same style, for I am their friend. I love them, quits and quits. I do not halt and make salams. I try abstracted and hear beautiful tales of things and the reasons of things. They are so beautiful I nudge myself to listen. I cannot say to any person what I hear. I cannot say it to myself. It is very wonderful. It is no small matter 
this round and delicious globe moving so exactly in its orbit forever and ever, without one jolt or the untruth of a single second. I do not think it was made in six days, nor in ten thousand years, nor ten billions of years, nor planned and built one thing after another as an architect plans and builds a house. I do not think seventy years is the time of a man or woman, nor that seventy millions of years is the time of a man or woman, nor that years will ever stop the existence of me or anyone else. Is it wonderful that I should be immortal, as everyone is immortal? I know it is wonderful, but my eyesight is equally wonderful, and how I was conceived in my mother's womb is equally wonderful, and passed from a babe in the creeping trance of a couple of summers and winters to articulate and walk. All this is equally wonderful, and that my soul embraces you this hour. And we affect each other, without ever seeing each other, and never, perhaps, to see each other, is every bit as wonderful. And that I can think such thoughts as these is just as wonderful. And that I can remind you, and you think them and know them to be true, is just as wonderful. And that the moon spins round the earth, and on with the earth, is equally wonderful. And that they balance themselves with the sun and stars is equally wonderful. Tests. All submit to them where they sit, inner, secure, unapproachable to analysis in the soul. Not traditions. Not the outer authorities are the judges. They are the judges of outer authorities and of all traditions. They corroborate as they go only whatever corroborates themselves and touches themselves. For all that, they have it forever in themselves to corroborate far and near, without one exception. The torch. On my northwest coast, in the midst of the night, a fisherman's group stands watching. Out on the lake that expands before them, others are spearing salmon. The canoe, a dim, shadowy thing, moves across the black water, bearing a torch ablaze at the prow. O Star of France, 1870 to 71. O Star of France. The brightness of thy hope and strength and fame, like some proud ship that led the fleet so long, beseems today a wreck driven by the gale, a massless hulk, and mid its teeming, maddened, half-drowned crowds, nor helm nor helmsman, dim smitten star, orb not of France alone, pale symbol of my soul, its dearest hopes. The struggle and the daring, rage divine for liberty, of aspirations toward the far ideal, enthusiast dreams of brotherhood, of terror to the tyrant and the priest, star crucified by traitors sold, star panting o'er a land of death, heroic land, strange, passionate, mocking, frivolous land. Miserable, yet for thy errors, vanities, sins, I will not now rebuke thee. Thy unexampled woes and pangs have quelled them all, and left thee sacred. In that, amid thy many faults, thou ever aimest high, and that thou wouldst not really sell thyself, however great the price, and that thou surely wakest weeping from thy drugged sleep. And that alone, among thy sisters, thou, giantess, didst rend the ones that shamed thee. And that thou couldst not, wouldst not wear the usual chains. This cross, thy livid face, thy pierced hands and feet, the spear thrust in thy side. 
O star, O ship of France, beat back and baffled long, bear up, O smitten orb, O ship, continue on. Sure as the ship of all, the earth itself, product of deathly fire and turbulent chaos, forth from its spasms of fury and its poisons, issuing at last in perfect power and beauty, onward, beneath the sun, following its course. So thee, O ship of France, finished the days, the clouds dispelled, the travail o'er, the long-sought extrication, when, lo, reborn, high o'er the European world, in gladness answering thence, as face afar to face, reflecting ours, Columbia. Again thy star, O France, fair lustrous star, in heavenly peace, clearer, more bright than ever, shall beam immortal. The Ox Tamer In a faraway northern county, in the placid pastoral region, lives my farmer friend, the theme of my recitative, a famous tamer of oxen. There they bring him the three-year-olds and the four-year-olds to break them. He will take the wildest steer in the world and break him and tame him. He will go fearless without any whip where the young bullock chafes up and down the yard. The bullock's head tosses restless high in the air with raging eyes. Yet see you how soon his rage subsides, how soon this tamer tames him. See you, on the farms here about a hundred oxen young and old, and he is the man who has tamed them. They all know him, all are affectionate to him. See you, some are such beautiful animals, so lofty looking. Some are buff colored, some mottled. One has a white line running along his back. Some are brindled. Some have wide flaring horns, a good sign. See you, the bright hides. See the two with stars on their foreheads. See the round bodies and broad backs. How straight and square they stand on their legs. What fine, sagacious eyes. How straight they watch their tamer. They wish him near them. How they turn to look after him. What yearning expression. How uneasy they are when he moves away from them. Now I marvel what it can be he appears to them. Books, politics, poems depart. All else departs. I confess, I envy only his fascination. My silent, illiterate friend, whom a hundred oxen love, there in his life on farms, in the northern county far, in the placid pastoral region. An Old Man's Thought of School For the Inauguration of a Public School, Camden, New Jersey, 1874 an old man's thought of school, an old man gathering youthful memories and blooms that youth itself cannot. Now only do I know you, O oh, fair auroral skies, O oh, morning dew upon the grass. And these I see, these sparkling eyes, these stores of mystic meaning, these young lives, building, equipping like a fleet of ships, immortal ships, soon to sail out over the measureless seas on the soul's voyage. Only a lot of boys and girls? Only the tiresome spelling, writing, ciphering classes? Only a public school? Ah, more, infinitely more. As George Fox raised his warning cry, is it this pile of brick and mortar these dead floors, windows, rails, you call the church? Why, this is not the church at all. The church is living, every living soul. And you, America, cast you the real reckoning for your present? The lights and shadows of your future, good or evil? 
To girlhood, boyhood, look, the teacher and the school. Wandering at Morn Wandering at morn, emerging from the night, from gloomy thoughts, thee in my thoughts, yearning for thee, harmonious union, thee, singing bird divine, thee, coiled in evil times, my country, with craft and black dismay, with every meanness, treason thrust upon thee, this common marvel I beheld, the parent thrush I watched feeding its young, the singing thrush, whose tones of joy and faith ecstatic fail not to certify and cheer my soul. There pondered, felt I, if worms, snakes, loathsome grubs may to sweet spiritual songs be turned, if vermin so transposed so used and blessed may be, then may I trust in you, your fortunes, days, my country. Who knows, but these may be the lessons fit for you. From these your future song may rise with joyous trills, destined to fill the world. Italian Music in Dakota, the 17th, the finest regimental band I ever heard. Through the soft evening air, in winding all, rocks, woods, fort, cannon, pacing sentries, endless winds, in dulcet streams, in flutes and cornets notes, electric, pensive, turbulent, artificial, yet strangely fitting even here, meanings unknown before, subtler than ever, more harmony, as if born here, related here, not to the city's frescoed rooms, not to the audience of the opera house. Sounds, echoes, wandering strains, as really here at home. Sonambula's innocent love, trios with Norma's anguish, and thy ecstatic chorus Pelluccio. Rayed in the limpid yellow slanting sundown, Music, Italian music in Dakota. While nature, sovereign of this gnarled realm, lurking in hidden barbaric grim recesses, acknowledge rapport, however far removed, as some old root or soil of earth, its last born flower or fruit, listens well pleased. With all thy gifts, with all thy gifts, America, standing secure, rapidly tending, overlooking the world, power, wealth, extent, vouchsafe to thee. With these, and like of these, vouchsafe to thee, what if one gift thou lackest? The ultimate human problem never solving. The gift of perfect women fit for thee. What if that gift of gifts thou lackest? the towering feminine of thee, the beauty, health, completion, fit for thee, the mothers fit for thee. My Picture Gallery In a little house keep I pictures suspended. It is not a fixed house, it is round. It is only a few inches from one side to the other. Yet behold, it has room for all the shows of the world, all memories. Here the tableaus of life, and here the groupings of death. Here, do you know this? This is Cicerone himself. With finger raised, he points to the prodigal pictures. The Prairie States a newer garden of creation, no primal solitude, dense, joyous, modern, populous millions, cities and farms, with iron interlaced, composite, tied, many in one, by all the world contributed, freedoms and laws and thrifts society, 
the crown and teeming paradise, so far of time's accumulations, to justify the past. End of part two of book twenty-four, Autumn Rivulets. Recording by Hugh McGuire. Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Book twenty-five. Proud music of the storm. One. Proud music of the storm. Blast the careers so free, whistling across the prairies. Strong hum of forest tree tops. Wind of the mountains personify dim shapes. New hidden orchestras. New serenades of phantoms with instruments alert. Blending with nature's rhythmus, all tongues of nations. You chords left as by vast composers. You choruses, you formless, free religious dances. You, from the Orient, you undertone of rivers, roar of pouring cataracts. You sound from distant guns with galloping cavalry. Echoes of camps with all the different bugle calls trooping to us. Filling the midnight lake, bending me powerless, entering my lonesome slumber chamber. Why have you seized me? Two. Come forward, O、oh、my soul, and let the rest retire. Listen, lose not. It is towards thee they tend, parting the midnight, entering my slumber chamber. For thee they sing and dance, O、oh、soul. A festival song, a duet of the bridegroom and the bride, a marriage march, with lips of love and hearts of lovers filled to the brim with love. The red flushed cheeks and perfumes, the cortege swarming, full of friendly faces, young and old, with clear notes and sounding harps counting. Now loud approaching drums, Victoria. Seest thou in the powder smoke the banners torn but flying, the rout of the battlefield? Hearest those shouts of the conquering army? Ah, soul, the sobs of women, the wounded groaning in agony, the hiss and crackle of flames, the blackened ruins. Now airs antique and medieval fill me. I see and hear old harpers with their harps at Welsh festivals. I hear the minstrels singing their lays of love. I hear the minstrels gleaming the troubadours of the Middle Ages. Now the great organ sounds, tremulous while underneath, as hid footholds of the earth, on which a rising rest and leaping forth depend. All shapes of beauty, grace and strength, all hues we know. Green blades of grass and warbling birds, children that gambol and play, the clouds of heaven above, the strong bass stands, and its pulsations intermits not, bathing, supporting, merging all the rest, maternity of all the rest, and with it every instrument in multitudes, the players playing all the world's musicians, the solemn hymns and masses rousing adoration. All passionate heart chants, sorrowful appeals, the measureless sweet vocalists of ages, and for their solvent setting earth's own diapason of winds and woods and mighty ocean waves, a new composite orchestra, binder years and climes, tenfold renewer. As of the far back days, the poets tell the Paradiso. The straying thence, the separation long, but now the wandering done, the journey done, the journeymen come home, and man art with nature fused again. Tutti, for earth and heaven, the Almighty Leader now for once is signaled with His wand. The manly strophe of the husbands of the world, and all the wives responding, the tongues of violins. 
I think, O oh, tongues, ye tell this heart that cannot tell itself, this brooding, yearning heart that cannot tell itself. Three, ah, from a little child, thou knowest soul how to me all sounds became music. My mother's voice in lullaby or hymn, the voice, O oh, tender voices, memories, loving voices, last miracle of all. O oh, dearest mothers, sisters, voices. The rain, the growing corn, the breeze among the long-leaved corn, the measured sea surf beating on the sand, the twittering bird, the hawk's sharp scream, wild fowl's notes at night, as flying low, migrating north or south, the psalm in the country church, or mid the clustering trees, the open air camp meeting. The fiddler in the tavern, the glee, the long strung sailor song, the lowing cattle, bleating sheep, the crowing cock at dawn. All songs of current lands come sounding round me. The German airs of friendship, wine and love, Irish ballads, merry jigs and dances, English warbles. Chansons of France, Scotch tunes, and o'er the rest, Italia's peerless compositions. Across the stage, with pallor on her face, yet lurid passion, stops Norma, brandishing the dagger in her hand. I see poor, crazed Lucia's eyes, unnatural gleam, her hair down her back falls loose and disheveled. I see where Hernani, walking the bi bridal garden, Amid the scent of night roses, radiant, holding his bride by the hand, hears the infernal call, the death pledge of the horn, to crossing swords and gray hairs barred to heaven, to clear electric bass and baritone of the world, the trombone duo, Libertad forever, from Spanish chestnut trees, dense shade, by old and heavy convent walls, a wailing song, a song of lost love, the torch of youth and life quenched in despair, song of the dying swan. Fernando's heart is breaking. Awaking from her woes, last retrieved, Amina sings, copious as stars and glad as morning light, the torrents of her joy. The teeming lady comes, the lustrous orb, Venus Contralto, the blooming mother, sister of loftiest gods, Alboni's self, I hear. I hear those odes, symphonies, operas. I hear in the William Tell the music of an aroused and angry people. I hear Meyerbeer's Huguenots, the prophet, or Robert Gunn notes, Faust, or Mozart's John Juan. I hear the dance music of all nations, the waltz, some delicious measure, lapsing bathing me in bliss, the bolero to tinkling guitars and clattering castanets. I see religious dances old and new, I hear the sound of the Hebrew lyre. I see the crusaders marching, bearing the cross on high to the martial clang of cymbals. I hear dervishes monotonously chanting interspersed with frantic shouts as they spin round, turning always towards Mecca. I see the rapt religious dances of the Persians and the Arabs again. Eleusis, home of Ceres. I see the modern Greeks dancing. I hear them clapping hands as they bend their bodies. I hear the metrical shuffling of their feet. I see again the wild old Corybantian dance. The performers wounding each other. I see the Roman youth to the shrill sound of the flagellettes, throwing and catching their weapons as they fall on their knees and rise again. I hear from the Musulman mosque, the muezzin calling. I see the worshippers within, nor form, nor sermon, argument, nor word, but silent, strange, devout, raised, glowing heads, ecstatic faces. I hear the Egyptian harp of many strings, the primitive chants of Nile boatmen, the sacred imperial hymns of China, the delicate sounds of the king, the stricken wood and stone, or to Hindu flutes and the fretting twang of the vina. A band of bayaderas. Five.
Now Asia, Africa, leave me. Europe seizing inflates me. To organs huge and bands I hear as from vast concourses of voices. Luther's strong hymn, Ein feste Berg ist Uster Gott. Rossini's Sabbat Mater Dolorosa. Or floating in some high cathedral, dim with gorgeous colored windows, the passionate Agnes Dei, or Gloria in Excelsis. Composers, mighty maestros, and you sweet singers of old lands, soprani, tenori, bassi, to you a new bard caroling in the west, obeys and sends his love. Such led to thee, old soul. All senses, shows, and objects lead to thee. But now it seems to me the sound leads o'er all the rest. I hear the annual singing of the children in St. Paul's cathedrals. Or under the high roof of some colossal hall, the symphonies, oratorios of Beethoven, Handel, or Haydn. The creation in billows of godhood laves me. Give me to hold all sounds, I madly struggling cry. Fill me with all the voices of the universe, endow me with their throbbings, natures also. The tempest, waters, winds, operas and chants, marches and dances, utter, pour in, for I would take them all. Six. Then I woke softly, and pausing, questioning a while the music of my dreams, and questioning all those reminiscences, the tempest in its fury, and all the songs of sopranos and tenors, and those rapt oriental dances of religious fervor, and the sweet varied instruments, and the diapason of organs, and all the artless plaints of love and grief and death, I said to my silent, curious soul out of the bed of the slumber chamber, come, for I have found the clue I sought so long. Let us go forth refreshed amid the day, cheerfully tallying life, walking the world, the real, nourished thenceforth by our celestial dream. And I said, moreover, haply, what thou hast heard, O soul, was not the sound of winds, nor dream of raging storm, nor seahawks flapping wings, nor harsh scream, nor vocalism of sun-bright Italy, nor German organ majestic, nor vast concourse of voices, nor layers of harmonies, nor strophes of husbands and wives, nor sound of marching soldiers, nor flutes, nor harps, nor the bugle calls of camps, but to a new rhythmus fitted for thee, poems bridging the way from life to death, vaguely wafted in night air, uncaught, unwritten, which let us go forth in the bold day and right. End of Book 25 Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman Book 26 Read by Hugh McGuire Passage to India one, singing my days, singing the great achievements of the present, singing the strong, light works of engineers, our modern wonders, the antique, ponderous seven outvied. In the old world, the east, the Suez Canal, the new, by its mighty railroad spanned, the seas inlaid with elegant, gentle wires. Yet first a sound, and ever sound the cry with the old soul. The past, the past, the past, the past. The dark, unfathomed retrospect, the teeming gulf, the sleepers in the shadows, the past, the infinite greatness of the past. For what is the present, after all, but the growth out of the past? As a projectile formed, impelled, passing a certain still keeps on, so the present, utterly formed, impelled by the past. Two, passage, O soul, to India. Eclaircis, the myths, Asiatic, the primitive fables. Not you alone, proud truths of the world, nor you alone, ye facts of modern science. But myths and fables of eld 
Asia's, Africa's fables, the far darting beams of the spirit, the unloosed dreams, the deep diving Bibles and legends, the daring plots of the poets, the elder religions. Oh, you temples fairer than the lilies poured over by the rising sun. Oh, you fables spurning the known, eluding the hold of the known. Mounting to heaven, you lofty and dazzling towers, pinnacled red as roses, burnished with gold, towers of fables, immortal fashioned from mortal dreams. You too I welcome and fully the same as the rest. You too with joy I sing. Passage to India. Lo, soul, seest thou not God's purpose from the first? The earth to be spanned, connected by network. The races, neighbors, to marry and be given in marriage. The oceans to be crossed, the distance brought near. The lands to be welded together. A warship new I sing. You captains, voyagers, explorers, yours. You engineers, you architects, machinists, yours. You, not for trade or transportation only, but in God's name and for thy sake, O soul. Three, passage to India. Lo, soul for thee of tableaus twain. I see in one the Suez Canal initiated, opened. I see the procession of steamships, the Empress Eugenie's leading the van. I mark from on deck the strange landscape, the pure sky, the level sand in the distance. I pass swiftly the picturesque groups, the workmen gathered, the gigantic dredging machines. In one again, different, yet thine, all thine, O oh soul, the same. I see over my own continent railroad surmounting every barrier. I see continual trains of cars winding along the plat, carrying freight and passengers. I hear the locomotives rushing and roaring and the shrill steam whistle. I hear the echoes reverberate through the grandest scenery in the world. I cross the Laramie Plains. I note the rocks and grotesque shapes the buttes. I see the plentiful larkspur and wild onions, the barren, colorless sage deserts. I see in glimpses afar or towering immediately above me the great mountains. I see the Wind River and the Wasatch Mountains. I see the Monument Mountain and the Eagle's Nest. I pass the promontory. I ascend the Nevadas. I scan the noble Elk Mountain and wind around its base. I see the Humboldt Range. I thread the valley and cross the river. I see the clear waters of Lake Tahoe. I see forests of majestic pines. Or crossing the great desert, the alkaline plains, I behold enchanting mirages of waters and meadows. Marking through these and after all in duplicate slender lines, bridging the three or four thousand miles of land travel, trying the eastern to the western sea, the road between Europe and Asia. Ah, Genoese, thy dream, thy dream, centuries after thou art laid in thy grave, the shore thou foundest verifies thy dream. 4. Passage to India Struggles of many a captain, tales of many a sailor dead. Over my mood, stealing and spreading they come, like clouds and cloudlets in the unreached sky. Along all history, down the slopes, as a rivulet running, sinking now and now again to the surface rising, a ceaseless thought, a varied train, low soul to thee, thy sight they rise, the plans, the voyages again, the expeditions. Again Vasco da Gama sails forth, again the knowledge gained, the mariner's compass, lands found and nations born. Thou born America, for purpose vast, man's long probation filled, thou rondure of the world at last accomplished. Five.
Oh, vast rondures swimming in space, covered all over with visible power and beauty. Alternate light and day, the teeming spiritual darkness. Unspeakable high processions of sun and moon and countless stars above. Below, the manifold grass and waters, animals, mountains, trees, with inscrutable purpose, some hidden prophetic intention. Now first, it seems, my thought begins to span thee. Down from the gardens of Asia, descending, radiating, Adam and Eve appear, their myriad progeny after them, wandering, yearning, curious with restless explorations, with questionings, baffled, formless, feverish, with never happy hearts, with that sad, incessant refrain, Wherefore, unsatisfied soul, and whither, O oh, mocking life? Ah, who shall soothe these feverish children, who justify these restless explorations, who speak the secret of impassive earth, who bind it to us? What is this separate nature so unnatural? What is this earth to our affections? Unloving earth, without a throb to answer ours, a cold earth, the place of graves. Yet soul be sure the first intent remains and shall be carried out. Perhaps even now the time has arrived. After the seas are all crossed, as they seem already crossed, after the great captains and engineers have accomplished their work, after the noble inventors, after the scientists, the chemists, the geologist, ethnologist, finally shall come the poet worthy that name. The true son of God shall come singing his songs. Then not your deeds only, O voyagers, O scientists and inventors, shall be justified. All these hearts as if fretted children shall be soothed. All affectation shall be fully responded to. The secret shall be told, all these separations and gaps shall be taken up and hooked and linked together, the whole earth, this cold, impassive, voiceless earth, shall be completely justified, Trinitas, divine, shall be gloriously accomplished and compacted by the true Son of God, the poet, he shall indeed pass the straits and conquer the mountains, he shall double the cape of good hope to some purpose. Nature and man shall be disjoined and diffused no more. The true Son of God shall absolutely fuse them. 6. Yet at whose wide-flung door I sing, Year of the purpose accomplished, Year of the marriage of continents, climates and oceans, No mere dodge of Venice now wedding the Adriatic, I see, O oh year, in you the vast terraqueous globe, given and giving all, Europe to Asia, Africa joined, and they to the new world, the lands, geographies dancing before you, holding a festival garland, as brides and bridegrooms hand in hand, passage to India, cooling airs from Caucasus, far, soothing cradle of man, the river Euphrates flowing, the past lit up again. Lo, soul, the retrospect brought forward, the old, most populous, wealthiest of Earth's lands, the streams of the Indus and the Ganges and their many affluents. I, my shores of America, walking did today behold, resuming all, the tale of Alexander on his warlike marches suddenly dying, on one side China and on the other side Persia and Arabia. To the south the great seas and the Bay of Bengal. The flowing literatures, tremendous epics, religions, castes, old occult Brahma, interminably far back. The tender and junior Buddha, central and southern empires and all their belongings, possessors, the wars of Tamerlane, the reign of Agrabasi. The traders, rulers, explorers, Moslems, Venetians, Byzantium, the Arabs, Portuguese, the first travelers, famous yet Marco Polo, Batuta, the Moor, 
Doubts to be solved, the map incognita. Blanks to be filled, the foot of man unstayed, the hands never at rest. Thyself, old soul, that will not brook a challenge. The medieval navigators rise before me, the world of 1492 with its awakened enterprise, something swelling in humanity now like the sap of the earth in spring, the sunset splendor of chivalry declining. And who art thou, sad shade, gigantic, visionary, thyself a visionary, with majestic limbs and pious beaming eyes, spreading around with every look of thine golden world? Viewing it with gorgeous hues. As the chief historian, down to the footlights, walks in some great scena. Dominating the rest, I see the admiral himself. History's type of courage, action, faith. Behold him sail from Palos, leading his little fleet. His voyage, behold, his return, his great fame, his misfortunes. Illuminators, behold him a prisoner, chained, behold his dejection, poverty, death. Curious, in time I stand, noting the efforts of heroes, is the deferment long. Bitter the slander, poverty, death, lies the seed unwrecked for centuries in the ground, low to God's due occasion. Rising in the night, it sprouts, blooms, and fills the earth with use and beauty. Seven. Passage indeed, O soul, to primal thought, not lands and seas alone, thy own clear freshness, the young maturity of brood and bloom, two realms of budding Bibles, O soul, repressless. I with thee and thou with me, thy circumnavigation of the world begin, of man, the voyage of his mind's return to reason's early paradise, back, back to wisdom's birth, to innocent intuitions, again with fair creation. Eight, oh, we can wait no longer. We too take ship, O oh soul, joyous, we too launch out on trackless seas, Fearless for unknown shores, on waves of ecstasy to sail. Amid the wafting winds, thou pressing me to thee, I thee to me, O soul caroling free, singing our song of God, chanting our chant of pleasant exploration. We laugh in many a kiss, let others de deprecate, let others weep for sin, remorse, humiliation. O soul, thou pleasest me, I be. Ah, more than any priest, O soul, we too believe in God, but with the mystery of God we dare not dally. O soul, thou pleasest me, I be. Sailing these seas or on the hills, or waking in the night, thoughts, silent thoughts of time and space and death, like waters flowing. Bear me indeed as though the regions infinite, whose air I breathe, whose ripples hear. Leave me all over. Bathe me, O God, in the mountain to thee. I and my soul to range in range of thee. O thou transcendent, nameless, the fiber and the breath, light of the light. Shedding forth universes, thou center of them, thou mightier center of the true, the good, the loving, thou moral, spiritual fountain, affection source, thou reservoir, O pensive soul of me, O thirst unsatisfied, waitest not there, waitest not haply for us somewhere there, the comrade prefect. Thou pulse, thou motive of the stars, suns, systems, that circling move in order safe, harmonious. Athwart the shapeless vastness of space, how should I think, how breathe a single breath, how speak, if out of myself I could not launch to those superior universes? Swiftly I shrivel at the thought of God, at nature and its wonders, time and space and death. But that I, turning, call to thee, O soul, thou 
actual me, and lo, thou gently masterest the orbs. Thou matest time, smilest content at death, and fillest, swellest, full the vastness of space, greater than stars or suns. Bounding, O soul, thou journeyest forth, what love than thine and ours could wider amplify, what aspirations, wishes outvie thine and ours, O soul, what dreams of the ideal, what plans of purity, perfection, and strength, what cheerful willingness for others' sake to give up all, for others' sake to suffer all. Reckoning ahead, O soul, when thou the time achieved, the seas all cross, weathered the capes, the voyage done, surrounded, copest, frontest God, yieldest, the aim attained, as filled with friendship, love complete, the elder brother found, the younger melts in fondness in his arms. 9. Passage to more than India. Are thy wings plumed indeed for such far flights? O soul, voyagest thou indeed on voyages like those? Disportest thou on waters such as those? Soundest below the Sanskrit and the Vedas? Then have thy bent unleashed passage to you, your shores, ye aged fierce enigmas, passage to you, to mastership of you, ye strangling problems, you strewed with the wrecks of skeletons that living never reached you. Passage to more than India, a secret of the earth and sky, of you, O waters of the sea, O winding creeks and rivers, of you, O woods and fields, of you, strong mountains of my land, of you, O prairies, of you, gray rocks, O morning red, O clouds, O rain and snows, O day and night, passage to you, O sun and moon and all you stars, Sirius and Jupiter, passage to you, passage, immediate passage, the blood burns in my veins, away, O soul, hoist instantly the anchor, cut the hawsers, haul out, shake out every sail. Have we not stood here like trees in the ground long enough? Have we not groveled here long enough, eating and drinking like mere brutes? Have we not darkened and dazed ourselves with books long enough? Sail forth, steer for the deep waters only, reckless, O soul, exploring I with thee and thou with me, for we are bound where mariner has not yet dared to go, and we will risk the ship, ourselves and all, O brave soul. O oh, farther, farther sail, O oh, daring joy, but safe. Are they not all the seas of God? O oh, farther, farther, farther sail. End of book 26. Recorded by Chip in Tampa, Florida on February 22nd, 2006. Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Book 27, Prayer of Columbus. A battered, wrecked old man thrown on this savage shore far, far from home, pent by the sea and dark rebellious brows, twelve dreary months sore, stiff with many toils, sickened and nigh to death. I take my way along the island's edge, venting a heavy heart. I am too full of woe. Haply I may not live another day. I cannot rest, O oh God. I cannot eat or drink or sleep till I put myself forth my prayer once more to thee. Breathe. Bathe myself once more in thee. Commune with thee. Report myself once more to thee. Thou knowest my years entire, my life, my long and crowded life of active worth, not adoration merely. Thou knowest the prayers and vigils of my youth. Thou knowest my manhood's solemn and visionary meditations. Thou knowest how before I commenced I devoted all to come to thee, 
Thou knowst I have in age ratified all those vows, and strictly kept them. Thou knowst I have not once lost, nor faith, nor ecstasy in thee. In shackles, prisoned, in disgrace, repining not, accepting all from thee, as duly come from thee. All my emprises have been filled with thee. My speculations, plans begun and carried on in thoughts of thee, sailing the deep or journeying the land for thee. Intentions, purports, aspirations mine, leaving results to thee. Oh, I am sure they really came from the urge, the ardor, the unconquerable will, the potent, felt, interior command stronger than words, a message from the heavens whispering to me even in sleep. These sped me on. By me and these the work so far accomplished. By me, earth's elder cloyed and stifled lands uncloyed, unloosed. By me, the hemispheres rounded and tied, the unknown to the known. The end I know not, it is all in thee. Or small or great, I know not. Haply what broad fields, what lands, Haply the brutish, measureless, human undergrowth I know, transplanted there, may rise to stature, knowledge worthy thee. Haply the swords I know may thee indeed be turned into reaping tools. Haply the lifeless cross I know, Europe's dead cross, may bud and blossom here. One effort more, my altar, this bleak sand, That thou, O God, hast lighted with ray of light, Steady, ineffable, vouchsafed of thee. Light, rare, untellable, lighting the very light Beyond all signs, descriptions, languages. For that, O God, be it my latest word Here on my knees, old, Poor and paralyzed, I thank thee. My terminus near, the clouds already closing upon me, the voyage balked, the course disputed, lost, I yield my ships to thee. My hands, my limbs grow nerveless, my brain feels racked, bewildered, let the old timbers part, I will not part. I will cling fast to thee, O God, though the waves buffet me. Thee, thee at last I know. Is it the prophet's thought I speak, or am I raving? What do I know of life? What of myself? I know not even my own work, past or present, dim, ever-shifting guesses of it spread before me, of newer, better worlds, their mighty partuition, mocking, perplexing me. And these things I see suddenly, what mean they? As if some miracle, some hand divine, unsealed my eyes, shadowy, vast shapes, smile through the air and sky. And on the distant waves sail countless ships, and anthems in new tongues I hear, saluting me. So ends Book 27 of Leaves of Grass. Book 28 The Sleepers. One. I wander all night in my vision, stepping with light feet swiftly and noiselessly, stepping and stopping, 
bending with open eyes over the shut eyes of sleepers, wandering and confused, lost to myself, ill-assorted, contradictory, pausing, gazing, bending, and stopping. How solemn they look there, stretched and still, how quiet they breathe, the little children in their cradles, the wretched features of ennuis, the white features of corpses, the livid faces of drunkards, the sick gray faces of onanists, the gashed bodies on battlefields, the insane in their strong-doored rooms, the sacred idiots, the newborn emerging from gates, and the dying emerging from gates. The night pervades them and enfolds them. The married couple sleep calmly in their bed, he with his palm on the hip of his wife, she with her palm on the hip of the husband. The sisters sleep lovingly side by side in their bed, the men sleep lovingly side by side in theirs, and the mother sleeps with her little child carefully wrapped. The blind sleep and the deaf and dumb sleep. The prisoner sleeps well in the prison, the runaway son sleeps, the murderer that is to be hung the next day. How does he sleep? And the murdered person how does he sleep? The female that loves unrequited sleeps, and the male that loves unrequited sleeps. The head of the moneymaker that plotted all day sleeps, and the enraged and treacherous dispositions all, all sleep. I stand in the dark with drooping eyes by the worst suffering and the most restless. I pass my hands soothingly to and fro a few inches from them. The restless sink in their beds, they fitfully sleep. Now I pierce the darkness, new beings appear. The earth recedes from me into the night. I saw that it was beautiful, and I see that what is not the earth is beautiful. I go from bedside to bedside. I sleep close with the other sleepers, each in turn. I dream in my dream all the dreams of the other dreamers, and I become the other dreamers. I am a dance. Play up there. The fit is whirling me fast. I am the ever laughing. It is new moon and twilight. I see the hiding of doceurs, I see nimble ghosts, whichever way look, cash and cash again, deep in the ground and sea, and where is neither ground nor sea. Well do they do their jobs, those journeymen divine, only from me can they hide nothing, and would not if they could. I reckon I am their boss, and they make me a pet besides, and surround me, and lead me, and run ahead when I walk to lift their cunning covers, to signify me with stretched arms, and resume the way. Onward we move, a gay gang of blackguards, with mirth-shouting music and wild-flapping penance of joy. I am the actor. The actress, the voter, the politician, the emigrant, and the exile, the criminal that stood in the box, he who has been famous and he who shall be famous after today, the stammerer, the well-formed person, the wasted or feeble person. I am she who adorned herself and folded her hair expectantly. My truant lover has come. And it is dark. Double yourself and receive me, darkness. Receive me and my lover too. He will not let me go without him. 
I roll myself upon you as upon a bed. I resign myself to the dust. He whom I call answers me and takes the place of my lover. He rises with me silently from the bed. Darkness, you are gentler than my lover. His flesh was sweaty and panting. I feel the hot moisture yet that he left me. My hands are spread forth. I pass them in all directions. I would sound up the shadowy shore to which you are journeying. I descend my western course, my sinews are flaccid, perfume and youth course through me and I am their weight. It is my face yellow and wrinkled instead of the old woman's. I sit low in a straw-bottomed chair and carefully darn my grandson's stockings. It is I too. The sleepless widow looking out on the winter midnight, I see the sparkles of starshine on the icy and pallid earth. A shroud I see, and I am the shroud. I wrap a body and lie in the coffin. It is dark here underground. It is not evil or pain here. It is blank here. For reasons. It seems to me that everything in the light and air ought to be happy. Whoever is not in his coffin and the dark grave, let him know he has enough. Three. I see a beautiful, gigantic swimmer swimming naked through the eddies of the sea. His brown hair lies close and even to his head. He strikes out with courageous arms and urges himself with his legs. I see his white body. I see his undaunted eyes. I hate the swift running eddies that would dash him headmost on the rocks. What are you doing, you ruffianly red trickled waves? Will you kill the courageous giant? Will you kill him in the prime of his middle age? Steady and long he struggles. He is baffled, banged, bruised. He holds out while his strength holds out. The slapping eddies are spotted with his blood. They bear him away. They roll him, swing him, turn him. His beautiful body is born circling eddies. It is continually bruised on the rocks. Swiftly and out of sight is born the brave corpse. Four. I turn but do not extricate myself, confused, a past reading, another but with darkness yet. The beach is cut by the razory ice wind, the wreck guns sound, the tempest lulls, the moon comes floundering through the drifts. I look where the ship helplessly heads end on. I hear the burst as she strikes. I hear the howls of dismay. They grow fainter and fainter. I cannot aid with my ringing fingers. I can but rush to the surf and let it drench me and freeze upon me. I search with the crowd. Not one of the company is washed to us alive. In the morning, I help pick up the dead and lay them in rows in a barn. Five. Now of the older war days, the defeat at Brooklyn, Washington stands inside the lines. He stands on the entrenched hills amid a crowd of officers. His face is cold and damp. He cannot repress the weeping drops. He lifts the glass perpetually to his eyes. The color is blanched from his cheeks. 
He sees the slaughter of the southern braves confided to him by their parents. The same at last, and at last, when peace is declared. He stands in the room of the old tavern, the well-beloved soldiers all pass through. The officers, speechless and slow, draw near in their turn. The chief encircles their necks with his arm and kisses them on the cheek. He kisses lightly the wet cheeks one after another. He shakes hands and bids goodbye to the army. Six. Now what my mother told me one day as we sat at dinner together of when she was a nearly grown girl living home with her parents on the old homestead. A red squaw came one breakfast time to the old homestead. On her back she carried a bundle of rushes for rush-bottoming chairs. Her hair, straight, shiny, coarse, black, profuse, half enveloped her face. Her step was free and elastic, and her voice sounded exquisitely as she spoke. My mother looked in delight and amazement at the stranger. She looked at the freshness of her tall-born face and full and pliant limbs. The more she looked upon her, she loved her. Never before had she seen such wonderful beauty and purity. She made her sit on a bench by the jam of the fireplace. She cooked food for her. She had no work to give her, but she gave her remembrance and fondness. The red squaw stayed all the forenoon, and toward the middle of the afternoon she went away. Oh, my mother was loath to have her go away. All the week she thought of her. She watched for her many a month. She remembered her many a winter and many a summer, but the red squaw never came, nor was heard of there again. Seven. A show of the summer softness, a contact of something unseen, and a moor of the light and air. I am jealous and overwhelmed with friendliness, and I will go gallivant with the light and air myself. Oh, love and summer, you are in the dreams and in me. Autumn and winter are in the dreams. The farmer goes with his thrift. The droves and crops increase. The barns are well filled. Elements merge in the night. Ships make tacks in the dreams. The sailor sails, the exile returns home. The fugitive returns unharmed. The immigrant is back beyond months and years. The poor Irishman lives in the simple house of his childhood with the well-known neighbors and the faces. They warmly welcome him. He is barefoot again, but he forgets he is well off. The Dutchman voyages home. And the Scotchman and Welchman voyage home, and the native of the Mediterranean voyages home. To every port in England, France, Spain, enter well-filled ships. The Swiss foots it toward his hills. The Prussian goes his way, the Hungarian his way, and the Pole his way. The Swede returns, and the Dane and Norwegian return. The homeward bound and the outward bound. The beautiful lost swimmer, the ennui, the onanist, the female that loves unrequited, the moneymaker, the actor and actress, those through with their parts and those waiting to commence, the affectionate boy, the husband and wife, the voter, the nominee that is chosen and the nominee that has failed, the great already known and the great any time after today, the stammerer, the sick, the perfect form, the homely, the criminal that stood in the box, the judge that sat and sentenced him, the fluent lawyers, the jury, the audience, the laugher, the weeper, the dancer, the midnight widow, the red squall, the consumptive, the erispilat, the idiot, he that is wrong, the antipodes, 
and every one between this and them in the dark. I swear they are averaged now. No one is better than the other. The night and sleep have likened them and restored them. I swear they are all beautiful. Every one that sleeps is beautiful. Everything in the dim light is beautiful. The wildest and bloodiest is over, and all is peace. Peace is always beautiful. The myth of heaven indicates peace and night. The myth of heaven indicates the soul. The soul is always beautiful. It appears more or it appears less. It comes or it lags behind. It comes from the embowered garden and looks pleasantly on itself and encloses the world, perfect and clean. The genitals previously jetting and perfect and clean, the womb cohering, the head well grown, proportioned and plumb, and the bowels and joints proportioned and plumb. The soul is always beautiful. The universe is duly in order. Everything is in its place. What has arrived is in its place, and what waits shall be in its place. The twisted skull waits, the watery or rotten blood waits, the child of the glutton or the venereale waits along, and the child of the drunkard waits along, and the drunkard himself waits along. The sleepers that lived and died wait. The far advanced are to go on in their turns, and the far behind are to come on in their turns. The diverse shall be no less diverse, but they shall flow and unite. They unite now. Eight. The sleepers are very beautiful as they lie unclothed, they flow hand in hand over the whole earth from east to west as they lie unclothed. The Asiatic and African are hand in hand. The European and American are hand in hand. Learned and unlearned are hand in hand and male and female are hand in hand. The bare arm of the girl crosses the bare breast of her lover. They press close without lust. His lips press her neck. The father holds his grown or ungrown son in his arms with measureless love, and the son holds the father in his arms with measureless love. The white hair of the mother shines on the white wrist of the daughter. The breath of the boy goes with the breath of the man. The friend is inarmed by friend. The scholar kisses the teacher, and the teacher kisses the scholar. The wronged made right. The call of the slave is one with the master's call, and the master salutes the slave. The felon steps forth from the prison. The insane becomes sane. The suffering of sick persons is relieved. The sweatings and fevers stop. The throat that was unsound is sound. The lungs, the consumptive, are resumed. The poor, distressed head is free. The joints of the rheumatic move as smoothly as ever and smoother than ever. Stiflings and passages open. The paralyzed become supple. The swelled and convulsed and congested awake to themselves in condition. They pass the invigoration of the night and the chemistry of the night and awake. I too pass from the night. I stay a while, O oh, night, but I return to you again and love you. Why should I be afraid to trust myself to you? I am not afraid. I have been well brought forward by you. I love the rich running day, but I do not desert her in whom I lay so long. 
I know not how I came of you, and I know not where I go with you, but I know I came well, and shall go well. I will stop only a time with the night, and rise betimes. I will duly pass the day, O oh mother, and duly return to you. Transpositions. Let the reformers descend from the stands where they are forever bawling. Let an idiot or insane person appear on each of the stands. Let judges and criminals be transposed. Let prison keepers be put in prison. Let those that were prisoners take the keys. Let them that distrust birth and death lead the rest. So ends book 28 of Leaves of Grass. Recording done by Chip in Tampa, Florida on January 5th, 2006. Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Chapter 29. To think of time. To think of time, all that retrospection. To think of today, and the ages continued henceforward. Have you guessed you yourself would not continue? Have you dreaded these earth beetles? Have you feared the future would be nothing to you? Is today nothing? Is the beginningless past nothing? If the future is nothing, they are surely just as nothing. To think that the sun rose in the east, that men and women were flexible, real, alive, that everything was alive. To think that you and I did not see, feel, think, nor bear our part. To think that we are now here and bear our part. Not a day passes, not a minute or second without an accouchement. Not a day passes, not a minute or second without a corpse. The dull nights go over and the dull days also. The soreness of lying so much in bed goes over. The physician after long putting off gives the silent and terrible look for an answer. The children come, hurried and weeping, and the brothers and sisters are sent for. Medicines stand unused on the shelf. The camphor smell has long pervaded the rooms. The faithful hand of the living does not desert the hand of the dying. The twitching lips press lightly on the forehead of the dying. The breath ceases, and the pulse of the heart ceases. The corpse stretches on the bed, and the living look upon it. It is palpable, as the living are palpable. The living look upon the corpse with their eyesight, but without eyesight lingers a different living, and looks curiously on the corpse. To think the thought of death merged in the thought of materials. To think of all these wonders of city and country and others taking great interest in them. And we taking no interest in them. To think how eager we are in building our houses. To think others shall be just as eager and we quite indifferent. I see one building the house that serves him a few years, or seventy or eighty years at most. I see one building the house that serves him longer than that. Slow moving and black lines creep over the whole earth. They never cease. They are the burial lines. 
He that was president was buried, and he that is now president shall surely be buried. A reminiscence of the vulgar fate, a frequent sample of the life and death of workmen, each after his kind. Cold dash of waves at the ferry wharf, posh and ice in the river, half-frozen mud in the streets, a gray discouraged sky overhead, the short last daylight of December, a hearse and stages, the funeral of an old Broadway stage driver, the cortege, mostly drivers. Steady the trot to the cemetery. Dully rattles the death bell. The gate is passed. The new dug grave is halted at. The living alight. The hearse uncloses. The coffin is passed out, lowered and settled. The whip is laid on the coffin. The earth is swiftly shoveled in. The mound above is flattened with the spades. Silence. A minute. No one moves or speaks. It is done. He is decently put away. Is there anything more? He was a good fellow, free-mouthed, quick-tempered, not bad-looking. Ready with life or death for a friend, fond of women, gambled, ate hearty, drank hearty. Had known what it was to be flush, grew low-spirited toward the last, sickened, and was helped by a contribution. Died aged 41 years, and that was his funeral. Thumb extended, finger uplifted, apron, cape, gloves, strap, wet weather clothes, whip carefully chosen, boss, spotter, starter, hostler, somebody loafing on you, you loafing on somebody, headway, man before and man behind, good day's work, bad day's work, pet stock, mean stock, first out, last out, turning in at night. To think that these are so much and so nigh to other drivers, and he there takes no interest in them. The markets, the government, the working man's wages, to think what to count they are through our days and nights. To think that other working men will make just as great account of them, yet we make little or no account. The vulgar and the refined, what you call sin and what you call goodness, to think how wide a difference. To think the difference will still continue to others, yet we lie beyond the difference. To think how much pleasure there is. Do you enjoy yourself in the city? Or engaged in business? Or planning a nomination and election? Or with your wife and family? Or with your mother and sisters? or in womanly housework, or the beautiful maternal cares. These also flow onward to others. You and I flow onward, but in due time, you and I shall take less interest in them. Your farm, profits, crops, to think how engrossed you are, to think that there will still be farms, profits, crops yet for you. Of what avail? What will be will be well for what is well. To take interest is well, and to not take interest shall be well. The domestic joys, the daily housework or business, the building of houses are not phantasms. They have weight, form, location, farms. Profits, crops, markets, wages, government are none of them phantasms. The difference between sin and goodness is no delusion. The earth is not an echo. Man and his life and all the things of his life are well considered. You are not thrown to the winds. You gather certainly and safely around yourself, yourself. Yourself, yourself forever 
and ever. It is not to diffuse you that you were born of your mother and father. It is to identify you. It is not that you should be undecided, but that you should be decided. Something long preparing and formless is arrived and formed in you. You are henceforth secure, whatever comes or goes. The threads that were spun are gathered. The weft crosses the warp. The pattern is systematic. The preparations have every one been justified. The orchestra has sufficiently tuned their instruments. The baton has given the signal. The guest was coming. He waited long. He is now housed. He is one of those who are beautiful and happy. He is one of those that to look upon and be with is enough. The law of the past cannot be eluded. The law of the present and future cannot be eluded. The law of the living cannot be eluded. It is eternal. The law of promotion and transformation cannot be eluded. The law of heroes and good doers cannot be eluded. The law of drunkards, informers, mean persons, not one iota thereof can be eluded. Slow moving and black lines go ceaselessly over the earth. Northerner goes carried, and Southerner goes carried, and they on the Atlantic side, and they on the Pacific, and they between, and all through the Mississippi country, and all over the earth. The great masters and cosmos are well as they go. The heroes and good doers are well. The known leaders and adventures the rich owners and pious and distinguished may be well, but there is more account than that. There is strict account of all. The interminable hordes of the ignorant and wicked are not nothing. The barbarians of Africa and Asia are not nothing. The perpetual successions of shallow people are not nothing as they go. Of and in all these things I have dreamed that we are not to be changed so much, nor the law of us changed. I have dreamed that heroes and good doers shall be under the present and past law, and that murderers, drunkards, liars shall be under the present and past law. For I have dreamed that the law they are under now is enough. And I have dreamed that the purpose and essence of the known life, the transient, is to form and decide identity for the unknown life, the permanent. If all came but to ashes of dung, if maggots and rats ended us, then alarm, for we are betrayed. Then, indeed, suspicion of death. Do you suspect death? If I were to suspect death, I should die now. Do you think I could walk pleasantly and well-suited toward annihilation? Pleasantly and well-suited I walk. Whither I walk, I cannot define, but I know it is good. The whole universe indicates that it is good. The past and present indicate that it is good. How beautiful and perfect are the animals. How perfect the earth and the minutest thing upon it. What is called good is perfect. And what is called bad is just as perfect. The vegetables and minerals are all perfect, and the imponderable fluids perfect. Slowly and surely they have passed on to this, and slowly and surely they yet pass on. I swear, I think now that everything without exception has an eternal soul. 
the trees have, rooted in the ground. The weeds and the sea have, the animals. I swear, I think there is nothing but immortality. That, the exquisite scheme is for it. And the nebulous float is for it. And the cohering is for it. And all preparation is for it. And identity is for it. And life and materials are all together. Book 30 Whispers of Heavenly Death Darest thou now, O soul? Darest thou now, O soul, walk out with me toward the unknown region where neither ground is for the feet nor any path to follow? No map there, nor guide, nor voice sounding, nor touch of human hand, nor face with blooming flesh, nor lips, nor eyes are in that land. I know it not, O oh soul, nor dost thou. All is a blank before us. All waits undreamed of in that region, that inaccessible land. Till when the ties loosen, all but the ties eternal, time and space, nor darkness, gravitation, sense, nor any bounds bounding us, then we burst forth, we float in time and space, O soul, prepared for them, equal, equipped at last, O joy, O fruit of all, them to fulfill, O soul. Whispers of Heavenly Death Whispers of Heavenly Death murmured I hear Labial gossip of night, sibilant corals Footsteps gently ascending, mystical breezes wafted soft and low Ripples of unseen rivers Tides of a current flowing, forever flowing Or is it the plashing of tears? The measureless waters of human tears. I see, just see skyward, great cloud masses mournfully, slowly they roll, silently swelling and mixing with, at times, a half-dimmed, saddened, far-off star, appearing and disappearing. Some parturition, rather, some solemn immortal birth on the frontiers to eyes impenetrable some soul is passing over chanting the square deific chanting the square deific out of the one advancing out of the sides, out of the old and new, out of the square, eternally divine, solid, four-sided, and all sides needed. From this side, Jehovah am I, old Brahm I, and I, Saturnius am. Not time affects me, I am time, old, modern as any, unpersuadable, relentless, executing righteous judgments as the earth. The father, the brown old Kronos with laws, aged beyond computation, yet never knew, ever with those mighty laws rolling. Relentless, I forgive no man, whoever sins dies. I will have that man's life. Therefore, let none expect mercy. Have the seasons. Gravitation, the appointed day's mercy, no more have I. But as the seasons, and gravitation, and as all the appointed days that forgive not, I dispense from this side judgments inexorable without the least remorse. Consolator most mild, the promised one advancing, with gentle hand extended, the mightier God am I, foretold by prophets and poets in their most rapt prophecies and poems, 
from this side, lo, the Lord Christ gazes. Lo, Hermes' eye. Lo, mine is Hercules' face. All sorrow, labor, suffering, I, tallying it, absorb in myself. Many times have I been rejected, taunted, put in prison and crucified, and many times shall be again. All the world have I given up for my dear brothers and sisters' sake, for the soul's sake, wandering my way through the homes of men, rich or poor, with the kiss of affection, for I am affection. I am the cheer-bringing God, with hope and all-enclosing charity, with indulgent words as to children, with fresh and sane words, mine only, young and strong, I pass, knowing well I am destined myself to an early death. But my charity has no death. My wisdom dies not, neither early nor late, and my sweet love, bequeathed here and elsewhere, never dies. Aloof, dissatisfying, plotting revolt, comrade of criminals, brother of slaves, crafty, despised, a drudge, ignorant with sudra face and worn brow, black, but in the depths of my heart, proud as any, lifted now and always against whoever scorning assumes to rule me, morose, full of guile, full of reminiscences, Brooding with many wiles, though it was thought I was baffled and dispelled, and my wiles done, but that will never be. Defiant, I, Satan, still live, still utter words in new lands duly appearing, and old ones also, permanent here from my side, warlike, equal with any, real as any. Nor time nor change shall ever change me or my words. Santa Spirita, breather, life, beyond the light, lighter than light, beyond the flames of hell, joyous, leaping easily above hell, beyond paradise, perfumed solely with mine own perfume, including all life on earth touching, including God, including Savior and Satan, ethereal, pervading all, for without me, what were all? What were God? Essence of forms, life of the real identities, permanent, positive, namely the unseen, life of the great round world, the sun and stars, and of man, I, the general soul, here, the square finishing, the solid, I the most solid, breathe my breath also through these songs. Of him I love day and night. Of him I love day and night I dreamed. I heard he was dead. And I dreamed I went where they had buried him, I love, but he was not in that place. And I dreamed I wandered searching among burial places to find him. And I found that every place was a burial place. The houses full of life were equally full of dead, this house is now. The streets, the shipping, the places of amusement, the Chicago, Boston, Philadelphia, the Manhattan, they were all full of the dead as of the living, and fuller, oh, vastly fuller of the dead than of the living. And what I dreamed I will henceforth tell to every person and age, and I stand henceforth bound to what I dreamed, and now I am willing to disregard burial places and dispense with them. And if the memorials of the dead were put up indifferently everywhere, even in the room where I eat or sleep, I should be satisfied. 
And if the corpse of any one I love, or if my own corpse be duly rendered to powder and poured in the sea, I shall be satisfied. Or if it be distributed to the winds, I shall be satisfied. Yet, yet, ye downcast hours. Yet, yet, ye downcast hours, I know ye also, weights of lead, how ye clog and cling at my ankles. Earth to a chamber of mourning turns. I hear the o'erweening, mocking voice. Matter is conqueror. Matter, triumphant only, continues onward. Despairing cries float ceaselessly toward me, the call of my nearest lover putting forth, alarmed, uncertain, the sea I am quickly to sail. Come, tell me, come tell me where I am speeding. Tell me my destination. I understand your anguish, but I cannot help you. I approach. Here, behold the sad mouth, the look out of the eyes, your mute inquiry. Whither I go from the bed I recline on, come tell me. Old age, alarmed, uncertain, a young woman's voice appealing to me for comfort. A young man's voice, shall I not escape? As if a phantom caressed me. As if a phantom caressed me, I thought I was not alone walking here by the shore. But the one I thought was with me, as now I walk by the shore, the one I love that caressed me, as I lean and look through the glimmering light, that one has utterly disappeared. And those who appear that are hateful and mock me. Assurances. I need no assurances. I am a man who is preoccupied of his own soul. I do not doubt that from under the feet and beside the hands and face I am cognizant of are now faces I am not cognizant of. Calm and actual faces. I do not doubt but the majesty and beauty of the world are latent in any iota of the world. I do not doubt I am limitless and that the universes are limitless. In vain I try to think how limitless. I do not doubt that the orbs and the systems of orbs play their swift sports through the air on purpose and that I shall one day be eligible to do as much as they, and more than they. I do not doubt that temporary affairs keep on, and millions of years. I do not doubt interiors have their interiors, and exteriors have their exteriors, and that eyesight has another eyesight, and that the hearing another hearing, and the voice another voice. I do not doubt that... The passionately wept deaths of young men are provided for, and that the deaths of young women and the deaths of little children are provided for. Did you think life was so well provided for? And death, the purport of all life, is not well provided for? I do not doubt that wrecks at sea, no matter what the horrors of them, no matter whose wife, child, Husband, father, lover has gone down are provided for to the minutest points. I do not doubt that whatever can possibly happen anywhere at any time is provided for in the inherences of things. I do not think life provides for all and for time and space. But I believe heavenly death provides for all. Quicksand years. Quicksand years that whirl me I know not whither. Your schemes, politics, fail, lines give way. 
substances mock and elude me. Only the theme I sing, the great and strong possessed soul, eludes not. One self must never give way. That is the final substance. That, out of all, is sure. Out of politics, triumphs, battles, life, what at last finally remains? When shows break up, what but one self is sure. That music always round me. That music always round me, unceasing, unbeginning, yet long untaught, I did not hear. But now the chorus I hear and am elated. A tenor strong, ascending with power and health, with glad notes of daybreak I hear. A soprano at intervals sailing buoyantly over the tops of immense waves. A transparent bass shuddering lusciously under and through the universe. The triumphant tutti, the funeral wailings of sweet flutes and violins, and all these I fill myself with. I hear not the volumes of sound merely. I am moved by the exquisite meaning. I listen to the different voices winding in and out, striving, contending with fiery vehemence to excel each other in emotion. I do not think the performers know themselves, but now I think begin to know them. What ship puzzled at sea? What ship puzzled at sea cons for the true reckoning? Or coming in to avoid the bars and follow the channel the perfect pilot needs. Here, sailor, here, ship, take aboard the most perfect pilot, whom in a little boat, putting off and rowing, I, hailing you, offer. A noiseless, patient spider. A noiseless, patient spider I marked where, on a little promontory, it stood isolated, marked how to explore the vast, vacant surrounding. It launched forth filament, filament, filament out of itself, ever unreeling them, ever tirelessly speeding them. And you, O oh my soul, where you stand, surrounded, Detached in measureless oceans of space, ceaselessly musing, venturing, throwing, seeking the spheres to connect them to the bridge you will need be formed, till the ductile anchor hold, till the gossamer thread you fling catch somewhere, O oh my soul. O oh, living always, always dying. O oh, living always, always dying. O oh, the burials of me, past and present. O oh, me, while I stride ahead, visible, material, imperious as ever. O oh, me, what I was for years, now dead. I lament not. I am content. Oh, to disengage myself from those corpses of me, which I turn and look back at where I cast them. To pass on, oh, living, always living, and leave the corpses behind. To one shortly to die, from all the rest, I single you out, having a message for you. You are to die. Let others tell you what they please. I cannot prevaricate. I am exact and merciless, but I love you. There is no escape for you. Softly, I lay my right hand upon you. You must feel it. I do not argue. 
I bend my head close and half envelop it. I sit quietly by. I remain faithful. I am more than nurse, more than parent or neighbor. I absolve you from all except yourself, spiritual bodily, that is eternal. You yourself will surely escape. The corpse you will leave will be but excrementious. The sun bursts through in unlooked-for directions. Strong thoughts fill you in confidence you smile. You forget you are sick as I forget you are sick. You do not see the medicines. You do not mind the weeping friends. I am with you. I exclude others from you. There is nothing to be commiserated. I do not commiserate. I congratulate you. Night on the Prairies. Night on the Prairies. The supper is over. The fire on the ground burns low. The wearied emigrants sleep wrapped in their blankets. I walk by myself. I stand and look at the stars, which I think now never realized before. Now I absorb immortality and peace. I admire death and test propositions. How planetous, how spiritual, how resume. The same old man and soul, the same old aspirations, and the same content. I was thinking the day most splendid till I saw what the not day exhibited. I was thinking this globe enough till there sprang out so noiseless around me myriads of other globes. Now, while the great thoughts of space and eternity fill me, I will measure myself by them. And now, touched with the lives of other globes, arrived as far along as those of the Earth, or in waiting to arrive or passed on farther than those of Earth. I henceforth no more ignore them than I ignore my own life, or the lives of the Earth arrived as far as mine, or waiting to arrive. I see now that life cannot exhibit all to me, as the day cannot. I see that I am to wait, for what will be exhibited by death. Thought. As I sit with others at a great feast, suddenly, while the music is playing, to my mind, whence it comes, I know not, spectral in a mist of a wreck of sea, of certain ships, how they sail from port with flying streamers and wafted kisses and that is the last of them, of the solemn and murky mystery about the fate of the president, of the flower of the marine science of fifty generations foundered off the northeast coast and going down, of the steamship Arctic going down, of the veiled tableau women gathered together on deck, heroic, pale, waiting the moment that draws so close A huge sob, a few bubbles, the white foam spurting up and then the women are gone, sinking there while the passionless wet flows on, and I now pondering, are those women indeed gone? Are souls drowned and destroyed so is only matter? triumphant. The last invocation. At the last, tenderly, from the walls of the powerful fortress house, from the clasp of the knitted locks, from the keep of the well-closed doors, let me be wafted. 
let me glide noiselessly forth with the key of softness unlock the locks with the whispers that open the doors O oh soul tenderly be not impatient strong is your hold O oh mortal flesh strong is your hold As I watch the plowman plowing As I watched the plowman plowing Or the sower sowing the seeds Or the harvester harvesting I saw there too O oh, life and death Your analogies Life Life is the tillage And death is the harvest according Pensive and faltering. Pensive and faltering. The words the dead I write. For the living are the dead. Haply the only living. Only real. And I the apparition. I the spectre. The end of book 30. Recording done by Chip in Tampa, Florida on January 5th, 2006. Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Book 31. Thou mother with thy equal brood. Thou mother with thy equal brood. Thou varied chain of different states, yet one identity only. A special song before I go, I'd sing o'er all the rest for thee, the future. I'd sow a seed for thee of endless nationality. I'd fashion thy ensemble, including body and soul. I'd show a way ahead thy real union and how it may be accomplished. The paths to the house I seek to make, but leave to those to come the house itself. Belief, I sing, and preparation, as life and nature are not great with reference to the present only, but greater still from what is yet to come out of that formula for thee, I sing. As a strong bird on pinions free, joyous, the amplest spaces heavenward cleaving, such be the thought I think of thee, America. Such be the recitative I'd bring for thee. The conceits of the poets of other lands I'd bring thee not, nor the compliments that have served their turn so long, nor rhyme, nor the classics, nor perfume of foreign court or indoor library, but an odor I bring as from forests of pine in Maine or breath of an Illinois prairie with open airs of Virginia or Georgia or Tennessee or from Texas uplands or Florida's glades or the Sargonais black stream or the wide blue spread of Huron with presentment of Yellowstone scenes or Yosemite and murmuring under pervading all I'd bring the rustling sea sound that endlessly sounds from the two great seas of the world. And for thy subtler sense, subtler refrains, dread mother, preludes of intellect tallying these and thee, mind formulas fitted for the real and sane and large as these and thee, thou mounting higher, driving deeper than we knew, thou transcendental union, by the fact to be justified, blended with thought, thought of man justified, blended with God, through thy idea, lo, the immortal reality, through thy reality, lo, the immortal idea. Brain of the new world, what a task is thine to formulate the modern out of the peerless grandeur of the modern, out of thyself, 
comprising science to recast poems, churches, art, recast, maybe discard them, end them, maybe their work is done, who knows, by vision, hand, conception on the background of the mighty past, the dead to limn with absolute faith, the mighty living present. And yet, thou living present brain, heir of the dead, the old world brain, thou that lay folded like an unborn babe within its folds so long, thou carefully prepared by it for so long, haply thou but unfoldst it, only maturest it. It is to eventuate in thee the essence of the bygone time contained in thee, its poems, churches, arts, unwitting to themselves, destined with reference to thee. Thou but the apples long, long, long growing, the fruit of all the old ripening today in thee. Sail, sail thy best, ship of democracy, of value is thy freight, tis not the present only, the past is also stored in thee. Thou holdst not the venture of thyself alone, not of the western continent alone. Earth's resume entire floats on thy keel, O ship, is steadied by thy spars. With thee time voyages in trust, the antecedent nations sink or swim with thee. With all their ancient struggles, martyrs, heroes, epics, wars, thou bear'st the other continents. Theirs, theirs, as much as thine, the destination port triumphant. Steer then with good strong hand and wary eye, O helmsman. Thou carriest great companions. Venerable priestly Asia sails this day with thee, and royal feudal Europe sails with thee. Beautiful world of new superber birth that rises to my eyes like a limitless golden cloud filling the western sky, emblem of general maternity lifted above all, sacred shape of the bearer of daughters and sons, out of thy teeming womb thy giant babes in ceaseless procession issuing, ascending from such generation taking and giving continual strength and life, world of the real, world of the twain in one, world of the soul born by the world of the real alone, led to identity, body by it alone. Yet, in the beginning only, incalculable masses of composite, precious materials, by history's cycles forwarded by every nation, language hither sent, ready, collected here, a freer, vast, electric world to be constructed here, the true new world, the world of orbic science, morals, literatures to come, thou wonder world yet undefined, unformed, neither do I define thee. How can I pierce the impenetrable blank of the future? I feel thy ominous greatness, evil as well as good. I watch thee advancing, absorbing the present, transcending the past. I see thy light lighting and thy shadow shadowing, as if the entire globe. But I do not undertake to define thee, hardly to comprehend thee. I but thee name, thee prophecy, as now. I merely thee ejaculate, thee in my future, thee in thy only permanent life, career, thy own unloosened mind, thy soaring spirit, thee as another equally needed sun, radiant, ablaze, swift moving, fructifying all, thee risen in potent cheerfulness and joy, in endless great hilarity, scattering for good the cloud that hung so long and weighed so long upon the mind of man, the doubt, suspicion, dread of gradual, certain decadence of man, thee in thy larger, saner brood of female, male, thee in thy athletes, moral, spiritual, south, north, west, east, 
to thy immortal breasts, mother of all, thy every daughter, son, and dearer delight, forever equal, thee in thy own musicians, singers, artists, unborn yet but certain, thee in thy moral wealth and civilization, until which thy proudest material civilization must remain in vain, thee in thy all-supplying, all-enclosing worship, thee in no single Bible, Savior, merely thy Savior's countless, latent within thyself, thy Bible's incessant within thyself, equal to any, divine as any, thy soaring course, thee formulating not only thy two great wars, nor in thy centuries visible growth, but far more in these leaves and chants, thy chants, great mother, thee in an education grown of thee, in teachers, studies, students born of thee, thee in thy democratic feats en masse, thy high original festivals, operas, lecturers, preachers, thee in thy ultimate, the preparations only now completed, the edifice on sure foundations tied, thee in thy pinnacles, intellect, thought, thy topmost rational joys, thy love and godlike aspiration, in thy resplendent coming literati, thy full-lunged orators, thy sacerdotal bards, cosmic savans, these, these in thee, certain to come today, I prophesy. Land tolerating all, accepting all, not for the good alone, all good for thee. Land in the realms of God to be a realm unto thyself, under the rule of God to be a rule unto thyself. Lo, where arise these peerless stars to be thy natal stars, my country, ensemble, evolution, freedom, set in the sky of law. Land of unprecedented faith, God's faith, Thy soil, thy very subsoil all upheaved, the general inner earth so long, so sedulously draped over now, hence for what it is boldly laid bare, opened by thee to heaven's light for benefit or bail. Not for success alone, not to fair sail unintermittent always, the storm shall dash thy face, the murk of war and worse than war shall cover thee all over. Wert capable of war, its tug and trials, be capable of peace, its trials. For the tug and moral strain of nations come at last in prosperous peace, not war. In many a smiling mask, death shall approach, beguiling thee, thou in disease shalt swelter. The livid cancer spread its hideous claws, clinging upon thy breasts, seeking to strike thee deep within. Consumption of the worst, moral consumption shall rouge thy face with hectic, but thou shalt face thy fortunes, thy diseases, and surmount them all. Whatever they are today, whatever through time they may be, they each and all shall lift and pass away and cease from thee. While thou time spirals rounding out of thyself, thyself still extricating, fusing, equable, natural, mystical union thou, the mortal with immortal blent, shalt soar toward the fulfillment of the future, the spirit of the body and the mind, the soul, its destinies. The soul, its destinies, the real, real, purport of all these apparitions of the real. In thee, America, the soul, its destinies, thou globe of globes, thou wonder nebulous. But many a throw of heat and cold convulsed by these, thyself solidifying, thou mental moral orb, thou new, indeed, new spiritual world, the present holds thee not, 
for such vast growth as thine, for such unparalleled flight as thine, such brood as thine, the future only holds thee and can hold. Almanac picture. Two boats with nets lying off the sea beach quite still. Ten fishermen waiting. They discover a thick school of moss bunkers. They drop the jointed seine ends in the water. The boats separate and row off, each on its own rounding course to the beach, enclosing the moss bunkers. The net is drawn in by a wind. By those who stop ashore, some of the fishermen lounge in their boats. Others stand ankle deep in the water, poised on strong legs. The boats partly drawn up, the water slapping against them, strewed on the sand in heaps and windrows, well out from the water. The green-backed, spotted moss bunkers. End of book thirty. Recorded by Chip in Tampa, Florida. On January sixth, two thousand six, Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman, Book Thirty-Two, From Noon to Starry Night. Thou orb aloft, full dazzling. Thou orb aloft, full dazzling. Thou hot October noon, flooding with sheeny light the gray beach sand. The sibilant near sea, with vistas far and foam, and tawny streaks and shades and spreading blue. O、oh, sun of noon, refulgent, my special word to thee. Hear me, illustrious, thy lover me, for always I have loved thee, even as basking babe, then happy boy alone by some wood edge. Thy touching distant beams enough for man matured, or young, or old, as now to thee, I launch my invocation. Thou canst not with thy dumbness me deceive. I know before the fitting man all nature yields, though answering not in words, the skies, trees, hear his voice. And thou, O sun, as for thy throes, thy perturbations, sudden breaks and shafts of flame gigantic, I understand them. I know those flames, those perturbations well. Thou that, with fructifying heat and light, or myriad farms, or lands and waters south and north, or Mississippi's endless course, or Texas' grassy plains. Canada's woods, or all the globe that turns its face to thee, shining in space, thou that impartially enfoldest all, thou that to grapes and weeds and little wild flowers givest so liberally, shed, shed thyself on mine and me, but with a fleeting ray out of thy million millions, strike through these chants. Nor only launch thy subtle dazzle and thy strength for these. Prepare the later afternoon of me, myself. Prepare my lengthening shadows. Prepare my starry nights. Faces. Sauntering the pavement or riding the country by road. Faces. Faces of friendship, precision, caution, suavity, ideality, the spiritual prescient face, the always welcome, common, benevolent face, the face of the singing of music, the grand faces of natural lawyers and judges, broad at the back top, the faces of hunters and fishers, bulged at the brows, the shaved, blanched faces. Of orthodox citizens, the pure, extravagant, yearning, questioning artist's face, the ugly face of some beautiful soul, the handsome, detested or despised face, 
the sacred faces of infants, the illuminated face of the mother of many children, the face of an armor, the face of veneration, the face as of a dream, the face of an immobile rock, the face withdrawn of its good and bad, a castrated face, a wild hawk, his wings clipped by the clipper, a stallion that yielded at last to the thong and the knife of the gelder. Sauntering the pavement thus, or crossing the ceaseless ferry, faces and faces and faces, I see them and complain not, and am content with all. Do you suppose I could be content with all if I thought them their own finale? This now is too lamentable a face for a man. Some abject louse asking leave to be, cringing for it. Some milk-nosed maggot blessing what lets it break to its hole. This face is a dog's snout sniffing for garbage. Snakes nest in that mouth, I hear the sibilant threat. This face is a haze more chill than the Arctic sea. Its sleepy and wobbling icebergs crunch as they go. This is the face of bitter herbs, this an emetic. They need no label. And more of the self-drug laudanum, cartichuk or hog's lard. This is a face of epilepsy. Its wordless tongue gives out the unearthly cry. Its veins down the neck distend, its eyes roll till they show nothing but their whites, its teeth grit, the palms of the hands were cut by the turned-in nails. The man falls, struggling and foaming to the ground, while he speculates well. This face is bitten by vermin and worms, and this is some murderer's knife with a half pulled scabbard. This face owes to the sexton his dismalest fee. An unceasing death bell tolls here. Features of my equals would trick me with your creased and cadaverous march. Well, you cannot trick me. I see your rounded, never erased flow. I see neath the rims of your haggard, mean disguises. Splay and twist as you like. Poke with the tangling forces of fishes or rats. You'll be unmuzzled. You certainly will. I saw the face of the most smeared and slobbering idiot they had at the asylum. And I knew, for my consolation, what they knew not. I knew of the agents that emptied and broke my brother. The same wait to clear the rubbish from the fallen tenement. And I shall look again in a score or two of ages. And I shall meet the real landlord, perfect and unharmed. Every inch as good as myself. The Lord advances and... Yet advances always the shadow in front, always the reached hand bringing up the laggards. Out of this space emerge banners and horses, oh superb. I see what is coming. I see the high pioneer caps, see staves of runners clearing the way. I hear victorious drums. This space is a lifeboat. This is the face commanding and bearded. It asks no odds of the rest. This face is flavored fruit ready for eating. This face of a healthy, honest boy is the program of all good. These faces bear testimony, slumbering or awake. They show their descent from the master himself. Off the word I have spoken, I accept not one red, black, white, are all deific. In each house is the ovum. It comes forth after a thousand years. Spots or cracks at the windows do not disturb me. Tall and sufficient stand behind and make signs to me. I read the promise and patiently wait. 
This is a full-grown Lily's face. She speaks to the limber-hipped man near the garden pickets. Come here, she blushingly cries. Come nigh to me, limber-hipped man. Stand at my side till I lean as high as I can upon you. Fill me with albescent honey. Bend down to me. Rub to me with your chafing beard. Rub to my breasts and shoulders. The old face of the mother of many children, whilst I am fully content. Lulled and late is the smoke of the first day morning. It hangs low over the rows of trees by the fences. It hangs thin by the sassafras and wild cherry and catbriar under them. I saw the rich ladies in full dress at the soiree. I heard what the singers were singing so long, heard who sprang in crimson youth from the white froth and the water blue. Behold, a woman, she looks out from her Quaker cap, her face is clearer and more beautiful than the sky. She sits in an armchair under the shaded porch of the farmhouse. The sun just shines on her old white head. Her ample gown is of cream-hued linen. Her grandsons raised the flax, and her granddaughters spun it with the distaff and the wheel. The melodious character of the earth, the finish beyond which philosophy cannot go and does not wish to go, the justified mother of men. The Mystic Trumpeter Hark, some wild trumpeter, some strange musician, hovering unseen in air, vibrates capricious tunes tonight. I hear thee, trumpeter, glistening, alert, I catch thy notes, now pouring, whirling like a tempest round me, now low, subdued, now in the distance low. Come nearer, bodiless one, haply in thee resounds some dead composer. Haply thy pensive life was filled with aspirations high, uniformed ideals, waves, oceans, musical, chaotically surging, that now, ecstatic ghost close to me bending, thy coronet echoing, pealing, gives out to no one's ears but mine, but freely gives to mine that I may translate. Blow, trumpeter, free and clear, I follow thee, while at thy liquid prelude, glad, serene, the fretting world streets, the noisy hours of day withdraw, a holy calm descends like dew upon me. I walk in cool, refreshing night, the walks of paradise. I scent the grass, the moist air and the roses. The song expands my numbed, embonded spirit. Thou freest, launchest me, floating and basking upon heaven's lake. Blow again, trumpeter, and for my sensuous eyes bring the old pageants. Show the feudal world what charm thy music works. Thou makest pass before me, ladies and cavaliers long dead. Barons are in their castle halls, the troubadours are singing. Armed knights go forth to redress wrongs, some in quest of the Holy Grail. I see the tournament. I see the contestants encased in heavy armor, seated on stately champing horses. I hear the shouts, the shouts of blows and smiting steel. I hear the crusaders' tumultuous armies. Hark, how the cymbals clang. Lo, where the monks walk in advance, bearing the cross on high. Blow again, trumpeter, and for thy theme take now the enclosing theme of all, the solvent and the setting, love, that is pulse of all, the sustenance and the pang, the heart of man and woman, all for love. No other theme but love, knitting, Enclosing all diffusing love. Oh, how the immortal phantoms crowd around me. 
I see the vast alembic ever working. I see and know the flames that heat the world. The glow, the blush, the beating hearts of lovers so blissfully happy some, and some so silent, dark, and nigh to death. Love, that is all the earth to lovers. Love that mocks time and space. Love that is day and night. Love that is sun and moon and stars. Love that is crimson, sumptuous, sick with perfume. No other words but words of love. No other thought but love. Blow again, trumpeter. Conjure war's alarm. Swift to thy spell, a shuddering hum like distant thunder rolls. Lo, where the armed men hasten. Lo, mid the clouds of dust, the glint of bayonets. I see the grime-faced cannoneers. I mark the rosy flash amid the smoke. I hear the crackling of the guns. Nor war alone, thy fearful music song. Wild player brings every sight of fear. The deeds of ruthless brigands, rapine, murder. I hear the cries for help. I see ships foundering at sea. I behold on deck and below deck the terrible tableau. O trumpeter, methinks I am myself the instrument thou playest. Thou meltest my heart, my brain. Thou movest, drawest, changest them at will. And now thy sullen notes send darkness through me. Thou takest away all cheering light, all hope. I see the enslaved, the overthrown, the hurt, the oppressed of the whole earth. I feel the measureless shame and humiliation of my race. It becomes all mine. Mine too, the revenges of humanity, the wrongs of ages, baffled feuds and hatreds. Utter defeat upon me waves, all lost, the foe victorious. Yet mid the ruins, pride colossal stands unshaken to the last, endurance, resolution to the last. Now, trumpeter, for thy close, vouchsafe a higher strain than any yet. Sing to my soul. Renew its languishing faith and hope. Rouse up my slow belief. Give me some vision of the future. Give me, for once, its prophecy and joy. O oh, glad, exalting, culminating song of vigor more than earth's is on thy notes. Marches of victory, men disenthralled, the conqueror at last. Hymns to the universal God from universal man, all joy. A reborn race appears, a perfect world, all joy. Women and men in wisdom, innocence and health, all joy. Riotous, laughing bacchanals filled with joy. War, sorrow, suffering, gone. The rank earth purged, nothing but joy left. The ocean filled with joy, the atmosphere, all joy. Joy, joy in freedom, worship, love, joy in the ecstasy of life, enough to merely be, enough to breathe, joy, joy, all over, joy. To a locomotive in winter. Thee for my recitative. Thee in the driving storm, even as now the snow, the winter day declining thee, in thy panoply, thy measured dual throbbing, and thy beat convulsive, thy black cylindric body, golden brass and silvery steel, thy ponderous sidebars, parallel and connecting rods, gyrating, shuffling at thy side. Thy metrical, now swelling pant and roar, now tapering in the distance. Thy great protruding headlight fixed in front. 
Thy long, pale, floating vapor pennants tinge with delicate purple. The dense and murky clouds are belching from the smokestack. Thy knitted frame, thy springs and valves, the tremulous twinkle of thy wheels. Thy train of cars behind, obedient, merrily following. of the modern emblem of motion and power, pulse of the continent, for once come serve the muse and merge in verse, even as here I see thee with the storm and bufting gusts of wind and falling snow. By day thy warning bringing bell to sound its notes, by night thy silent signal lamps to swing. Fierce throated beauty, roll through my chant with all thy lawless music, thy swinging lamps at night, thy madly whistled laughter echoing, rumbling like an earthquake, rousing all. Law of thyself complete, thine own track firmly holding, no sweetness debonair of tearful harp or glib piano thine. Thy trills of shrieks by rocks and hills returned, launched o'er the prairies wide across the lakes to the free skies unpent and glad and strong. O Magnet South O Magnet South O glistening perfumed South, my South O oh, quick metal, rich blood, impulse and love, good and evil, O oh, all dear to me. O oh, dear to me, my birth things, all moving things, and the trees where I was born, the grains, plants, rivers, dear to me, my own sluggish rivers where they flow distant over flats of silvery sands or through swamps, dear to me the Roanoke, the Savannah, the Altamaha, the PD, the Tumbigbe, the Santee, the Coosa, the Sabine, oh pensive fear away wandering, I return with my soul to haunt their banks again. Again in Florida I float on transparent lakes, I float on the Okeechobee, Across the hummock land or through pleasant openings or dense forests. I see the parrots in the woods, see the pawpaw tree and the blossoming titi. Again, sailing in my coaster on deck, I coast off Georgia. I coast up the Carolinas. I see where the live oak is growing. I see where the yellow pine, the scented bay tree, the lemon and orange, the cypress, the graceful palmetto. I pass rude sea headlands and enter Pamlico Sound through an inlet and dart my vision inland. Oh, the cotton plant, the growing fields of rice, sugar and hemp, the cactus guarded with thorns, the laurel tree with white large flowers, that range afar, the richness and barrenness, the old woods charged with mistletoe and trailing moss, the piney odor and the gloom, the awful natural stillness here in these dense swamps, the freebooter carries his gun, and the fugitive has his concealed hut. Oh, the strange fascination of these half-known, half-impassable swamps, infested by reptiles, resounding with the bellow of the alligator, the sad noises of the night owl and the wildcat, and the whirr of the rattlesnake, the mockingbird, the American mimic, singing all the forenoon, singing through the moonlit night, the hummingbird, the wild turkey, the raccoon, the opossum, a Kentucky cornfield, the tall, graceful, long-leaved corn, slender, flapping, bright green with tassels, with beautiful ears, each well sheathed in its husk. Oh, my heart, oh, tender and fierce pangs, I can stand them not, I will depart. Oh, to be a Virginian where I grew up, oh, to be a Carolinian, 
Oh, longings irrepressible. Oh, I will go back to old Tennessee and never wander more. Manahatta. I was asking for something specific and perfect for my city, whereupon lo upsprang the aboriginal name. Now I see what there is in a name, a word, liquid, sane, unruly, musical, self-sufficient. I see that the word of my city is that word from of old, because I see that word nested in nests of water bays, superb, rich, hemmed thick all round with sail ships and steam ships, an island, sixteen miles long, solid founded, numberless crowded streets, high growths of iron, slender, strong, light, splendidly uprising toward clear skies, tides swift and ample, well loved by me toward sundown, the flowing sea currents, the little islands, larger adjoining islands, the heights, the villas, the countless masts, the white shore steamers, the lighters, the ferry boats, the black sea steamers, well mottled, the downtown streets, the jobbers' houses of business, the houses of business of the ship merchants and money brokers, the river streets, immigrants arriving, fifteen or twenty thousand in a week, the carts hauling goods, the manly face of drivers of horses, the brown-faced sailors, the summer air, the bright sun shining, and the sailing clouds aloft, the winter snows, the sleigh bells, the broken ice in the river passing up or down with the flood tide or ebb tide, the mechanics of the city, the masters, well-formed, beautiful face, looking you straight in the eyes, Trottoirs thronged, vehicles, Broadway, the women, the shops and shows, a million people, manners free and superb, open voices, hospitality, the most courageous and friendly young men, city of hurried and sparkling waters, city of spires and masts, city nestled in bays, my city. All is truth. O oh, me, man of slack faith too long, standing aloof, denying portions so long, only aware today of compact, all diffused truth, discovering today there is no lie or form of lie, and can be none, but grows as inevitably upon itself as the truth does upon itself. For as any law of the earth, or any natural production of the earth does. This is curious, and may not be realized immediately, but it must be realized. I feel in myself that I represent falsehoods equally with the rest, and that the universe does. Where has failed a perfect return indifferent of lies or the truth? upon the ground? Is it in water, or fire, or in the spirit of man, or in the meat and blood? Meditating among liars, and retreating sternly into myself, I see that there are really no liars or lies after all, and that nothing fails its perfect return, and that what are called lies are perfect return and that each thing exactly represents itself and what has preceded it, and that the truth includes all and is compact just as much as space is compact. And there is no flaw or vacuum in the moment of the truth, but that all is true without exception. And henceforth I will go celebrate anything I see or am, and sing, and laugh, and deny nothing. A Riddle Song 
That which eludes this verse and any verse unheard by sharpest ear, unformed in clearest eye or cunningest mind, nor lore, nor fame, nor happiness, nor wealth, and yet the pulse of every heart and life throughout the world incessantly, which you and I, all perusing ever, ever miss. Oh, but still a secret. The real of the real, an illusion, costless, vouchsafed to each, yet never man the owner, which poets vainly seek to put in rhyme, historians in prose, which sculptor never chiseled yet, nor painter painted, which vocalist never sung, nor orator, nor actor ever uttered, invoking here and now, I challenge for my song. Indifferently, mid public private haunts, in solitude behind the mountain and the wood, companion of the city's busiest streets, through the assemblage it and its radiations constantly glide. It looks a fair unconscious face, or strangely in the coffin dead, or show of breaking dawn, or stars by night as some dissolving delicate film of dream. Hiding, yet lingering. Two little words. Two little breaths of words comprising it. Two words, yet all from first to last comprised in it. How ardently for it. How many ships have sailed and sunk for it. How many travelers started from their homes and ne'er returned. How much genius boldly staked and lost for it. What countless stores of beauty, love ventured for it. How all superbous deeds since time began are traceable to it and shall be to the end. How heroic martyrdoms to it. How justified by it the horrors, evils, battles of the earth. How the bright, fascinating, lambent flames of it in every age and land have drawn men's eyes rich as the sunset on the Norway coast, the sky, the islands and the cliffs, or midnight silent glowing northern lights unreachable. Happily God's riddle it, so vague and yet so certain, the soul for it, and all the visible universe for it, and heaven at last for it. Excelsior. Who has gone farthest? For I would go farther. Who has been just? For I would be the most just person of the earth. And who most cautious? For I would be more cautious. And who has been happiest? Oh, I think it is I. I think no one was ever happier than I. And who has lavished all? For I lavish constantly the best I have. And who proudest? For I think I have reason to be the proudest son alive. For I am the son of the brawny and tall-topped city. And who has been bold and true? For I would be the boldest and truest being of the universe. And who benevolent? For I would show more benevolence than all the rest. And who has received the love of the most friends? For I know what it is to receive the passionate love of many friends. And who possesses a perfect and enamored body? For I do not believe anyone possesses a more perfect or enamored body than mine. And who thinks the amplest thoughts? For I would surround those thoughts and who has made hymns fit for the earth? For I am mad with devouring ecstasy to make joyous hymns for the whole earth. Ah, poverties, wincings, and sulky retreats. Ah, poverty's wincings and sulky retreats. Ah, you foes in conflict have overcome me. For what is my life, or any man's life, but a conflict with foes? 
the old, the incessant war. You degradations, you tussle with passions and appetites. You smarts from dissatisfied friendships. Ah, wounds, the sharpest of all. You toil of painful and choked articulations. You meanness, you shallow tongue, talks at tables. My tongue, the shallowest of any. You broken resolutions, you racking angers, you smothered ennuis. Ah, think not, you finally triumph. My real self has yet to come forth. It shall yet march forth or mastering till all lies beneath me. It shall yet stand up the soldier of ultimate victory. Thoughts of public opinion, of a calm and cool fiat sooner or later. How impassive, how certain and final. Of the president with pale face asking secretly to himself, what will the people say at last? Of the frivolous judge, of the corrupt congressman, governor, mayor, of such as these standing helpless and exposed. Of the mumbling and screaming priest, soon, soon deserted. Of the lessening year by year of venerableness, and of the dicta of officers, statutes, pulpits, schools. Of the rising forever taller and stronger and broader of the intuitions of men and women. Of the self-esteem and personality. Of the true new world. Of the democracies resplendent en masse. Of the conformity of politics, armies, navies to them. Of the shining sun by them. Of the inherent light greater than the rest. Of the envelopment of all by them. And the effusion of all from them. Mediums. They shall arise in the states. They shall report nature, laws, physiology, and happiness. They shall illustrate democracy and the cosmos. They shall be alimentive, amative, perceptive. They shall be complete men and women, their pose brawny and supple, their drink water, their blood clean and clear. They shall fully enjoy materialism and the sight of products. They shall enjoy the sight of the beef, lumber, breadstuffs of Chicago, the great city. They shall train themselves to go in public to become orators and oratresses. Strong and sweet shall be their tongues. Poems and materials of poems shall come from their lives. They shall be makers and finders. Of them and of thy work shall emerge divine conveyors to convey gospels, characters, events, retrospections shall be conveyed in gospels. Trees, animals, waters shall be conveyed. Death, the future, the invisible faith shall all be conveyed. Weave in, my hardy life. Weave in, weave in, my hardy life. Weave yet a soldier strong and full for great campaigns to come. Weave in red blood, reeve sinews like ropes. The senses, sight weave in. Weave lasting shore, weave day and night the weft, the warp incessant weave, tire not. We know not what use. Nor know the aim, the end, nor really ought we know. But know the work, the need goes on and shall go on. The death-enveloped march of peace as well as war goes on. For those great campaigns of peace the same, the wiry threads to weave, we know not why or what. Spain, 1873-74.
out of the murk of heaviest clouds, out of the funeral wrecks and heaped up skeletons of kings, out of that old entire European debris, the shattered mummeries, ruined cathedrals, crumble of palaces, tombs of priests, lo, freedom's features, fresh, undimmed, look forth. The same immortal face looks forth. A glimpse as of thy mother's face, Columbia. A flash, significant as of a sword beaming toward thee. Nor think we forget thee maternal. Lagst thou so long? Shall the clouds close again upon thee? Ah, but thou hast thyself now appeared to us. We know thee. Thou hast given us a sure proof, the glimpse of thyself. Thou waitest there, as everywhere, thy time. By Broad Potomac's Shore By Broad Potomac's Shore again, old tongue still uttering, still ejaculating, canst never cease this babble? Again, old heart, so gay, again to you, your sense, the first full flush spring returning. Again, the freshness and the odors, again, Virginia's summer sky, pellicid blue and silver. Again, the forenoon, purple of the hills. Again, the deathless grass, so noiseless, soft and green. Again, the blood-red roses blooming. Perfume this book of mine, O blood-red roses. Lave subtly with your waters every line, Potomac. Give me of you, O spring, before I close to put between its pages. O forenoon purple of the hills, before I close of you. O deathless grass. Far from Dakota's Canyons, June 25th, 1876. Far from Dakota's Canyons, lands of the wild ravine, the dusky Sioux, the lonesome stretch, the silence. Haply, day to day, a mournful wall. Haply, a trumpet note for heroes. The battle bulletin, the Indian ambuscade, the craft, the fatal environment, the cavalry companies fighting to the last in sternest heroism. In the midst of their little circle, with their slaughtered horses for breastworks, the fall of Custer and all his officers and men. Continues yet the old, old legend of our race, the loftiest of life unheld by death, the ancient banner perfectly maintained, no lesson opportune, no how I welcome thee, as sitting in the dark days, lone, sulky, through that time's thick murk, looking in vain for light, for hope, from unsuspected parts of fierce and momentary proof, the sun there at the center, though concealed, electric life forever at the center, brings forth a lightning flash. Thou of the tawny flowing hair in battle, I erewhile saw with erect head pressing ever in front, bearing a bright sword in thy hand. Now ending well in death the splendid fever of thy deeds, I bring no dirge for it or thee. I bring a glad triumphal summit, desperate and glorious, I in defeat most desperate. Most glorious, leaving behind thee a memory sweet to soldiers, thou yieldest up thyself. Old War Dreams In midnight sleep of many faces of anguish, of the look at first of the mortally wounded, of that indescribable look, of the dead on their backs with arms extended wide, I dream, I dream, I dream, 
of scenes of nature, fields, mountains of skies so beauteous after a storm, and at night the moon so unearthly bright, shining sweetly, shining down where we dig the trenches and gather the heaps. I dream, I dream, I dream. Long have they passed. Faces and trenches and fields where through the carnage I moved with a callous composure or away from the fallen onward I sped at the time. But now, of their forms at night, I dream. Thick sprinkled bunting. Thick sprinkled bunting, flag of stars, long yet your road, fateful flag, long yet your road, and lined with bloody death. For the prize I see at issue is, at last, the world. All its ships and shores I see interwoven with your threads, greedy banner, dreamed again of flags and kings, highest born to flaunt unrivaled. O oh, hastened flag of man, O oh, with sure and steady step, passing highest flags of kings. Walk supreme to the heavens, mighty symbol. I run up above them all, flag of stars, thick sprinkled bunting. What best I see in thee. To U.S.G. returned from his world's tour. What best I see in thee is not that where thou movest down history's great highways, ever undimmed by time shoots warlike victory's dazzle, or that thou satst where Washington sat, ruling the land in peace, or Thou, the man whom feudal Europe fated, venerable Asia swarmed upon, who walked with kings with even pace, the round world's promenade. But that in foreign lands, in all thy walks with kings, those prairie sovereigns of the West, Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, Ohio's, Indiana's millions, comrades, Farmers, soldiers, all to the front, invisibly with thee, walking with kings, with even pace, the round world's promenade were all so justified. Spirit that formed this scene, written in Platte Canyon, Colorado. Spirit that formed this scene, these tumbled rock piles, grim and red, these reckless heaven-ambitious peaks, these gorges, turbulent clear streams, these naked freshnesses, these formless wild arrays for reasons of their own. I know thee, savage spirit. We have communed together. Mine, too, such wild arrays for reasons of their own was charged against my chance. They had forgotten art. To fuse within themselves its rules precise and delicatesse. The lyricist's measured beat, the wrought-out temple's grace, column and polished arch forgot. But thou, that revelest here, spirit that formed this scene, they have remembered thee. As I walk these broad, majestic days, as I walk these broad, majestic days of peace for the war, the struggle of blood finished, wherein no terrific ideal against vast odds, erstwhile having gloriously won now, thou stridest on. Yet perhaps in time toward denser wars, perhaps to engage in time the still more dreadful contests, dangers, longer campaigns and crises, labors beyond all others around me, I hear that eclat of the world, 
politics produce the announcements of recognized things, science, the approved growth of cities, and the spread of inventions. I see the ships, they will last a few years, the vast factories with all their foremen and workmen, and hear the endorsement of all, and do not object to it. But I too announce solid things, science, Ships, politics, cities, factories are not nothing. Like a grand procession to music of distant bugles pouring, triumphantly moving, and grandeur heaving in sight, they stand for realities. All is as it should be. Then, my realities. What else is so real as mine? Libertad and the divine average, freedom to every slave on the face of the earth, the rapt promises of Lumine of Sears, the spiritual world, these centuries lasting songs, and our visions, the visions of poets, the most solid announcements of any. A clear midnight. This is thy hour, O soul. Thy free flight into the worldless, away from the books, away from art. The day erased, the lesson done. Thee fully forth, emerging, silent, gazing, pondering the themes thou lovest best. Night. Sleep. End of book 32. Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Book 33. Songs of Parting. As the time draws nigh. As the time draws nigh, glooming a cloud, a dread beyond of I know not what darkens me. I shall go forth, I shall traverse the states a while, but I cannot tell whither or how long. Perhaps some day or night while I am singing, my voice will suddenly cease. O oh, book, O oh, chants, must all then amount to but this? Must we barely arrive at this beginning of us? And yet, it is enough, O oh soul. O oh soul, we have positively appeared. That is enough. Years of the Modern Years of the Modern, years of the unperformed. Your horizon rises. I see it parting away for more august drama. I see not America only, not only Liberty's nation, but other nations preparing. I see tremendous entrances and exits, new combinations, the solidarity of races. I see that force advancing with irresistible power on the world stage. And the old forces, the old wars played their parts? Are the acts suitable to them? Closed. I see freedom, completely armed and victorious and very haughty, with law on one side and peace on the other. A stupendous trio all issuing forth against the idea of caste. What historic denouement are these we so rapidly approach? I see men marching and countermarching by swift millions. I see the frontiers and boundaries of the old aristocracies broken. I see the landmarks of European kings removed. I see this day, the people beginning their landmarks. All others give way. 
Never were such sharp questions asked as this day. Never was average man his soul more energetic, more like a god. Lo, how he urges and urges, leaving the masses no rest. His daring foot is on land and sea everywhere. He colonizes the Pacific, the archipelagos, with the steamship, the electric telegraph, the newspaper, the wholesale engines of war. With these and the world spreading factories, he interlinks all geography, all lands. What whispers are these, O oh lands, running ahead of you, passing under the seas? Are all nations communing? Is there going to be but one heart to the globe? Is humanity forming en masse? For lo, tyrants tremble, crowns grow dim. The earth, restive, confronts a new era, perhaps a general divine war. No one knows what will happen next. Such portents fill the days and nights. Years prophetical. The space ahead as I walk, as I vainly try to pierce it, is full of phantoms, unborn deeds, things soon to be, project their shapes around me. This incredible rush and heat, this strange ecstatic fever of dreams, oh years. Your dreams, oh years, how they penetrate through me. I know not whether I sleep or wake. The performed America and Europe grow dim, retiring in shadow behind me. The unperformed, more gigantic than ever, advance, advance upon me. Ashes of Soldiers Ashes of soldiers, south or north, as I muse, retrospective, murmuring a chant and thought. The war resumes. Again, to my sense, your shapes, and again, the advance of the armies. Noiseless as mists and vapors, from their graves in the trenches ascending, from cemeteries all through Virginia and Tennessee, from every point of the compass, out of the countless graves, in wafted clouds, in myriads large, or squads of twos or threes, or single ones, they come and silently gather round me. No, now sound no note, O oh trumpeters, not at the head of my cavalry parading on spirited horses. Sabres drawn and glistening and carbines by their thighs. Ah, my brave horsemen, my handsome tan-faced horsemen. What life, what joy and pride with all the perils were yours. Nor you drummers, neither at reveille at dawn nor the long roll alarming the camp, nor even the muffled beat for burial. Nothing from you this time, O drummers, bearing my warlike drums. But aside from these, and the marts of wealth and the crowded promenade, admitting around me comrades close unseen by the rest and voiceless, the slain elate and alive again, the dust and debris alive, I chant this chant of my silent soul in the name of all dead soldiers. Faces so pale with wondrous eyes, very dear, gather closer yet, draw close, but speak not. Phantoms of countless lost, invisible to the rest henceforth, become my companions. Follow me ever. Desert me not while I live. Sweet are the blooming cheeks of the living, sweet are the musical voices sounding, but sweet, ah, sweet are the dead with their silent eyes. Dearest comrades, all is over and long gone. 
But love is not over. And what love, oh comrades, perfume from battle fields rising, up from the fetter arising. Perfume, therefore, my chant, O oh love, immortal love, give me to bathe the memories of all dead soldiers, shroud them, embalm them, and cover them all over with tender pride. Perfume all, make all wholesome, make these ashes to nourish and blossom, O oh love, Salve all, fructify all with the last chemistry. Give me exhaustless, make me a fountain that I exhale love from me wherever I go, like a moist perennial dew for the ashes of all dead soldiers, south or north. Thoughts. One, of these I sing, how they pass and have passed through convulsive pains, as through parturitions, how America illustrates birth, muscular youth, the promise, the sure fulfillment, the absolute success, despite of people, illustrates evil as well as good, the vehement struggle so fierce for unity in oneself, how many hold despairingly yet to the models departed? Caste, myths, obedience, compulsion, and to infidelity. How few see the arrived models, the athletes, the western states, or see freedom or spirituality, or hold any faith in results. But I see the athletes. And I see the results of the war glorious and inevitable and they again leading to other results. How the great cities appear, how the democratic masses, turbulent, willful, as I love them, how the world, the contest, the wrestle of evil with good, the sounding and resounding, keep on and on. How society waits unformed and is for a while between things ended and things begun. How America is the continent of glory and of the triumph of freedom and of the democracies and of the fruits of society and of all that is begun and how the states are complete in themselves and how all triumphs and glories are complete in themselves to lead onward and how these of mine and of the states will in their turn be convulsed and serve other parturitions and transitions, and how all people, sites, combinations, the democratic masses too, serve, and how every fact and war itself, with all its horrors, serves, and how now or at any time, each serves the exquisite transition of death. Of seeds dropping into the grounds, of births, of the steady concentration of America inland upward to impregnable and swarming places, of what Indiana, Kentucky, Arkansas, and the rest are to be, of what a few years will show there in Nebraska, Colorado, Nevada, and the rest, or afar, mounting the northern Pacific to Sitka or Alaska, of what the fuel age of America is the preparation for, and of what all sites, north, south, east, and west are, of this union, welded in blood, of the solemn price paid, of the unnamed lost, ever present in my mind, of the temporary use of materials for identity's sake, of the present, passing, departing, of the growth of completer men than any yet, of all sloping down there where the fresh, free giver, the mother, the Mississippi flows, 
of mighty inland cities yet unsurveyed and unsuspected, of the new and good names, of the modern developments, of inalienable homesteads, of a free and original life there, of simple diet and clean and sweet blood, of liveness, majestic faces, clear eyes, and perfect physique there, of immense spiritual results, future years far west, each side of the Anahuacs, of these songs well understood there, being made for that area, of the native scorn of grossness and gain there, oh, it lurks in me night and day, what is gain after all? to savageness and freedom. Song at Sunset. Splendor of ended day floating and filling me, our prophetic, our resuming the past, inflating my throat, you divine average, you earth and life, to the last ray of gleams I sing. Open mouth of my soul uttering gladness. Eyes of my soul seeing perfection. Natural life of me faithfully praising things, corroborating forever the triumph of things. Illustrious, everyone. Illustrious what we name space, sphere of unnumbered spirits. Illustrious the mystery of motion in all beings, even the tiniest insect. Illustrious, the attribute of speech, the senses, the body. Illustrious, the passing light. Illustrious, the pale reflection on the new moon in the western sky. Illustrious, whatever I see or hear or touch to the last. Good in all in the satisfaction and aplomb of animals, in the annual return of the seasons, in the hilarity of youth, in the strength and flush of manhood, in the grandeur and exquisiteness of old age, in the superb vistas of death. Wonderful to depart, wonderful to be here, the heart to jet the all alike and innocent blood to breathe the air, how delicious, to speak, to walk, to seize something by the hand, to prepare for sleep, for bed, to look on my rose-colored flesh, to be conscious of my body, so satisfied, so large, to be this incredible God I am, to have gone forth among other gods, these men and women I love, Wonderful how I celebrate you and myself, how my thoughts play suddenly in the spectacles around. How the clouds pass silently overhead, how the earth darts on and on, and how the moon, sun, stars dart on and on, how the water sports and sings, surely it is alive. How the trees rise and stand up with strong trunks, with branches and leaves, Surely there is something more in each of these trees, some living soul. Oh, amazement of things, even the least particle. Oh, spirituality of things. Oh, strain musical flowing through ages and continents, now reaching me and America. I take your strong chords, intersperse them, and cheerfully pass them forward. I too carol the sun, ushered, or at noon, or as now, setting. I too throb to the brain and beauty of the earth, and of all the growths of the earth. I too have the resistless call of myself. As I steamed down the Mississippi, as I wandered over the prairies, as I have lived, as I have looked, through my windows, my eyes, as I went forth in the morning, as I beheld the light breaking in the east, as I bathed 
on the beach of the Eastern Sea, and again on the beach of the Western Sea, as I roam the streets of inland Chicago, whatever streets I have roamed, or cities, or silent woods, or even amid the sights of war, wherever I have been, I have charged myself with contentment and triumph. I sing to the last the equalities, modern or old. I sing the endless finales of things. I say, nature continues, glory continues. I praise with electric voice, for I do not see one imperfection in the universe, and I do not see one cause or result lamentable at last in the universe. O oh, setting sun, though the time has come, I still warble under you, if none else does. Unmitigated adoration. As at thy portals, also death. As at thy portals, also death, entering the sovereign dim illimitable grounds, to memories of my mother, to the divine blending fraternity, to her, buried and gone, yet buried not, gone not for me. I see again the calm, benignant face, fresh and beautiful still. I sit by the form in the coffin. I kiss and kiss convulsively again the sweet, old lips, the cheeks, the closed eyes, in the coffin. To her, the ideal woman, practical, spiritual, of all of earth, life, love, to me, the best. I grave a monumental line before I go amid these songs and set a tombstone here. My legacy. The businessman, the acquirer, vast, after assiduous years surveying results, preparing for departure, devises houses and lands to his children bequeaths stocks, goods, funds for a school or a hospital, leaves money to certain companions to buy tokens, souvenirs of gems and gold. But I, my life surveying, closing, with nothing to show to devise from its idle years, nor houses, nor lands, nor tokens of gems or gold for my friends, yet certain remembrances of the war for you and after you, and little souvenirs of camps and soldiers. With my love, I bind together and bequeath in this bundle of songs. Pensive on her dead gazing, Pensive on her dead gazing, I heard the mother of all. Desperate on the torn bodies, on the forms covering the battlefields, gazing as the last gun ceased, but the scent of the powder smoke lingered. As she called to her earth and with mournful voice while she stalked, absorb them well, O oh my earth, she cried, I charge you Lose not my sons, lose not an atom, and you streams absorb them well, taking their dear blood, and you local spots, and you airs that swim above you lightly and palpable, and all you essences of soil and growth, and you my river's depths, and you mountain sides, and the woods where my dear children's blood trickling red. And you trees, down in your roots to be queen to all future trees, 
my dead absorb or south or north. My young men's bodies absorb and their precious, precious blood, which holding in trust for me faithfully, back again give me many a year hence, in unseen essence and order of surface and grass centuries hence, in blowing airs from the fields, back again give me my darling, give my immortal heroes, exhale me them, centuries hence, breathe me their breath, let not an atom be lost, O oh, years and graves, O oh, air and soil, O oh, my dead and aroma sweet, exhale them perennial sweet death, years, centuries hence. Camps of Green Nor alone those camps of white, old comrades of the wars, when as ordered forward after a long march, foot sore and weary. Soon as the light lessens, we halt for the night. Some of us fatigued, carrying the gun and knapsack, dropping asleep in our tracks. Others pitching the little tents, and the fires lit up begin to sparkle. Outposts of pickets, posted surrounding alert through the dark, and a word provided for countersign, careful for safety. Till, to the call of the drummers, at daybreak, loudly beating the drums, we rise up refreshed, the night and sleep passed o'er, and resume our journey, or proceed to battle. Lo, the camps of the tents of green, which the days of peace keep filling, and the days of war keep going with a mystic army. Is it too ordered forward? Is it too only halting a while till night and sleep pass over? Now in those camps of green and their tents dotting the world, in the parents, children, husbands, wives, in them, in the old and young, sleeping under the sunlight, sleeping under the moonlight, content and silent there at last. Behold the mighty bivouac field and waiting camp of all, of the corps and generals all, and the president over the corps and generals all, and of each of us, O oh soldiers, and of each and all in the ranks we fought. There without hatred we all, all meet. For presently, O oh soldiers, we two camp in our place and the bivouac camps agree, but we need not provide for outposts, nor word for the countersign, nor drummer to beat the morning drum. The Sobbing of the Bells, midnight, September 19th. The sobbing of the bells, the sudden death news everywhere. The slumberers rouse, the rapport of the people. Full well they know that message in the darkness. Full well returned. Respond within their breasts, their brains, the sad reverberations. The passionate toll and clang, city to city, joining, sounding, passing those heartbeats of a nation in the night. As they draw to a close, as they draw to a close of what underlies the precedent songs of my aims in them, of the seed I have sought to plant in them, of joy, sweet joy, through many a year in them, for them, for them have I lived, them, my work is done. Of many an aspiration fond, of many a dream and plan, through space and time fused in a chant, and the flowing eternal identity to nature encompassing these, encompassing God, to the joyous electric all, to the sense of death, and accepting, exulting, in death, in its turn, the same as life, 
the entrance of man to sing, to compact you departed diverse lives, and to put rapport the mountains and rocks and streams and the winds of the north and the forests of oak and pine with you, O soul. Joy, shipmate, joy. Joy, shipmate, joy, please to my soul, to death I cry. Our life is closed, our life begins. The long, long anchorage we leave. The ship is clear at last, she leaps. She swiftly courses from the shore. Joy, shipmate, joy. The untold want. The untold want by life and land ne'er granted. Now, voyager, sail thou forth to seek and find portals. What are those of the known but to ascend and enter the unknown? And what are those of life but for death? These carols these carols sung to cheer my passage through the world I see. For completion, I dedicate to the invisible world. Now, finale to the shore. Now, finale to the shore. Now, land and life finale and farewell. Now, voyager, depart much much for thee is yet in store. Often enough hast thou adventured o'er the seas, cautiously cruising, studying the charts, duly again to port and hawser's tie returning. But now obey thy cherished secret wish. Embrace thy friends. Leave all in order. To port and hawser's tie, no more returning. Depart upon thy endless cruise, old sailor. So long. To conclude, I announce what comes after me. I remember I said before my leaves sprang and all, I would raise my voice jocund and strong with reference to consummation. When America does what was promised, when through these states walk a hundred million of superb persons. When the rest part away for superb persons and contribute to them. When breeds of the most perfect mothers denote America. Then to me and mine are due fruition. I have pressed through and went all night. I have sung the body and the soul. War and peace have I sung. And the songs of life and death, and the songs of birth, and shown that there are many births. I have offered my style to everyone, I've journeyed with confident step. While my pleasure is yet in the full, I whisper, so long, and take the young woman's hand and the young man's hand for the last time. I announce natural persons to arise. I announce justice, triumphant. I announce uncompromising liberty and equality. I announce the justification of candor and the justification of pride. I announce that the identity of these states is a single identity only. I announce the union, more and more compact, indissoluble. I announce splendors and majesties to make all the previous politics of the earth insignificant. I announce adhesiveness. I say it shall be limitless, unloosened. I say, you shall yet find the friend you were looking for. I announce a man or woman coming. Perhaps you are the one. So long. I announce 
the great individual, fluid as nature, chaste, affectionate, compassionate, fully armed. I announce a life that shall be copious, vehement, spiritual, bold. I announce an end that shall lightly and joyfully meet its translation. I announce myriads of youths, beautiful, gigantic, sweet-blooded. I announce a race of splendid and savage old men. Oh, thicker and faster, so long. Oh, crowding too close upon me, I foresee too much. It means more than I thought. It appears to me I am dying. Hasten, throat, and sound your last. Salute me. Salute the days once more. Peel the old cry once more. Screaming, electric, the atmosphere using, at random glancing, even as I notice, absorbing, swiftly on. But a little while, a lighting, curious enveloped, messages delivering, sparkles hot, seed, ethereal, down in the dirt drop. Myself, unknowing. My commission, obeying, to question it, never daring. To ages and ages, yet the growth of the seed leading. To troops out of the war, arising, day the tasks I have set, promulging. To women, certain whispers of myself, bequeathing, their affection me, more clearly explaining. The young men, my problems offering, no dally or I, I the muscle of their brains trying. So, I pass. A little time vocal, visible, contrary. Afterward, a melodious echo, passionately bent for death, making me really undying. The best of me then, when no longer visible, for toward that I have been incessantly preparing. What is there more that I lag and pause and crouch extended with unshut mouth? Is there a single final farewell? My song ceased, I abandoned it. From behind the screen where I hid, advance personally, solely to you. Camarado, this is no book. Who touches this, touches a man. Is it night? Are we here together, alone? Is it I you hold, and who holds you? I spring from the pages into your arms. Decease calls me forth. Oh, how your fingers drowse me. Your breath falls round me like dew. Your pulse lulls the tempans of my ears. I feel emerged from head to foot. Delicious. Enough. Enough, O oh deed impromptu and secret. Enough, O oh gliding present. Enough, O oh sum of the past. Dear friend, whoever you are, take this kiss. I give it especially to you. Do not forget me. I feel like one who has done work for the day to retire a while. I receive now, again, of my many translations from my avatars ascending, while others doubtless await me. An unknown sphere more real than I dreamed, more direct, darts awakening rays about me. So long. Remember my words, I may again return. I love you. I depart from materials. I am as one disembodied, triumphant, dead. End of book 33.
read by Dennis Sayers, Modesto, California, winter 2006. Recording by Tom Yates, tominbkk.com. Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Book 34, Sands at 70. Manahatta. My city's fit and noble name resumed. Choice aboriginal name with marvelous beauty, meaning a rocky founded island, shores where ever gaily dash the coming, going, hurrying sea waves. Palmanok. Sea beauty stretched and basking, one side thy inland ocean laving, broad with copious commerce, steamers, sails, and one the Atlantic's wind caressing, fierce or gentle, mighty holes dark gliding in the distance, isle of sweet brooks of drinking water, healthy air and soil, isle of the salty shore and breeze and brine. From Matuak Point, I stand as on some mighty eagle's beak, eastward the sea absorbing, viewing nothing but sea and sky, the tossing waves, the foam, the ships in the distance, the wild unrest, the snowy curling caps, that inbound urge and urge of waves, seeking the shores forever. To those who have failed, to those who have failed in aspiration vast, to unnamed soldiers fallen in front on the lead, to calm, devoted engineers, to over-ardent travelers, to pilots on their ships, to many a lofty song and picture without recognition, I'd rear laurel-covered monument, high, high above the rest, to all cut off before their time, possessed by some strange spirit of fire, quenched by an early death. A Carol Closing 69 A Carol Closing 69 A resume, a repetition My lines and joy and hope continuing on the same Of ye, O oh God, life, nature, freedom, poetry Of you, my land, your rivers, prairies, states You, mottled flag I love, your aggregate retained entire of north, south, east, and west, your items all, of me, myself, the joking heart yet beating in my breast, the body wrecked, old, poor, and paralyzed, the strange inertia falling pall-like round me, the burning fires down in my sluggish blood not yet extinct, the undiminished faith, the groups of loving friends, the bravest soldiers, Brave, brave were the soldiers, high name today, who lived through the fight. But the bravest pressed to the front and fell, unnamed, unknown. A font of type, this latent mine, these unlaunched voices, passionate powers, wrath, argument, or praise, or comic leer, or prayer devout, non perian brevier, bourgeois, Long primer merely, these ocean waves arousable to fury and to death, or soothed to ease and sheeny sun and sleep within the pallid slivers slumbering. As I sit writing here, as I sit writing here, sick and grown old, not my least burden is that dullness of the years, querilities. Ungracious glooms, aches, lethargy, constipation, whimpering in we may filter in my dally songs. My canary bird, did we count great, O oh soul, to penetrate the themes of mighty books, absorbing deep and full from thoughts, plays, speculations? But now from thee to me, caged bird, to feel thy joyous warble, filling the air, the lonesome room, the long forenoon, is it not just as great, O oh soul? 
queries to my 70th year, approaching, nearing, curious, thou dim, uncertain specter, bringest thou life or death? Strength, weakness, blindness, more paralysis and heavier, or placid skies and sun, wilt stir the waters yet, or haply cut me short for good, or leave me here as now, dull, parrot-like and old, with cracked voice harping, screeching. The wall about martyrs, greater than memory of Achilles or Ulysses, more, more by far to thee than tomb of Alexander, those cartloads of old charnel ashes, scales and splints of moldy bones, once living men, once resolute courage, aspiration, strength, the stepping stones to thee today and here, America. The first dandelion. Simple and fresh and fair, from winter's clothes emerging, as if no artifice of fashion, business, politics had ever been, forth from its sunny nook of sheltered grass, innocent, golden, calm as the dawn, the spring's first dandelion shows its trustful face. America, center of equal daughters, equal sons, all, all alike endeared, grown, ungrown, young or old, strong, ample, fair, enduring, capable, rich, perennial with the earth, with freedom, law, and love, a grand, sane, towering, seated mother, chaired in the adamant of time. Memories. How sweet the silent backward tracings, the wanderings as in dreams, the meditation of old times resumed, their loves, joys, persons, voyages. Today and thee, the appointed winners in a long stretched game, the course of time and nations, Egypt, India, Greece, and Rome, the past entire with all its heroes, histories, arts, experiments, its store of songs, inventions, voyages, teachers, books, garnered for now and thee, to think of it, the heirdom all converged in thee. After the dazzle of day, after the dazzle of day is gone, only the dark, dark night shows to my eyes the stars. After the clangor of organ majestic, or chorus, or perfect band, silent athwart my soul, moves the symphony true. Abraham Lincoln, born February 12th, 1809. Today, from each and all, a breath of prayer, a pulse of thought, to memory of him, to birth of him. Out of May's shows selected. Apple orchards, the trees all covered with blossoms. Wheat fields carpeted far and near in vital emerald green. The eternal exhaustless freshness of each early morning. The yellow golden transparent haze of the warm afternoon sun. The aspiring lilac bushes with profuse purple or white flowers. Halcyon days, not from successful love alone, nor wealth, nor honored middle age, nor victories of politics or war, but as life wanes and all the turbulent passions calm, as gorgeous, vapory, silent hues cover the evening sky, as softness, fullness, rest suffuse the frame like fresher, balmier air, as the days take on a mellower light, and the apple at last hangs, really finished, and indolent ripe on the tree. Then for the teeming, quietest, happiest days of all, the brooding and blissful halcyon days. Fancies at Nave Sink. One, the pilot in the mist. Steaming the northern rapids, an old St. Lawrence reminisce. A sudden memory flash comes back, I know not why. Here, waiting for the sunrise, gazing from the hill, 
Again, tis just at morning, a heavy haze contends with daybreak. Again, the trembling, laboring vessel veers me. I press through foam-dashed rocks that almost touch me. Again, I mark where aft the small, thin Indian helmsman looms in the mist with brow elate and governing hand. Two, had I the choice. Had I the choice to tally greatest bards, to limb their portraits, stately, beautiful, and emulate at will. Homer with all his wars and warriors, Hector, Achilles, Ajax, or Shakespeare's woe-entangled Hamlet, Lear, Othello. Tennyson's fair ladies, meter or wit the best, or choice conceit to wield in perfect rhyme. Delight of singers, these, these, O oh sea, all these I'd gladly barter. Would you the undulation of one wave, its trick to me transfer, or breathe one breath of yours upon my verse, and leave its odor there? Three, you tides with ceaseless swell. You tides with ceaseless swell, you power that does this work. You unseen force, centripetal, centrifugal, through spaces spread, rapport of sun, moon, earth, and all the constellations. What are the messages by you from distant stars to us? What Sirius, what Capellas, what central heart, and you the pulse vivifies all? What boundless aggregate of all? What subtle indirection and significance in you? What clue to all in you? What fluid, vast identity holding the universe with all its parts as one as sailing in a ship? Four, last of ebb and daylight waning. Last of ebb and daylight waning. Scented sea cool landward marking. Smells of sedge and salt in coming. With many a half-caught voice sent up from the eddies, many a muffled confession, many a sob and whispered word, as of speakers far or hid. How they sweep down and out, how they mutter, poets unnamed, artists greatest of any, with cherished lost designs. Love's unresponse, a chorus of ages' complaints, hope's last words, some suicide's despairing cry, away to the boundless waste and never again return. On to oblivion then, on, on, and do your part, ye burying, ebbing tide. On for your time, ye furious debauch. Five, and yet not you alone. And yet not you alone, twilight and burying ebb, nor you, ye lost designs alone, nor failures, aspirations. I know, divine deceitful ones, your glamours seeming, duly by you, from you, the tide and light again, duly the hinges turning, duly the needed discord parts offsetting, blending, weaving from you, from sleep, night, death itself. The rhythms of birth eternal. Six, proudly the flood comes in. Proudly the flood comes in, shouting, foaming, advancing. Long it holds at the high, with bosom broad outswelling. All throbs, dilates, the farms, woods, streets of cities, workmen at work, mansails, topsails, jibs appear in the offing, steamers, pennants of smoke, and under the forenoon sun, freighted with human lives, gaily the outward bound, gaily the inward bound, flaunting from many a spar the flag I love. Seven, by that long scan of waves, by that long scan of waves, myself called back, resumed upon myself. In every crest, some undulating light or shade, some retrospect, joys, travels, studies, silent panoramas, scenes ephemeral, the long past war, the battles, hospital sites, the wounded and the dead, 
Myself through every bygone phase, my idle youth, old age at hand, my threescore years of life summed up, and more, and past, by any grand ideal tried, intentionless, the whole a nothing, and haply yet some drop within God's schemes ensemble, some wave, or part of a wave, like one of yours, ye multitudinous ocean. 8. Then last of all, then last of all, caught from these shores, this hill, of you, O tides, the mystic human meaning, only by law of you, your swell and ebb, enclosing me the same, the brain that shapes, the voice that chants, this song. Election Day, November 1884 if I should need to name, O Western world, your powerfulest scene and show, t'would not be you, Niagara, nor you, ye limitless prairies, nor your huge rifts of canyons, Colorado, nor you, Yosemite, nor Yellowstone, with all its spasmic geyser loops ascending to the skies, appearing and disappearing, nor Oregon's white cones, nor Huron's belt of mighty lakes, nor Mississippi's stream. These seething hemispheres humanity as now I'd name The still small voice vibrating America's choosing day The heart of it not in the chosen The act itself the main The quadrennial choosing The stretch of north and south aroused Seaboard and inland Texas to Maine The prairie states Vermont, Virginia, California The final ballot shower from east to west the paradox and conflict, the countless snowflakes falling, a swordless conflict, yet more than all Rome's wars of old, or modern Napoleon's, the peaceful choice of all. Or good or ill humanity, welcoming the darker odds, the dross, foams and ferments the wine, it serves to purify, while the heart pants, life glows. These stormy gusts and winds waft precious ships, swelled Washington's, Jefferson's, Lincoln's sails. With husky, haughty lips, O oh sea. With husky, haughty lips, O oh sea, where day and night I wend thy surf beat shore, imaging to my sense thy varied, strange suggestions. I see and plainly list thy talk and conference here. The troops of white-maned racers racing to the goal, Thy ample, smiling face dashed with the sparkling dimples of the sun, Thy brooding scowl and murk, thy unloosed hurricanes, Thy unsubduedness, caprices, willfulness. Great as thou art above the rest, thy many tears, A lack from all eternity in thy content, Not but the greatest struggles, wrongs, defeats, Could make thee greatest, no less could make thee. Thy lonely state, something thou ever seekest and seekest, yet never gainest. Surely some right withheld, some voice in huge monotonous rage of freedom lover pent. Some vast heart like a planet's chained and chaffing in those breakers. By a lingering swell and spasm and panting breath and rhythmic rasping of thy sands and waves and serpent hiss and savage peals of laughter, and undertones of distant lion roar, sounding, appealing to the sky's deaf ear, but now, rapport for once, a phantom in the night, thy confident for once, the first and last confession of the globe, outsurging, muttering from thy soul's abysms, the tale of cosmic elemental passion, thou tellest to a kindred soul. Death of General Grant As one by one withdraw the lofty actors From that great play on history's stage ye turn That lurid partial act of war and peace Of old and new contending Fought out through wrath, fears, dark dismays And many a long suspense All past and since in countless graves receding Mellowing, victors and vanquished Lincolns and Lees now thou with them, man of the mighty days, and equal to the days. Thou from the prairies, 
tangled and many veined and hard has been thy part to admiration has it been enacted red jacket from aloft upon this scene this show yielded today by fashion learning wealth nor in caprice alone some grains of deepest meaning haply aloft who knows from distant sky clouds blended shapes as some old tree or rock or cliff thrilled with its soul product of nature's sun stars earth direct a towering human form in hunting shirt of film armed with the rifle a half ironical smile curving its phantom lips like one of ossian's ghosts looks down Washington's Monument, February 1885 Ah, oh, not this marble, dead and cold Far from its base and shaft expanding The round zone circling, comprehending Thou, Washington, art all the world's continents entire Not yours alone, America Europe's as well, in every part Castle of lord or laborer's cot or frozen north, or sultry south, the Africans, the Arabs in his tent, old Asia's there with venerable smile, seated amid her ruins, greets the antique the hero knew, tis but the same, the air legitimate, continued ever, the indomitable heart and arm proofs of the never broken line, courage, alertness, patience, faith, the same, even in defeat, defeated not the same. Wherever sails a ship, or house is built on land, or day or night, through teeming cities, streets, indoors or out, factories or farms, now or to come or past, where patriot wills existed or exist, wherever freedom poised by toleration, swayed by law, stands or is rising thy true monument. Of that blithe throat of thine, of that blithe throat of thine, from arctic bleak and blank, I'll mind the lesson, solitary bird, let me too welcome chilling drifts, even the profoundest chill, as now, a torpid pulse, a brain unnerved, old age landlocked within its winter bay, cold, cold, oh, cold. These snowy hairs, my feeble arm, my frozen feet, for them thy faith, thy rule I take, and grave it to the last. Not summer zones alone, not chance of youth, or self's warm tides alone, but held by sluggish flows, packed in the northern ice, the cumulus of years, these with gay heart I also sing. Broadway. What hurrying human tides, or day or night, what passions, winnings, losses, ardors swim thy waters? What worlds of evil, bliss, and sorrow stem thee? What curious questioning glances, glints of love? Leer, envy, scorn, contempt, hope, aspiration. Thou portal, thou arena, thou of the myriad long-drawn lines and groups, could but thy flagstones, curbs, facades tell their inimitable tales. Thy windows rich and huge hotels, thy sidewalks wide, thou of the endless sliding, mincing, shuffling feet, thou like the party-colored world itself, like infinite, teeming, mocking life, thou visored, vast, unspeakable show and lesson. To get the final lilt of songs, to get the final lilt of songs, to penetrate the inmost lore of poets, to know the mighty ones, Job, Homer, Aeschylus, Dante, Shakespeare, Tennyson, Emerson, to diagnose the shifting delicate tints of love and pride and doubt, to truly understand, to encompass these, the last keen faculty and entrance price, old age, and what it brings from all its past experiences. Old Salt Kosabon Far back, related on my mother's side, old Salt Kosabon, I'll tell you how he died. 
had been a sailor all his life, was nearly 90, lived with his married grandchild, Jenny. House on a hill, with view of bay at hand, and distant cape, and stretched to open sea. The last of afternoons, the evening hours, for many a year his regular custom, in his great armchair by the window seated, sometimes indeed through half the day, watching the coming, going of the vessels, he mutters to himself, and now the close of all. One struggling outbound brig one day, baffled for long, cross tides and much wrong going. At last at nightfall strikes the breeze aright, her whole luck veering, and swiftly bending round the cape, the darkness proudly entering, cleaving, as he watches, she's free, she's on her destination. These the last words, when Jenny came, he sat there dead. Dutch Kosabone, old salt, related on my mother's side, far back. The Dead Tenor As down the stage again, with Spanish hat and plumes and gait and inimitable, Back from the fading lessons of the past, I'd call, I'd tell, and own, how much from thee, the revelation of the singing voice from thee, so firm, so liquid soft, again that tremulous manly timber, the perfect singing voice, deepest of all to me the lesson, trial and test of all. How through these strains distilled, how the rapt ears, the soul of me absorbing, Fernando's heart, Manrico's passion call, Erani's sweet Gennaro's. I fold thenceforth, or seek to fold, within my chance transmuting, freedoms and loves and faiths unloose cantable, as perfumes, colors, sunlight's correlation. From these, for these, with these, a hurried line, dead tenor, a wafted autumn leaf, dropped in the closing grave, the shoveled earth, to memory of thee. Continuities. Nothing is ever really lost, or can be lost. No birth, identity, form, no object of the world. Nor life, nor force, nor any visible thing. Appearance must not foil nor shifted sphere confuse thy brain. Ample are time and space, ample the fields of nature, the body sluggish, aged, cold, the embers left from earlier fires, the light in the eye grown dim shall duly flame again. The sun now low in the west rises for mornings and for noons continual, to frozen clods of the spring's invisible law returns, with grass and flowers and summer fruits and corn. Yanandio, a song, a poem of itself, the word itself a dirge, amid the wilds, the rocks, the storm and wintry night, to me such misty, strange tableau the syllables calling up. Yanandio, I see, far in the west or north, a limitless ravine with plains and mountains dark. I see swarms of stalwart chieftains, medicine men and warriors, as flitting by like clouds of ghosts they pass and are gone in the twilight. Race of the woods, the landscapes free and the falls. No picture, poem, statement passing them to the future. Yanandio, Yanandio, Unlimed they disappear. Today gives place and fades. The cities, farms, factories fade. A muffled sonorous sound. A wailing word is borne through the air for a moment. Then blank and gone and still and utterly lost. Life. Ever the undiscouraged, resolute, struggling soul of man have former armies failed. Then we send fresh armies, and fresh again. Ever the grappled mystery of all Earth's ages, old or new. Ever the eager eyes, hurrahs, the welcome clapping hands, the loud applause. Ever the soul dissatisfied, curious, unconvinced at last. Struggling today the same, battling the same. 
going somewhere. My science friend, my noblest woman friend, now buried in an English grave, and this a memory leaf for her dear sake, ended our talk. The sum, concluding all we know of old or modern learning, intuitions deep, of all geologies, histories, of all astronomy, of evolution, metaphysics all, is that we all are onward, onward, speeding slowly, surely bettering, life, life an endless march, an endless army, no halt, but it is duly over. The world, the race, the soul, in space and time the universes, all bound as is befitting each, all surely going somewhere. Small the theme of my chant. Small the theme of my chant, yet the greatest, namely oneself, a simple separate person. That, for the use of the new world, I sing. Man's physiology complete, from top to toe, I sing. Not physiognomy alone, nor brain alone, is worthy for the muse. I say the form complete is worthy or far. The female equally with the male, I sing. Nor cease at the theme of oneself. I speak the word of the modern, the word in mass. My days I sing, and the lands, with interstice I knew of hapless war. O oh, friend, whoever you are, at last arriving hither to commence, I feel through every leaf the pressure of your hand, which I return. And thus upon our journey, footing the road, and more than once, and linked together, let us go. True conquerors, old farmers, travelers, workmen, no matter how crippled or bent, old sailors out of many a perilous voyage, storm and wreck, old soldiers from campaigns with all their wounds, defeats and scars, enough that they've survived it all, long life's unflinching ones, forth from their struggles, trials, fights, to have emerged at all, in that alone, true conquerors o'er all the rest. The United States to Old World Critics Hear first the duties of today, the lessons of the concrete, wealth, order, travel, shelter, products, plenty, as of the building of some varied, vast, perpetual edifice, whence to arise inevitable in time, the towering roofs, the lamps, the solid planted spires, tall, shooting to the stars. The calming thought of all, that coursing on, whatever man's speculations, amid the changing schools, theologies, philosophies, amid the bawling presentations, new and old, the round earth's silent vital laws, facts, modes, continue. Thanks in old age. Thanks in old age. Thanks, ere I go, for health, the midday sun, the impalpable air, for life, mere life, for precious, ever-lingering memories of you, my mother dear, you, father, you, brothers, sisters, friends, for all my days, not those of peace alone, the days of war the same, for gentle words, caresses, gifts from foreign lands, for shelter, wine, and meat, for sweet appreciation, you, distant, dim, unknown, or young, or old, countless, unspecified readers beloved, we never met, and never shall meet, and yet our souls embrace, long, close, and long. For beings, groups, love, deeds, words, books, for colors, forms, for all the brave, strong men, devoted, hardy men, who have forward sprung in freedom's help, all years, all lands. For braver, stronger, more devoted men, a special laurel ere I go to life's war's chosen ones. The cannoneers of song and thought, the great artillerists, the foremost leaders, captains of the soul. As soldier from an ended war returned, as traveler out of myriads, to the long procession retrospective, thanks, joyful thanks, a soldier's, traveler's, 
thanks. Life and death. The two old, simple problems ever intertwined. Close home, elusive, present, baffled, grappled. By each successive age insoluble, passed on. To ours today, and we pass on the same. The Voice of the Rain And who art thou, said I, to the soft falling shower, which, strange to tell, gave me an answer, as here translated. I am the poem of earth, said the voice of the rain. Eternal I rise, impalpable, out of the land and the bottomless sea, upward to heaven, whence, vaguely formed, altogether changed, and yet the same. I descend to lave the droughts, atomies, dust layers of the globe, and all that in them without me were seeds only, latent, unborn. And forever, by day and night, I give back life to my own origin, and make pure and beautify it. For song, issuing from its birthplace, after fulfillment, wandering, wrecked or unwrecked, duly with love returns. Soon shall the winter's foil be here. Soon shall the winter's foil be here. Soon shall these icy ligatures unbind and melt. A little while, and air, soil, wave, suffused, shall be in softness, bloom, and growth. A thousand forms shall rise from these dead clods and chills as from low burial graves. Thine eyes, ears, all thy best attributes, all that takes cognizance of natural beauty, shall wake and fill. Thou shalt perceive the simple shows, the delicate miracles of earth, dandelions, clover, the emerald grass, the early scents and flowers, the arbutus underfoot, the willow's yellow-green, the blossoming plum and cherry. With these the robin, lark, and thrush, singing their songs, the flitting bluebird, for such the scenes the annual play brings on. While not the past forgetting, while not the past forgetting, today at least, contention sunk entire, peace, brotherhood uprisen, for sign reciprocal our northern, southern hands lay on the graves of all dead soldiers, north or south, nor for the past alone, for meanings to the future. Reeves of roses and branches of palm. The Dying Veteran Amid these days of order, ease, prosperity, amid the current songs of beauty, peace, decorum, I cast a reminisce. Likely it will offend you, I heard it in my boyhood, more than a generation since. A queer old savage man, a fighter under Washington himself, Large, brave, cleanly, hot-blooded, no talker, rather spiritualistic, had fought in the ranks, fought well, had been all through the Revolutionary War. Lay dying, sons, daughters, church deacons, lovingly tending him, sharpening their sense, their ears, towards his murmuring half-caught words. Let me return again to my war days, to the sights and scenes, to forming the line of battle, to the scouts ahead reconnoitering, to the cannons, the grim artillery, to the galloping aides carrying orders, to the wounded, the fallen, the heat, the suspense, the perfume strong, the smoke, the deafening noise. Away with your life of peace, your joys of peace. Give me my old wild battle life again. Stronger Lessons have you learned lessons only of those who admired you and were tender with you and stood aside for you? Have you not learned great lessons from those who reject you and brace themselves against you or who treat you with contempt or dispute the passage with you? A Prairie Sunset Shot gold, maroon and violet, dazzling silver, emerald, fawn, 
the earth's whole amplitude and nature's multiform power consigned for once to colors. The light, the general air possessed by them, colors till now unknown. No limit, confine, not the western sky alone, the high meridian, north, south, all. Pure, luminous color, fighting the silent shadows to the last. Twenty years. Down on the ancient wharf, the sand, I sit with a new corner chatting. He shipped as Greenhand Boy and sailed away, took some sudden, vehement notion. Since twenty years and more have circled round and round, while he, the globe, was circling round and round, and now returns. How changed the place, all the old landmarks gone, the parents dead. Yes, he comes back to lay in port for good, to settle, has a well-filled purse. No spot will do but this. The little boat that sculled him from the sloop, now held in leash, I see. I hear the slapping waves, the restless keel, the rocking in the sand. I see the sailor kit, the canvas bag, the great box bound with brass. I scan the face, all berry brown and bearded, the stout, strong frame, dressed in its russet suit of good scotch cloth. Then what, the told-out story of those twenty years? What of the future? Orange Buds by Mail from Florida A lesser proof than old Voltaire's, yet greater. Proof of this present time, and thee, thy broad expanse, America. To my plain northern hut, in outside clouds and snow, brought safely for a thousand miles over land and tide, some three days since on their own soil live sprouting, now hear their sweetness through my room unfolding, a bunch of orange buds by mail from Florida. Twilight The soft voluptuous opiate shades the sun just gone, the eager light dispelled. I too will soon be gone, dispelled. A haze, nirvana, rest in night, oblivion. You lingering sparse leaves of me. You lingering sparse leaves of me on winter nearing boughs. And I some well shorn tree of field or orchard row. You tokens diminute and lorn, Not now the flush of May or July clover bloom, No grain of August now. You pallid banner staves, You penance valueless, You overstate of time, Yet my soul dearest leaves confirming all the rest, The faithfulest, hardiest, last. Not meager, latent boughs alone. Not meager, latent boughs alone, O oh, songs, scaly and bare like eagle's talons. But haply for some sunny day, who knows? Some future spring, some summer, bursting forth to verdant leaves or sheltering shade, to nourishing fruit, apples and grapes, the stalwart limbs of trees emerging, the fresh, free, open air, and love and faith like scented roses blooming. The Dead Emperor Today, with bending head and eyes, thou too, Columbia, less for the mighty crown laid low in sorrow, less for the emperor, thy true condolence breathest, send this out over many a salt sea mile, mourning a good old man, a faithful shepherd, patriot. As the Greeks signal flame. As the Greeks signal flame, by antique records told, rose from the hilltop like applause and glory, welcoming in fame some special veteran, hero, with rosy tinge reddening the land he'd served. So I, aloft from Manhattan's ship, Shore, lift a high kindled brand for thee, old poet. The Dismantled Ship 
In some unused lagoon, some nameless bay, on sluggish, lonesome waters, anchored near the shore, an old, dismantled, gray and battered ship, disabled, done, after free voyages to all the seas of earth, hauled up at last and housered tight, lies rusting, moldering. Now precedent songs, farewell. Now precedent songs, farewell, by every name, farewell. Trains of a staggering line in many a strange procession, wagons from ups and downs with intervals from elder years, mid-age or youth. In cabin ships, or the old cause or poets to come, or Palmanoke, song of myself, Calamus or Adam, or beat, beat, drums, or to the leaven soil they trod, or captain, my captain, cosmos, quicksand years, or thoughts, thou mother with thy equal brood, and many, many more unspecified, from fiber, heart of mine, from throat and tongue, my life's hot, pulsing blood, the personal urge and form for me, not merely paper, automatic type and ink, each song of mine, each utterance in the past, having its long, long history of life or death, or a soldier's wound, of country's loss or safety. Oh, heaven, what flash and startled endless train of all compared indeed to that. What wretched shred even at the best of all. An evening lull. After a week of physical anguish, unrest and pain and feverish heat, Toward the ending day, a calm and lull comes on. Three hours of peace and soothing rest of brain. Old age's lambent peaks. The touch of flame, the illuminating fire, the loftiest look at all. Over city, passion, sea, or prairie, mountain, wood, the earth itself. The airy, different, changing hues of all, in failing twilight, objects and groups, bearings, faces, reminiscences, the calmer sight, the golden setting clear and broad, so much in the atmosphere, the points of view, the situations whence we scan, brought out by them alone, so much perhaps the best, unwrecked before, the lights indeed from them. Old Age's Lambent Peaks. After the supper and talk, after the supper and talk, after the day is done, as a friend from friends, his final withdrawal prolonging, goodbye and goodbye, with emotional lips repeating, so hard for his hand to release those hands, no more will they meet, no more for communion of sorrow and joy, of old and young, a far-stretching journey awaits him to return no more. Shunning, postponing severance, seeking to ward off the last word ever so little, even at the exit door turning, charges superfluous calling back, even as he descends the steps, something to eke out a minute additional, shadows of nightfall deepening, farewells, messages lessening, dimmer the fourth goer's visage and form, soon to be lost for I in the darkness, loff, oh so loff to depart, garrulous to be the very last. End of Leaves of Grass, Chapter 34 This reading by Chris Govinge. Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman Book 35 Goodbye, My Fancy Sail out for good, idle on yacht Heave the anchor short, raise the mainsail and jibe, steer forth, O oh, little white hulled sloop, now speed on really deep waters. I will not call it our concluding voyage, but outset and sure entrance to the truest, best, maturest. Depart, depart from solid earth, no more returning to these shores. Now on for I, our infinite free venture wending, spurning all yet tried ports, seas, horses, densities, gravitation. Sail out for good, idle on yacht of me. 
lingering last drops. And whence and why came you? We know not whence was the answer. We only know that we drift here with the rest, that we lingered and lagged, but were wafted at last and are now here to make the passing showers concluding drops. Goodbye, my fancy. Goodbye, my fancy. I had a word to say, but tis not quite the time. The best of any man's word or say is when its proper place arrives, and for its meaning, I keep mine till the last. On, on the same, ye jocund twain. On, on the same, ye jocund twain. My life and recitative, containing birth, youth, mid-age years, fitful as motley tongues of flame, inseparably twined and merged in one, combining all. My single soul, aims, confirmations, failures, joys, nor single soul alone. I chart my nation's crucial stage, America's, haply humanities, the trial great, the victory great. A strange enclassement of all the masses past, the Eastern world, the ancient, medieval. Here, here, from the wanderings, strayings, lessons, wars, defeats. Here at the West, a voiced triumphant, justifying all. A gladsome pealing cry, a song for once of utmost pride and satisfaction. I chant from it, the common bulk, the general average horde, the best, sooner than the worst. And now I chant old age, my verses, written first for forenoon life and for the summer's autumn's spread. I pass to snow white hairs the same, and give to pulses winter cooled the same, as here in careless trill I and my recitatives, with faith and love, wafting to other work, to unknown songs, conditions. On, on, ye jocund twain, continue on the same. My seventy-first year. After surmounting three score and ten with all their chances, changes, losses, sorrows, my parents' death, the vagaries of my life, the many tearing passions of me, the war of sixty-three and four, as some old broken soldier after a long, hot, wearying march, or happily after battle, today at twilight, hobbling, answering company roll call, here, with vital voice, reporting yet, saluting yet, the officer over all. Apparitions. A vague mist hanging round half the pages. Sometimes how strange and clear to the soul that all of these solid things are indeed but apparitions, concepts, non-realities. The pallid wreath. Somehow, I cannot let it go yet, funeral though it is. Let it remain back there on its nail suspended, with pink, blue, yellow, or blanched, and the white, now grey and ashy. One withered rose put years ago for thee, dear friend. But I do not forget thee. Hast thou then faded? Is the odour exhaled? Are the colours, vitalities dead? No. While memories subtly play, the past vivid as ever. For but last night I woke, and in that spectral ring saw thee. Thy smile, eyes, face, calm, silent, loving as ever. So let the wreath hang still a while within my eye reach. It is not yet dead to me, nor even pallid. An end of the day. The soothing sanity and blitheness of completion, the pomp and hurried contest glare and rush are done. Now triumph, transformation, jubilati. Old Age's Ship and Crafty Deaths From east and west across the horizon's edge Two mighty masterful vessels sailors steal upon us But we'll make race a time upon the seas A battle contest yet bear lively there Our joys of strife and daring do to the last Put on the old ship all her power today Crowd topsail, top gallant and royal studding sails out challenge and defiance, flags and flaunting pennants added, as we take to the open, take to the deepest, freest waters. 
to the pending year. Have I no weapon word for thee, some message brief and fierce? Have I fought out and done indeed the battle? Is there no shot left for all thy affections, lisps, scorns, manifold silliness? Nor for myself, my own rebellious self in thee? Down, down, proud gorge, though choking thee, thy bearded throat and highborn forehead to the gutter, crouch low thy neck to Elam's sinewy gifts. Shakespeare Bacon's Cipher. I doubt it not, then more, far more, in each old song bequeathed, in every noble page or text, different, something unwrecked before, some unsuspected author. In every object, mountain, tree and star, in every birth and life, as part of each, evolved from each, meaning. Behind the ostent, a mystic cipher waits enfolded. Long, long hence. After a long, long course, hundreds of years, denials, accumulations, roused love and joy and thought, hopes, wishes, aspirations, ponderings of victories, myriads of readers, coating, compassing, covering, after ages and ages encrustations, then only may these songs reach fruition. Bravo, Paris Exposition. Add to your show, before you close it, France. With all the rest, visible, concrete, temples, towers, goods, machines and oars, our sentiment wafted from many million heartthrobs, ethereal but solid. We grandsons and great-grandsons do not forget your grandsires. From fifty nations and nebulous nations, compacted, sent overseas today, America's applause, love, memories and goodwill. Interpolation sounds. Over and through the burial chant, organ and solemn service, sermon, bending priests, to me come interpolation sounds, not in the show, plainly to me, crowding up the aisle and from the window, of sudden battles, hurry and harsh noises, war's grim game to sight and ear in earnest, the scout called up and forward, the general mounted and his aides around him, the new brought word, the instantaneous order issued, the rifle crack, the cannon thud, the rushing forth of men from their tents, the clank of cavalry, the strange celerity of forming ranks, the slender bugle's note, the sound of horses' hooves departing, saddles, arms, accoutrement. To the sunset breeze. Ah, whispering, something again, unseen. Where late this heated day thou enterest at my window, door, thou, laving, tempering all, cool threshing, gently vitalising, me, old, alone, sick, weak down, melted, worn with sweat, thou, nestling, folding close and firm, yet soft, companion better than talk, book, art. Thou hast, O nature, elements, utterance to my heart beyond the rest, and this is of them. So sweet thy primitive taste to breathe within, thy soothing fingers, my face and hands. Thou messenger, magical strange bringer to body and spirit of me, distance is balked, occult medicines penetrating me from head to foot. I feel the sky, the prairies vast, I feel the mighty northern lakes, I feel the ocean and the forest, Somehow I feel the globe itself swift swimming in space. Thou blown from lips so loved, thou gone, haply, from endless store, God sent. For thou art spiritual, godly, most of all known to my sense. Minister to speak to me, here and now, what word was never told and cannot tell. Art thou not universal concrete distillation, laws, all astronomy's last refinement? Hast thou no soul? Can I not know, identify thee? Old Chants An ancient song, reciting, ending, once gazing towards thee, mother of all, musing, seeking a themes fitted for thee. Accept me, thou saidst. 
the elder ballads and name for me before thou goest, each ancient poet. Of many debts incalculable, haply our new world's chiefest debt is to old poems. Even so far back, preluding thee, America, old chants, Egyptian feasts, and those of Ethiopia, the Hindu epics, the Grecian, Chinese, Persian, the biblic books and prophets, and deep idols of the Nazarene, the Iliad, Odyssey, plots, doings, wanderings of Aeneas, Hesiod, Esiklus, Sophocles, Merlin, Arthur, the Cid, Roland at Ronskaval, the Nibelugan, the troubadour, minstrels, minnesingers, skulls, Chaucer, Dante, flocks of singing birds, the border minstrelry, the bygone ballads, feudal tales, essays, plays, Shakespeare, Schiller, Walter Scott, Tennyson, as some vast, wondrous, weird dream presences, the great shadowy groups gathering around, darting their mighty, masterful eyes forward at thee, thou, with as now thy bending neck and head, with courteous hand and word ascending, thou, pausing a moment, drooping thine eyes upon them, blent with their music, well pleased, accepting all, curiously prepared for by them, thou enterest at thy entrance porch. A Christmas greeting. Welcome, Brazilian brother, thy ample place is ready. A loving hand, a smile from the north, a sunny instant hall. Let the future care for itself, where it reveals its troubles, impedimentas, ours, ours the present of the row, the democratic aim, the acceptance and the faith. To thee today our reaching arm, our turning neck, to thee from us the expectant eye, thou cluster free, thou brilliant lustrous one, thou learning well the true lesson of a nation's light in the sky, more shining than the cross, more than the crown, the height to be superb humanity. Sounds of the winter. Sounds of the winter too. Sunshine upon the mountains, many a distant strain, from cheery railroad train, from nearer field barn house. The whispering air, even the mute crops, garnered apples, corn, children's and women's tones, rhythm of many a farmer and a flail. An old man's garrulous lips among the rest, think not we give out yet. Forth from these snowy hairs we keep up yet the lilt. A Twilight Song As I sit in twilight, late alone by the flickering oak flame, musing on long past war scenes, of the countless buried unknown soldiers, of the vacant names, as unindented airs and seas, the unreturned, the brief truce after battle with grim burial squads and the deep filled trenches, of gathered from dead all America, north, south, east, west, whence they came up, from wooded Maine, New England's farms, from fertile Pennsylvania, Illinois, Ohio, from the measureless west, Virginia, the south of the Carolinas, Texas, even here in my room shadows and half-lights in the noiseless flickering flames, again I see the stalwart ranks on filling, rising, I hear the rhythmic tramp of the armies. You million unwritten names all, all, you dark bequest from all your war. A special verse for you, a flash of duty long neglected, your mystic roll strangely gathered here. Each name recalled by me from out the darkness and death's ashes, henceforth to be deep, deep within my heart recording for many future year. Your mystic roll entire of unknown names, or north or south, embalmed with love in this twilight song. When the full-grown poet came. When the full-grown poet came, out spake pleased nature, the round, impassive globe with all its shows of day and night, saying, he is mine. But out spake too the soul of man, proud, jealous and unreconciled, nay, he is mine alone. Then the full-grown poet stood between the two and took each by the hand, and today and ever so stands, as blender, uniter, tightly holding hands which he will never release until he reconciles the two and wholly and joyously blends them. 
Osceola. When his hour for death had come, he slowly raised himself from the bed on the floor, threw on his war dress, shirt, leggings, and girded the belt around his waist. Called for vermilion paint, his looking glass was held before him, painted half his face and neck, his wrists and back hands, put the scalp knife carefully in his belt, then, lying down, resting a moment, rose again, half sitting, smiled, gave in silence his extended hands to each and all, sank faintly low to the floor, tightly grasping the tomahawk handle, fixed his look on wife and little children, the last, and here a line in memory of his name and death, a voice from death, a voice from death, Solemn and strange in all his sweep and power, with sudden indescribable blow, towns drowned, humanity by thousands slain. The vaunted work of thrift, goods, dwellings, forge, street, iron bridge, dashed pell-mell by the blow, yet ushered life continuing on. Amid the rushing, whirling wild debris, a suffering woman saved, a baby safely born. Although I come unannounced, in horror, and in pang, in pouring flood and fire, and wholesale elemental crash. This voice so solemn and strange. I too am minister of deity. Yea, death, we bow our faces, veil our eyes to thee. We mourn the old, the young, untimely drawn to thee. The fair, the strong, the good, the capable, the household wrecked, the husband and the wife. The engulfed forger in his forge, the corpses in the whelming waters and the mud, the gathered thousands to their funeral mounds and thousands never found or gathered. Then after burying, mourning the dead, faithful to them, found or unfound, forgetting not, bearing the past, he a new musing, a day, a passing moment or an hour, America itself bends low, silent, resigned, submissive. War, death, cataclysm like this, America, take deep to thy proud, prosperous heart. In thy chant, lo, out of death and out of ooze and slime, the blossoms rapidly blooming, sympathy, help, love, from west and east, from south and north and over sea, its hot spurred hearts and hands, humanity to human aid moves on, and from within a thought and lesson yet. Thou ever-darting globe, through space and air, thou waters that encompass us, thou that in all the life and death of us, in action or in sleep, thou laws invisible that permeate them and all, thou that in all and over all and through and under all incessant, thou, thou the vital, universal, giant force resistless, sleepless, calm, holding humanity as in thy open hand, as some ephemeral toy, how ill to e'er forget thee. For I too have forgotten, wrapped in these little potencies of progress, politics, culture, wealth, invention, civilization, have lost my recognition of your silent, ever swaying power, ye mighty elemental throes, in which and upon which we float, and every one of us is buoyed. A Persian Lesson For his overarching and last lesson, the grey-beard Sufi, in the fresh scent of the morning in the open air, on the slope of a teeming Persian rose garden, under an ancient chestnut tree wide-spreading its branches, spoke to the young priests and students. Finally, my children, to envelop each word, each part of the rest, Allah is all, 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 imminent in every life and object, maybe at many and many a more removes, yet Allah, Allah, Allah is there. Has the stray wandered far? Is the reason why strangely hidden? Would you sound below the restless ocean of the entire world? Would you know the dissatisfaction? The urge and spur of every life, the something never stilled, never entirely gone, the invisible need of every seed. It is the central urge in every atom, 
often unconscious, often evil, downfallen, to return to its divine source and origin, however distant, latent the same in subject and in object without one exception. The commonplace. The commonplace, I sing. How cheap is health? How cheap nobility? Abstinence, no falsehood, no gluttony, lust. The open air, I sing. Freedom, toleration. Take here the mainest lesson. Less from books, less from the scrolls. The common day and night, the common earth and waters. Your farm, your work, trade, occupation. The democratic wisdom underneath, like solid ground for all. The rounded catalogue divine complete. The devilish and the dark, the dying and diseased, the countless 1920ths, low and evil, crude and savage, the crazed, prisoners in jail, the horrible, rank, malignant, venom and filth, serpents, the ravenous sharks, the liars, the dissolute. What is the part the wicked and the loathsome bear within Earth's orbic scheme? Newts, crawling things in slime and mud, poisons, the barren soil, the evil men, the slag and hideous rot. Mirages. More experiences and sights, stranger than you'd think for. Times again, now mostly just after sunrise or before sunset. Sometimes in spring, oftener in autumn. Perfectly clear weather, in plain sight. Camps, far or near. The crowded streets of cities and the shop fronts. Account for it or not, credit or not, it is all true. And my mate there could tell you the like. We have often confabbed about it. People and scenes, animals, trees, colours and lines, plain as could be. Farms and dooryards of home. Paths bordered with box, lilacs in corners. Weddings in churches, Thanksgiving dinners, returns on long absent sons. Glum funerals. The crepe veiled mother and daughters. Trials in courts, jury and judge, the accused in the box. Contestants, battles, crowds, bridges, wharves. Now and then marked faces of sorrow or joy. I could pick them out this moment if I saw them again. Showed to me. Just to the right, in the sky edge. Or plainly there, to the left, on the hilltops. L of G's purport. Not to exclude or demarcate or pick out evils from their formidable masses, even to expose them, but add, fuse, complete, extend, and celebrate the immortal and the good. Haughty this song, its words and scope, to span vast realms of space and time, evolution, the cumulative growths and generations. Begun in ripened youth and steadily pursued, wandering, peering, dallying with all, war, peace, day and night absorbing. Never even for one brief hour abandoning my task, I end it here, in sickness, poverty and old age. I sing of life, yet mind me well of death. Today's shadowy death dogs my steps, my seated shape, and has for years, draws sometimes close to me, as face to face. The unexpressed. How dare one say it? After the cycles, poems, singers, plays, vaunted Iona's, India's, Homer, Shakespeare, the long, long times, the thick dotted roads, areas, the shining clusters and the milky ways of stars, nature's pulses looped, all retrospective passions, heroes, war, love, adoration, all ages' plummets dropped to their utmost depth. All human lives, throats, wishes, brains, all experiences, utterance. After the countless songs, all long short, all tongues, all lands, still something not yet told in poesy's voice or print, something lacking. Who knows? The best yet unexpressed and lacking. Grand is the scene. Grand is the scene, the light to me. Grand are the sky and stars. Grand is the earth, and grand are lasting time and space. And grand are their laws, so multiform, puzzling, evolutionary. 
But grander far the unseen soul of me, comprehending, endowing all these, lighting the light, the sky and stars, delving the earth, sailing the sea. What were all those indeed without thee, unseen soul? Of what amount without thee? More evolutionary, vast, puzzling, O oh my soul, more multiform far, more lasting thou than they. Unseen buds, unseen buds, infinite, hidden well under the snow and ice, under the darkness, in every square or cubic inch, germinal, exquisite, in delicate lace, microscopic, unborn, like babes in wombs, latent, folded, compact, sleeping, billions of billions and trillions of trillions of them waiting, on earth and in the sea, the universe, the stars there in the heavens, urging slowly, surely forward, forming endless and waiting evermore, forevermore behind. Goodbye, my fancy. Goodbye, my fancy. Farewell, dear mate, dear love. I'm going away, I know not where, or to what fortune, or whether I may ever see you again. So goodbye, my fancy. Now for my last. Let me look back a moment. The slower, fainter ticking of the clock is in me. Exit, nightfall, and soon with a heart thud stopping. Long have we lived, joyed, caressed together. Delightful, now separation. Goodbye, my fancy. Yet let me not be too hasty. Long indeed have we lived, slept, filtered, become really blended into one. Then if we die, we die together. Yes, we'll remain one. If we go anywhere, we'll go together to meet what happens. Maybe we'll be better off and blither and learn something. Maybe it is yourself now really ushering me to the true songs. Who knows? Maybe it is you the mortal mob is really undoing, turning. So now, finally, goodbye and hail, my fancy. End of Leaves of Grass.
Thank you.